Audiobook Title Evolution Start ASA Raft 001-234 by I Am Link Part 01. This work belongs to author I Am Link, Source Royal Road and Scribble Hub. 1. I Became a Raft. The views opened up gradually, and the azure sky and the endless sea appeared in sight. Where am I? Rain could only feel his head hurting. There seemed to be a huge disconnect between the information he had gathered so far and his memories. No, I'm dead, aren't I? The last image Rain could recall was falling drunk into a lake and drowning, after which there was a series of painful struggles, suffocation, and blurred consciousness. He should still be in the water with the sensations coming from his body. Except, how did he get to the sea? Did the bottom of the lake has have a passage to the sea? Also, why could he float on the surface of the water? He couldn't swim. Was it the high density of salt water that made him buoyant? Why hadn't he died? What a headache. With a long sigh, Rain tried to move his head. But bizarrely, he couldn't feel his arms and legs. After realizing this, Rain's mind stopped for half a second. This was definitely not a good sign. Could it be paraplegia? He tried to look up to check his body. Next, his perspective shifted to a top-down view, which was bizarre. It felt like a shooter's first-person view switching to a third-person view. Undoubtedly, this is not supposed to be a human's ability. The scarier part is yet to come. After seeing his body, Rain was completely stunned. What? Where's my head? Where are my limbs? Where is my body? Where is my brother? Why the fuck? There's only a row of rafts. It was beyond scary. It's so terrible. Rain took a whole three days to come to terms with reality. He was not riding on this raft in a soul state. He could clearly feel the water flow beneath him and the state of each bamboo, even see the fish passing underwater. He was this raft. I get it. I've been fucking reborn as a raft. The host's self-awareness has been completed. The voice that suddenly appeared in Rain's head startled him, even though he couldn't jump. What the hell? Activate Super Battleship Evolution System. System? With these words, Rain's already cold heart suddenly lit up with a glimmer of hope. Checking the time-space axis. Please wait. Time, 300 years of the Azure Era. Planet Earth, this is Earth? And what's the Azure Era? Rain said in amazement, hey, 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 wait a minute. Don't bully me. Is this really Earth? Is there the Azure Era on Earth? Yes, this is Earth. According to the AD calendar, it would be 2379 AD. But today's Earth is not the same Earth in your mind. Twenty years before the Azure Era, in 2059 AD, World War III completely destroyed the Earth's ozone system, and in the twenty years since then, global temperatures have risen. Melting north and south pole glaciers have caused global sea levels to rise, and 95% of the world's land mass has been submerged. The massive rise in global temperature and the stream of charged particles carried by the solar wind has contributed to the rapid evolution and mutation of life on Earth. Today over 50% of Earth's life has mutated. Ah, uh, that is too much information, and Rain is a little confused. You said the oceans were flooded 95%, so there is still 5%? Where are those places? Are there still people there? The habitable islands are almost permanently occupied by powerful fleets. As for the people you speak of, many still survive. Only some have changed, and most live aboard ships. After all, undersea creatures are still extremely threatening to humans. Large habitable islands are few, so the ships are most people's homes. In short, it was a time of evolution and competition for the sea and the sky, hence the name the Azure Era. Uh, Rain couldn't help pondering. The host has no questions. The basic information identification will continue. Before Rain could understand, the system's voice rang out again and Rain could only put aside his thoughts for the moment and listen carefully. Host Rain, vessel, three-pole bamboo raft, crew size zero, speed, not equipped with a propulsion system, not measurable, combat power zero, loading capacity, zero slash 50 kg, evolutionary progress zero out of 10 would, it can evolve. Rain listened intently to this large string of information and was instantly enlightened. Although all his stats were currently zero, he still screamed out in excitement. Although he couldn't scream, he was just shouting in his heart. Oh yeah, I've got a system too. Now that Rain finally was no longer downcast, the whole person, the whole boat was different. The fact that Rain was reborn as a raft, and there is no point in dwelling on it. Now he was in the Azure era. Ships had become the primary means of hegemony in this era of global navigation. As long as he has this super warship system, anything is possible. With a long sigh, Rain gazed profoundly into the distance, 
where the sea and sky were azure. What is wider than the sea is the sky, and what is wider than the sky is a man's breadth of mind. System, you have indeed chosen me with a unique eye. In my last life, I died meaninglessly, but in this life, with my own hands I will go forward and gallop between the blue sky and the sea. Host, firstly you don't have hands. Secondly, you are now just a row of three pole bamboo rafts. Sailing too fast may lead to disintegration. I, no, I'm just expressing my ambition. I mean, I will get stronger and stronger with my own efforts. So what does the host mean by this statement? Can I interpret it as you automatically giving up the newbie gift pack? Stop. Rain bellowed in his head. What's a newbie gift pack? It's a prize package awarded to the host for completing self-awareness within the time limit. But you just said you had to do it on your own. Nonsense. What a load of crap. Don't I understand the principle of teamwork? Don't I understand the truth that strength is in numbers? Only by uniting all the forces that can be united can we achieve great things. Bring out the newbie pack. 2. White. Newbie gift pack A. 1. Compass. 1. Host controllable or and two standard kinds of wood. Wood is the main evolution material at this stage. It can be exchanged for evolution points. Newbie gift pack B, one compass, one Labrador retriever. Please select your newbie gift pack. Can I have them all? Please choose one of your newbie packs. Rain hated these multiple choice questions. Judging by the system's firm attitude, he couldn't have both. The compass looked like his necessary. Both packs had it, so he need not make a trade-off. The key was the other rewards. The importance of the oars was without saying. As a boatman who now goes with the flow, having an oar he can control is important. The next was the evolution points, which were the core for getting stronger. The system didn't even need to explain it. Rain knew his main task was to collect evolution points in the future. Now, it seems that his evolution points mainly come from wood. Although the APAC had only two pieces of wood, it was too difficult for Rain to get wood at this stage as a three-pole raft and two pieces of wood were a lot of money. The A pack is very useful. In contrast, the B pack is a bit nonsensical. Apart from the compass, there is only one Labrador retriever. And what the hell is a Labrador? No, Labradors can be in the top three of canine's IQ, which is not as thick an idiot as Husky, and don't have to worry about getting a bad bamboo pole from Teddy's fuck. It can come in handy with a little coaching. Rain now has no body. He desperately needs a loyal henchman. Although this henchman is a bit non-mainstream, at least it's a henchman. Most important is the system says many creatures have mutated in this era. If this Labrador also can evolve or something, then its value is much stronger than the ores and wood. Rain doesn't have hands, and he needs a hand. Select B gift pack. The host has chosen gift pack B for newbies, reward issued. As soon as the system's words fell, a compass fell to Rain's hull and was fixed in the bow. Of course, the raft was not divided into bow and stern and Rain's viewpoint could cover the raft's range in all directions. So the compass was just fixed in the direction Rain was used to as the bow. Immediately afterward, a beige Labrador retriever landed on the raft out of thin air. Rain just felt himself sink a lot lower. Holy shit. This dog is so big, it must be 20 kilograms. His load capacity only has 50 kilograms. And this dog took up 40%, which means now Rain can only fit two dogs at most. The host can communicate directly with the Labrador. It has some evolutionary potential. The evolutionary path is devouring. The evolutionary direction and evolutionary limit are unknown. First reminder, creatures need large resources to evolve. It is difficult to collect them with the host's current state, and the size may change after evolution. Before evolving Labrador, the host needs to consider his weight-bearing limit. So pitfalls? Rain couldn't help but regret it a little. The system reminded him not to evolve this dog for now, hey, forget it. Let's talk about it later, as long as it can evolve anyway. Wait, how do I communicate with it? I don't have a mouth. You have not yet adapted to your new body. Please try to merge yourself with the hull. When you achieve the unity of humans and bamboo, you will be able to make a sound. Human bamboo unity. Are you fucking kidding me? The guidance has ended, the artificial intelligence system is permanently withdrawn and the normal programmed system is retained. The host can also call up the information menu to view it independently at any time. At the same time, the early warning radar is on. It can detect the situation in spherical space within a radius of 500 meters. The radar will upgrade as the host evolves. It will actively alert the host when you encounter dangerous targets. Beep. With a strange sound, Rain's head fell silent. Are you leaving? Hey, hey, don't leave. I still have so many questions to ask you. 
Well, you hurt me, and then you left. Without the system beeping, it was a lot quieter all of a sudden, and Rain started to figure out his situation quietly. Information menu. A page of data immediately appeared in Rain's mind. Host Rain. Vessel. Three-pole bamboo raft. Cruise size 1. Ship speed. Not equipped with the power system. Not measurable. Combat power 1. Load capacity. May 19th, 50 kg. Evolutionary progress 0 out of 10 would. With a glance, Rain was overjoyed. Huh, I have a crew now, and I have one combat point. Woof. Rain looked up and saw the Labrador Retriever sitting there. And when he looked at the Labrador, the Labrador was gazing at the bow too. A boat and a dog, looking deep into each other's eyes. Rain soon understood that it turned out this Labrador was his only crew and combat power. A little minion with one combat power. Rain was really speechless. If it were replaced by a pit bull or Tibetan mastiff or something, his combat power would have more than that much. Human bamboo unity. Try it. Rain found it didn't seem too hard. He was a ship, so he already united man bamboo. Hey, hey, can you hear me? Rain's voice rang out from the bamboo raft. Woof, woof, woof. Labrador swept his tail with excitement. I am really a genius, Rain said. He has held his tongue for so long. Talking is so easy and the damn system unexpectedly hadn't told him sooner. Okay, I'm your master from now on. Woof woof. Good, let's call you White. White spun around on the narrow raft a few times, which caused Rain almost to think he would drown again. Stop stop stop, take it easy. I can't afford your tossing and turning like that. White, sit down. Rain was relieved after White sat nicely in the middle of the raft. The little guy was brilliant. Rain was delighted with such a little fellow around. He would not evolve now but at least he would not be so lonely. But after a few moments of happiness, Rain couldn't help but start planning for the future. His situation was very bleak. How long could a small raft last at sea? He would probably fall apart just because of a big wave. Besides, White should have to eat too. He could not let White, who was worth one paddle and two evolution points starve to death. Damn, where do I find wood and food now? At this moment, little White, who had been sitting obediently on the boat's hull, suddenly stood up excitedly and walked to the side of the boat, looking at the seawater and wagging his tail furiously. White, what are you doing? Don't stand on the side. I almost capsize. Suddenly, White plunged into the sea. White, you, what are you doing? Not long afterward, White emerged from the sea with a head, and Rain noticed that he was carrying a sizable blackhead fish in his mouth. Seeing White struggle to climb onto the raft, Rain exclaimed, Aw, oh, that's something. I really underestimated you, White. I thought you were a newbie, but I didn't know you were a master. 3. Collecting supplies. The fish was at least 4 or 5 pounds, and it was still flopping around and rocking the boat. Do you want to dismantle the fish? Dismantle. Dismantle it now. I'm about almost dismantled by it, Rain said hastily, bothering to ask many questions. In an instant, the living and breathing fish turned into a portion of fish skin, a portion of fish meat a pile of fish guts, and a neat fish bone. The boat finally smoothed. Gain one fish skin, one fish meat, one fish bone. What's the use of these things? Rain asked, but unfortunately, the system didn't answer him, at which point he remembered that the AI system that could answer questions had quit permanently. Now this system was a programmed system that could only assist him but couldn't answer his questions. When Rain called the basic information bar, he found an additional submenu behind them. Material Collection 3. After opening this submenu, new information appeared. Fish Skin 1. Fish Bone 1. Fish Meat 1. List of Manufacturable Items 5. Fish Skin Bottom 1 slash 100. Fish Skin reduces the resistance and corrosion of the seawater, can be recycled after upgrading the ship. Short Rope 1 third. Fish Skin can be used to reinforce the ship's planking, etc., and is one of the most commonly used items. Fish Bone Spikes 14 slash 1, fishbone spine part, used as iron nails replacement, low sturdiness, easy to break, but better than nothing. Dried fish, 1 slash 1, fish meat, can be stored for a long time, food for the crew, tasty and nutritious. Small simple seawater purification device, 1 quarter, fish skin, 0 slash 1, wood, 0 slash 1, short rope, 0 slash 10, fishbone nail, a simple device for purifying seawater into drinking water. Eh? Rain had played many games, so he already understood what these hints meant as soon as he saw them. Only the question was, what did these manufacturable items mean for his evolution? 
Once he'd saved enough evolution points, won't he be able to upgrade to the next type? Did he have to collect these resources? After a moment of thinking, Rain thought of a possibility. It was like a car. Mazda was a car, and Ferrari was also a car. But obviously the two were different. When your car is equipped with ergonomic leather seats, diamond surround sound, a night navigation system, and other luxurious features, plus an aero engine with finely sculpted streamlined lines, it will be a qualitative difference in both performance and appearance. I see. These things are sort of accessories. Some can enhance the performance of the boat. Some are just normally used tools, but these do not determine the ship's level, Rain said thoughtfully. After thinking about it, Rain was relieved. Since it wasn't necessary, Rain was much more relaxed and began looking through these items. Maybe there was something that could help him a little at the moment. From the five manufacturable items, it was easy to see that fish skin was the most useful. Fish is just a food item, and now he only has one crew. If white is fed, all crew is fed. He does not need it in hurry. Fish bones are useful for making fish bone spikes, and keeping a few is good. Making 14 fish bone spikes. A few seconds later, dash 1 for losing fish bones, 14 for gaining fish bone spikes, which were already set on the edge of the raft. Ouch, my ass, you just put nails in me. Luckily it didn't hurt. After checking the supplies again, the number of fish bone nails in the small simple seawater purification device became 14 out of 10, which was enough. Rain was satisfied with the system's efficiency. Although he had no hands and feet, he could leave the job to the system. As long as he had the materials, he didn't have to worry about not being able to make something. I need 10 wood to evolve. It's up to God. It's a bit difficult for now. Now I should make sure White survives. I already got the fish. Now the missing is drinking water. A small simple seawater purification device requires 7 fish skins and a piece of wood. This is much better to get. Okay. Let's do that first. Having set a short-term goal for now, Rain immediately looked to his only crew. White, do you hear me? This is our general strategy at this stage. As a member of this ship, you must work hard to get the job done. Do you understand? Rain said to White. Woof. Hmm, good. There are fish active below. Go. White flicked his tail and instantly leaped into the sea. And he caught his second fish in no time. Get fish meat one. Get fish skin one. Get fish bone one. Seeing this series of messages, Rain looked like was shot with chicken blood. White, well done. Throw away all the fish meat and fish bones, just the skin. Two days later, White was very helpful. He caught a total of 30 fish. Rain made three pieces of fish meat into dried, tied them to the boat, and threw away all the other supplies, except for a few pieces of fish meat that White ate. The main thing was the skins. Rain kept four skins and made nine ropes with the rest. He used six to reinforce the raft's front, middle, and back, leaving three ropes. Two of these he tied to the middle of the boat, one to hold the fish and one for white to bite into the case of rapids. The last strip is reserved for the water purification unit. After reinforcing, now his body is much more solid than before, with almost no gaps between the three bamboo poles and much stronger so that they no longer rub and sway against each other. With the reinforced hull, now Rain is less afraid of the usual small winds and waves. However, so far, Rain had not come across any wood. And White had been drinking seawater for two days, so he was more prone to dehydration than usual. Rain had spent two days with White, and the little fellow had been very obedient, going down to the sea to catch fish during the day and then sleeping exhausted on the raft at night. Seeing White sit there listless and groggy as if fallen asleep in his arms, Rain was not feeling well either. White, just hang on a little longer. I'll get the wood, Rain said anxiously. Both in terms of White's usefulness and Rain's feelings for White, he couldn't let White die. Damn it, where are we going to find wood? Do you think wood grows out of the water? Will it float to me? Found scattered timber in 37 degrees northeast, for 77 m ahead. The system alert sounded in Rain's head. What? Rain didn't expect he had just said be face slapping immediately. Good thing I have thick skin. I don't need respect at all. Smash me with wood if you can. White, go. Get rich. 4. Get rich. Now white is the main power unit of the whole boat. On a narrow raft, a beige Labrador desperately paws the water with its tiny paws. Later white found it was troublesome and straight into the water and pushed the raft along. Rain twisted and turned desperately to ensure the direction of navigation was always in the right place. Finally, white pushed rain to the designated position after all the trouble. As far as he could see, there were several pieces of wood on the surface of the sea and several scattered objects all over the place. 
What's going on? A shipwreck? No matter quick, White, get a piece of wood and make the water purification device first. Although White was exhausted, now that victory was at hand. Seeing so many supplies, White also pulled out all his strength and led Rain to start collecting these supplies. Wood 0.4 Rain took a look at the piece of wood. It was a little shorter than the length of his bamboo pole, so he guessed it didn't meet the system's requirements for standard wood and could only be counted as 0.4 resources. Wood 0.7 Ding Wood 2 Wow! Add 2! This one's long! Rain was instantly energized. And even more exciting was that there were still quite a few things on the sea surface waiting for him to collect. Why? Take a break first while I make a seawater purification device. Small simple seawater purification device in the making. Device made. In less than 10 seconds, a small house with a triangular roof appeared on Rain's hull. The bottom of the house is a square wooden box with sides about 30 centimeters long. The top of the box is a pyramidal roof of triangles on four sides. The roof's edge extends slightly beyond the box's edge, and four rectangular wooden grooves form a circle around the roof's edge. This device adopts the principle of the distillation method. The wooden box is used to hold seawater. Under the closed environment, the partial pressure of water inside the wooden box container is greater than the external partial pressure, which accelerates the evaporation of seawater. The steam is collected by the fish skin at the top of the device and condensed into water droplets which slide down the slope angle and enter the storage tank. The water purification is completed. The triangular cooling roof and the inside of the storage tank are all affixed with fish skin, which is conducive to steam cooling and collection. Please do not damage the surface of the fish skin. Opening the wooden plug under the storage tank when taking water, the water will flow out automatically and can be consumed directly. When purifying seawater, make sure the plug is plugged in. All the fish skin is used inside. No wonder rain can't see it. This device uses the principle of evaporating water to form pure distilled water. Although it is not as violent as boiling water to 100 degrees Celsius, the temperature can reach 40 to 50 degrees Celsius during the day. It can even exceed 50 to 60 degrees under direct sunlight. Rain was confused, but that's not the point. The point is the water purification device is completed. Having completed the water purification device, Rain rushed to have White collect some seawater into the wooden box and start purifying it. Strangely enough, Rain could see inside the device when he wanted to look out what was happening. The heat outside caused the seawater to evaporate and raised the pressure inside the container. The water vapor condensed into droplets when it met the skin of the roofed fish and slid down the inclined angle into the reservoir. After 10 minutes, a shallow stream of water had accumulated in the reservoir, and after another 10 minutes, there was quite a lot of drinking water. White, there's water to drink. Pull out the stopper with your mouth. Don't bite it. It'll be useful later. White wobbled to the device, found the wooden plug, and carefully bit it open. Just after biting the plug, water flowed out of the box. White hurriedly stuck out his tongue to lick it. Don't lick it. That's too wasteful. Just open your mouth and catch it. White was also smart enough and understand Rain's words immediately. The sweet and pure water flowed into his mouth in an endless stream. Unfortunately, there wasn't much water. It didn't take long to finish but White keep licking the spout. Well, there's no water. Do you really think you can lick water from this little hole? Rain suddenly realized that something was wrong with his words. There wasn't much water, but at least it was clean. Now Rain was finally relieved to have water and food. White's survival problem is finally solved. After drinking some water and resting for an hour, White's dehydration symptoms improved. The little one understood that he had to use his paws to plow through the water and help Rain collect the remaining sea supplies. Although they were slow, it was good that Rain was moving. Get wood 0.6. Get a plastic bottle one. Get wood 2. Evolution points 4.7 now. Get ladies bra one. Eh? A ladies bra? White, you're quite a good fisherman. This thing seems to have wire so I could use it. Get humans underwear one. Holy shit. What the hell is this? Throw it. No, 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 I can't throw it. I can make it into a rope and keep it. Damn it. I'm becoming a pervert now. Get antibiotic medicine one. This is good. Let's see if there are any more medicines. The azure sky gradually darkened. This salvage work was finally successfully completed. At this time, White has been pillowed on the lady's bra in a deep sleep due to too much fatigue. The simple seawater purification device was still working non-stop. Still, the evaporation effect was much worse at night. But it was possible to make some clean water overnight so that White would have water to drink in the morning.
The narrow space of the raft is littered with miscellaneous items, clothes, plastic bottles, a life preserver, and a pile of wood. But Rain can't carry the weight of these timbers, so he had to tie them behind him with a rope and follow him with the waves. Rain hadn't slept yet. He wasn't sure he wanted to. In this azure age, it was important always to keep a clear head drifting alone on the ocean. From that point of view, sleep was still essential. Although Rain was tired now, he had more important things to do. Open the basic information menu, Rain said wearily. Host Rain, vessel, three-pole bamboo raft, cruise size one, ship speed, not equipped with the power system, not measurable, combat power one, load capacity, 43.9 slash 50 kg. Evolutionary progress, November 3rd, 10, wood, currently evolvable. Rain almost cried when he saw the last line. Although he had picked up much wood, he had waited too long for this day. Taking a deep breath, a mouthful of water filled into the hollow bamboo of the raft front, and Rain felt himself choking. Cough, 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 damn, I forgot it was in the sea. Evolve. 5. A shabby epic evolution. Plank ship construction takes three minutes. Please wait. The system's answer made him full of anticipation. The large and small timbers behind his but quickly began to move independently. These timbers were all treated, but the system resanded and polished the planks in the spirit of excellence. All of them looked brand new after being retreated. A long keel is quickly formed, and the keel, the main bottom bearing timber, the hull, the rudder, and the side planks are quickly shaped, placed, and put together to form the ship in seconds. The planks are joined together using a traditional woodworking technique called mortise and tenon, which principle is to combine concave and convex parts of the two planks together. This craft technique does not require nails, but is stronger than nails and can be disassembled. The only drawback is the complexity of the design and process. But with the help of the system, this difficulty does not exist at all. At this point, Rain's heart was pounding with the system's busyness, and he couldn't help but marvel on the sidelines. Holy, it's breathtaking. System, I suspect you'd earn much if you went to work as a carpenter. The system continues to be busy. Look at this wood treatment, TSK TSK, like new ah, and this wood grain looks particularly comfortable. The hull's lines are nice too. It has a sense of flow. Eh, this can reduce wind resistance. Ah, that place, what's it called? Anyway, eh, great. Somehow, the system surprisingly finished ahead of schedule, and a brand new plank boat appeared in front of rain. If it had been any slower, Rain would probably have been bleeping on the sidelines for a long time. The boat was small, about 2 meters in length. It is about the same length as Rain's raft, about 70 centimeters wide and looks narrow. The entire hull has a certain curvature that makes the boat's interior a grooved appearance. The bow and stern are not decorated in anything particular, except the planks are a little thicker. For a wooden boat, this one has no bottom cavity, and its bottom plate is the boat's deck. It is definitely easy to get to the top of the shabby list, but Rain doesn't care about that. He's pretty excited right now. Dude, what could be more shabby than a raft with three pieces of bamboo? Nothing, absolutely nothing. This is an epic super evolution, performing host consciousness and item migration while destroying the three bamboo rafts. Hey, 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 don't destroy it. It's nice to keep it. Rain found that his perspective instantly shifted from the bamboo raft to the wooden boat. All the items on the raft, water purification equipment, miscellaneous items, white, and even the fish skin ropes tied to the bamboo were all smoothly transferred to the wooden boat. In a moment, the transfer was complete. When the items landed on Rain's body, the boat sank a little significantly. When Rain looked back, the raft had disappeared into the air. Ah, my bamboo! Wouldn't it be great for a mast? The system had stopped making noises. Without someone talking, Rain was finally quiet. At least that AI system was funny. Now, this is a machine with no humor at all. Forget it. Get to business. Basic information menu. Host rain. Ship. Small single deck plank ship. Cruise size 1. Ship speed. Not equipped with the power system. Not measurable. Combat power 1. Load capacity. 37.3 slash 300 kg. Evolutionary progress. January 3rd 50 wood. The load capacity had changed from the previous 43.9 kilograms to 37.3 kilograms. At first, Rain thought he had lost something, but then it occurred to him that it was impossible to lose something. It must be the loss of moisture in those clothes that made the total weight a little lighter. Of course, that wasn't the point. The point was that his load limit increased from 50 kilograms to 300 kilograms in one go, six times more than before. 
Now my most important task is to collect materials. The load capacity is very important. 300 kilograms load capacity means I can fit 15 whites. Cool. Something else not shown here yet. Now I have a rudder and no more twisting and turning when controlling the direction. It's just that the bottom of the boat is still a bit worrying. Even if the system is unbelievably crafted with seamless mortise and tenon joints for the bottom, the wood will rot when immersed in seawater for a long time. It looks like I have to find a way to wrap the bottom. Okay, I have so many more supplies. Before, it never showed what I could build. Probably level is not enough. Now let me see. Rain wanted to mull it some more. Still, after a hard work day and too much excitement, he completed a consciousness transfer. After those, Rain couldn't hold it up a bit. His consciousness began to struggle gradually. The night on the sea was particularly tantalizing, the water gently swaying his body. He was becoming accustomed to this sensation. This feeling just like he was lying in his mother's arms and sleepiness swept him. He glanced dazedly at White, who was sound asleep and uneasily went back to check the water purification equipment, finding that it had been stocked with drinking water, which made he was reassuring finally. The Azure Era? The age of the Great Voyage? Rain smiled slightly. Although he wouldn't laugh either, eventually he couldn't hold on any longer and fell into a deep sleep. Heading 22 degrees northeast, position 270 meters, timber and humans found. Heading 21 degrees northeast, position 220 meters, timber and humans found. He doesn't know how long he slept, but before it was fully light, rain was woken up by the system. Fuck you, why don't you go and become a fucking alarm clock? 24 degrees northeast. 170 meters, found timber and humans. Rain was speechless, he opened his eyes in a daze, and his brain finally started to work. Timber and humans? What, humans? Rain was suddenly awake. He was unexpectedly very nervous when he heard the word human. How many humans? So far, only found one human and 0.2 units of wood. One human? Rain breathed a small sigh of relief. He wasn't too afraid of one person. Nah, what the hell are 0.2 units of timber? There are more shabby ships than me? It can't be. Rain at least had looked at the system's boat building process and roughly imagined that 0.2 units of wood were just a small plank. It's definitely not a boat. Curious coincidence, the current seemed to keep drifting in that direction. Surprisingly it didn't deviate from its course, and about a hundred meters in, Rain could see a small black dot rising and falling in the distance by the faint light. Falling into the sea? Rain finally understood. The guy fell overboard and floats on the sea surface just with a plank. Is there anyone? Anyone? Please help me. I can't hold on much longer. A weak woman clung to a plank and dimly saw a wooden boat coming towards her in the distance. Six. Second crew. The woman's cry for help woke White, and he opened his eyes in a daze. But the first thing he noticed was that the place where he was sleeping had become spacious. Excited, he walked around the boat happily his tail wagging like a propeller. From afar, the woman saw something moving on the boat and instantly shouted, please help me. She swam in Rain's direction. She only swims farther than 20 or 30 meters to the boat and looks at the wooden boat with pleading eyes. We were shipwrecked, my family is missing, the water is cold at night, and I, I have no more strength. Please let me get on, the woman said and cried. The woman in the water was blocked by the side panels of the boat so she could not see the hull. However, Rain could see the woman clearly from a height. She was in a bit of a mess. Her hair was messy and plastered to her face. She was shivering, and her clothes were unkempt. But by the looks, this was quite a pretty woman. She had freckles on her fairly delicate face, presumably from the long wind and sun. But her skin was very white, and her features were correct. The woman was looking at the wooden boat with pleading eyes. White had had enough happiness, and was straining his neck to look at the woman curiously. I will do anything if you save me. When she saw that the people on the boat hadn't stepped forward, the woman added, I have nothing left now. If I die, I won't find the man who did my whole family in. I'd sacrifice everything for my life. Rain was a little angry. In his last life, he had been so handsome. But how he hadn't encountered this kind of thing. Now he was separated from his brother, and a woman offered such a tempting deal. You can do whatever you want, but the question is, what can he do? White, go and get the timber. The woman heard someone speak from the boat, then saw a large dog happily jump into the water, swam behind her, and had the plank of wood to the boat. Gain wood 0.2, Rain said with satisfaction, turn around. So it wasn't for nothing that Rain had been single in all his last life. Between the wood and the woman, 
he hadn't hesitated to choose the former and leave the latter behind. And this was a woman of unknown origin. The rudder was adjusted, and the wooden boat was about to sail away. The boat was adjusted in the right direction, but the boat never moved. Rain is a boat, but now his situation is similar to the woman. Now Rain is following the water flow, and the woman is too, and the two are keeping a very steady relative distance as if they hadn't moved. The only difference was that Rain didn't have to worry about sinking. Still, there was some awkwardness, a delay in leaving when he had said he would. The woman was unsure why, but the boat hadn't left, so she hurriedly fought for more. Wait, you, you, please help me. If you go, I will die. I don't care if you die or not. We don't know each other well, but I'll do anything. Joke, am I a lecher? Rain said this with considerable conviction. So, what do you want? I can still do the washing and cooking. I can clean, I, I can even help you with the boat. You can make me do anything you want. Rain had no voice. Washing, cooking, and all that didn't interest Rain, but the woman's last words touched him. I can help you with the boat. White used to be able to help Rain move with his little paws, but now that he evolved, White was instead bad to move it. And now Rain was completely following the direction of the current, letting himself drift with it. He had a little wood left, and if he made two oars, White couldn't control them, but this woman could. No rush, no rush, think again first. He was a boat now, and even if a woman could be a threat to him, too, he had to be extra careful. It was true that there had been a shipwreck here last night, which was consistent with the woman's story, but the woman said they had been persecuted by others, something Rain could not verify. When he had come to the waters around here, he had only seen a few scattered items, no other ships. But that didn't mean that the woman was lying. Maybe the gang had gotten away and left. In that case, the woman's identity was certain. However, there was one more doubt. He hadn't found the woman when he arrived here and was alerted by the system until midnight. It was possible that she had drifted far away and was out of the system's range at the beginning, or that she hadn't been a passenger on that shipwreck. It wasn't hard to verify this. Hey, let me ask you, what size is your bra? What color do you like? You um, you, you said you weren't horny? It's I that question you. Just answer honestly. Well, the woman stammered with her head down. If I meet those men at sea, I'm likely to get caught by them. So I usually wear a smaller size that doesn't look sexy. The color can't be too dark either. Usually, I'm flesh colored. What size is it anyway? 34A. A? A? Just A. Why are you stammering for half a day? But I'm actually supposed to be AB. The woman muttered in a low voice. For B, barely passable. Wait, that's not the point. I almost led you astray. Rain grumbled then asked White to turn the flesh-colored bra inside out and check the number, which was indeed a 34A. Flesh-colored, size 34A, all match. Such a secret problem. It shouldn't be that coincidental. After a few moments of thinking, Rain finally decided to ask the system to tie the rope he had left earlier to the life belt and throw it in front of the woman. Listen, I saved your life. From now on, you must obey me completely. I'll throw you down to the fish if you have any resistance. Understand? Rain said fiercely. Okay, okay, you're my savior. I'll do whatever you want. Except, I must make one thing clear. If I find out who my enemy is, you must allow me to take revenge. Success or failure is none of your business. If I succeed, I will return and continue to follow you. If I fail then, got it, get on board. It took a lot of effort for the woman to get on the boat, but she was baffled as soon as she did. Hey, where's the guy who just talked? And aren't these my things? My clothes and my... The woman picked up the brow that was on the floor. Rain's voice rang out. Now these are mine. Rain was also chagrined. Damn it. Why am I fighting a woman for a bra? Why? Who's talking? Look under your feet. The woman came to the side of the boat and looked down at the bottom. Are you a shark man? Shark man your ass. I'm the boat you're sitting on right now. Get your A cups off my board, please. It looked like it would take some time to explain to this woman. But while the woman was confused... Rain opened the basic information panel only to find a good news. Host Rain, vessel, small single deck plank ship, crew size 2, ship speed, not equipped with the power system, not measurable, combat power, 1.5, load capacity, 85.2 slash 300 kg, evolutionary progress, January 3rd 50 wood, now he has a second crew, 7, departure, no man's land, my name is Avril, half a month ago, I came to these uninhabited waters with my parents, 
my two older brothers, and my young brother Jerry from the human class waters 300 miles away. The competition of the human class was too fierce and brutal for us to handle that kind of intensity. My father had a map from my grandfather. There are three obscure islands in nearby waters, which were not shown on the global map. With any luck, we could stay there. However, on reaching the edge of the human class sea, we came across another ship, a three-masted schooner, 30 meters long, fully 10 times larger than our fishing boat. They took a liking to me, and we fled all the way, and finally, they hit us with their cannon. The sea was blowing a gale, and we took advantage of the situation to escape. But the ship was badly damaged, and it wasn't long before our boat sank. For a few days at first, my family and I gathered together with the cargo around us, waiting for someone who could come to rescue us. But this was no man's land, and very few people passed. Gradually, they lost their strength one by one, and we met the sharks at that moment. I watched them get eaten by the sharks, and my brother pushed Jerry and me into the distance, and he lured the sharks away himself, so we were spared. Then Jerry in my arms was getting cold, and I desperately tried to hold him, but how I held him was no use. He died in my arms. I was so tired and exhausted afterward I fell asleep and lost Jerry. I, I was really so useless. By this point, Avril had sobbed uncontrollably. Even White couldn't help but sit beside her and look at her pitifully. Rain let out a slight sigh. Hearing what this woman had gone through, he couldn't help but feel a little sympathy for her. These days after coming to the Azure era, although he had not had an easy time, at least he was safe and had not experienced any major storms or seen the cruelty of the Azure era. Avril, I'm sorry for your loss. This world is cruel. I know, but I'm not willing. Avril jerked her head up, her red eyes containing tears, glaring wide and looking somewhat terrified. How can these murderers live with such impunity? They must pay the price. I must avenge my family's death. Perhaps sensing that she was being too vicious, Avril looked at the bow in embarrassment. Uh, I'm sorry, I know it's my business, I've just been at sea for four days, and you're the first person I've come across. No, the first boat. No, no, the first boatman. Rain was rather despondent. What the hell is a boatman? Never mind, it wasn't the time to dwell on that. What is this human class C you were talking about? You're a boat, don't you even know that? What does that have to do with whether I'm a boat or not? Rain said in a sour voice. Oh, Avril had never met such a fierce ship, so she could only say honestly, there are five main classes of seas in the world, namely sky, dragon, king, beast, and human. The human class is the lowest, and has the least resources. But in comparison, the current situation on the main shipping routes is more stable, and although there are mutants, they are not too numerous and not too strong. Basically, it is rare to encounter sea monsters. Sort of a more suitable sea to live for ordinary people like us. As for the rest, I'm not sure. I've never been there. All I know is that the beast class sea is very rich in resources. There are many large islands, the most terrifying creatures, terrifying currents, and terrifying natural climates. Only the strong enough fleet with strong enough crew would dare to enter. Rain frowned slightly, although he didn't have an eyebrow either. The beast class is already so terrifying? What about king class? Dragon class, and sky class? Well, I don't know, I've never been there either, and no one on our side has returned from those places. Avril said resignedly, they also say there are real dragons in the dragon level waters. I don't know if that's true, and I can't just tell you that. Rain shook his head. This source of information is really a bit unreliable. A beast level sea is so said by her like the top level sea. But then again, the human level sea is so competitive? This is a bit out of Rain's expectation. So let me ask you, you said we are in uninhabited seas now. Which level is this? Rain could only ask simple questions. There is no level in the uninhabited seas, as there are few resources and few islands. Although the climate is relatively smooth and there are no fey beasts. But without resources, who would want to come? Rain thought about it. No wonder he had been able to wander around so leisurely. It turned out he was in uninhabited seas. He was only a 1.5 combat minion anyway not to mention a 30M ship with cannons. The fishing boat Avril had been on could take him out, so it was better to develop in no man's land. He doesn't know how Avril will get her revenge with a 0.5 combat rating, which is not as high as White's. When thinking about development, Rain's first thought still was wood. For the next level of evolution, he needed 50 timbers. He needed to encounter five such shipwrecks. Avril's father had come here only because he had a chart. Who would normally come here? In the vast uninhabited seas, 
Five shipwrecks. It felt like a dream. By the way, is your father's chart still there? Rain suddenly thought of it and immediately asked. It's long gone. Oh my god. Rain was truly gutted with regret. But the general direction I can identify. You know the location? I don't know the exact coordinates. But I've seen the charts too. We grew up on the sea. I can get the general direction with a glance. And I see you have a compass here. So I think I should be able to take you there. Rain was instantly energized. If he could find the island, how much wood could there be? By the way, what are you sailing? I don't see an engine. Avril searched the boat. No oars either. Oars? They're at my ass. Rain had just finished speaking when the timber tethered to his back was made into two oars by the system. It was hard to get wood, but the wood was definitely not a problem if he could find the island and trees. So Rain had to put down his blood money and make the oars first. After this time he had only 0.1 wood left. You row I'll steer. Avril took the oars out of the water and back to the boat's belly and set them up on the side shelf. I'm slow. It could be days before we get to the nearest one. Doesn't matter. We can gather some materials on the way. Rain wasn't too anxious about that. Hey, by the way, what's your name? And what do I call you from now on? Avril started paddling, and Rain finally got a larger displacement on the surface. What do you call me? Rain thought for a moment, suddenly realizing that the question didn't even need to be considered. That's no need to ask. Just call me Captain. Yes, Captain. Uh, you and White will be my crew from now on. Now, let's get going right away. Target. No man's land. 8. Emergency. After only a few minutes of work, Rain moved slower and slower and finally stopped. Captain I. I can't row anymore. Avril looked timidly at the bow, afraid the fierce boat would scold her. Eh, uh, take a break then. I'd forgotten you'd been floating in the sea for days. By the way, there are a few pieces of dried fish on the boat. You can have some first. May I? Avril said cautiously. She was a little unconvinced that this guy who had grabbed her plank and bra had such a gentle side. Sure. With Rain's permission, Avril obviously was hungry and grabbed the dried fish and ate it in one big bite, without any image at all. Rain wondered if all daughters of the sea were so spontaneous. After a few bites, Avril suddenly thought of something and turned to White and said, White, I'm sorry I ate your dried food, but don't worry. I'll catch more fish when I have the strength. By the way, are you hungry? You should eat some too. Although White's food was good, Avril could still consider White when she was so hungry made Rain think highly of Avril. Just now, Rain had been wary of Avril. Rain was sympathetic to Avril's plight and wanted to trust her. But after all, they had only just met times. He had to be careful. As to whether Avril was trustworthy or not, time and experience would tell. Rain relaxed a little when he saw Avril eating with White. He opened the information panel and began to check it. Host Rain. Vessel. Small single deck plank ship. Crew size 2. Ship speed. Open for details. Crew size 2. Combat power, 1.5. Loading capacity, 79.6 slash 300 kg. Evolutionary progress, 0.1 slash 50 wood. The clothes were almost dry by now, so their weight would not change again. White is 20 kilograms, and Avril is 50 kilograms, so the total weight of the supplies on rain was almost 10 kilograms. Holy shit. The ship's speed surprisingly changed. But what the hell is that question mark? Rain hurriedly opened the ship's speed option and a new list of information appeared in Rain's mind. Power equipment, oars asterisk 2, power system, manual power, the speed of the ship, manual power is affected by the individual differences between the crew and the state of the individual, so it is impossible to count the ship's speed, adding crew members can reduce the effect of individual differences, eh? Rain thought about it, and found the system had a point. There was only one person on board who could row Avril. By analogy, if 50 people were rowing simultaneously, it would be different again. From this point of view, the crew seems quite important. Although the results were a little frustrating, Rain also saw some encouraging results. Although the ship's speed is not yet displayed, Rain at least has been equipped with power equipment and power systems, which is a historic step forward. Not bad, quite an improvement. Rain nodded in satisfaction with the bow sank twice. Avril and White were almost thrown off. Rain ignored them and continued to check the next item. Supplies gathered, 79. That much? Rain was a little surprised that there were 79 pieces of those supplies. Newly collected supplies, 68 cotton and linen clothing, 16. Plastic bottles, 4. Antibiotic medicine, 47. Life preservers, 1. Existing supplies, 11. Fish skin rope, 
6. Fish Bone Spikes 4. Small Simple Seawater Purification Device 1. Rain looked at the small bottle of medicine and finally understood that the bottle of antibiotics contained 47 capsules, which was why his supplies looked so large. Damn, happy for nothing. Rain was just about to shake his head when he thought he almost threw Avril and White off earlier and forced himself to hold back. Open the manufacturing list. The manufacturing list now had two sub-options, one new manufacturable item list and one existing manufacturable item list. The existing item list was still the same five items. Fish skin boat bottom, short rope, fish bone nails, dried fish, and small simple seawater purification device. Rain had already remembered these things and quickly skipped them. Check the new items. New manufacturable item list for hemp rope, 157-1, cotton and linen material, tougher than short ropes made from fish skin, can be used to secure masts, sails, etc., and is a common item for sailing. Sisal fishing net, 157-50, hemp rope, used for fishing, you can set the width of the net mouth, and the nets can be spliced. Buoy 4 to 1, plastic bottle, 0.1 slash 1, wood, 0 slash 1, stone, for marking. Rubber bottom, 1 tenth, rubber, increase the buoyancy of the boat, improve the load and reduce the corrosion of the bottom. I can make so many things. Huh, no? Where's my mast? Where are my sails? Why don't I have these two things? Rain was a bit confused. Does the system hide something good away? No, he couldn't trust the system this time. Rain was gonna ask his crew member. Professional fisherman Avril. Hey, Avril. Eh? Captain, you calling me? Avril put down her dried fish and looked at the bow. Can I rig a mast and sails on my boat? Huh. Avril was a little baffled. She was a little confused as to why the captain was asking her this question. But since the captain had asked it, she answered, uh, let me see. Avril looked closely at the planking. And after a while, she suddenly exclaimed, Oh, captain, your boat. No, your body. Only has one layer of planking but the craft is so good. The mortise and tenon inlay is so perfect. I've never seen such fine woodwork. Stop, 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 get to the point, Rain said. Oh, I'm sorry, but you can't fit a mast with only one plank. Why? Rain asked defiantly. Masts generally are very long. The masts must be firmly fixed to the hull to keep them balanced. In general, it should go deep inside several layers of planking. You only have one layer of planking, and once you insert it, it will be through and then the boat will leak. Rain has nothing to say. With his small frame, he couldn't install the mast. Still, an item that didn't appear in the system only meant he did not have enough levels. Oops, Captain. Avril was still checking out the planking, her small hands gently stroking it, and her face frowning as if worried about something. The bottom of the ship isn't safe like this. It will easily take on water without a coating, even with good craftsmanship. That bad? Yeah, Avril affirmed. We may sink before we reach the island. Oh my god! What a shitty boat. It's worse than a bamboo raft. At least the raft won't sink. 9. Fish skin boat bottom. Avril's words made Rain slightly uneasy. The bamboo raft was unstable and couldn't support the weight. But it wouldn't sink. But the boat would. But soon Rain calmed down. The wooden boats will become larger, more versatile, and more high-tech with evolution. Although Rain was not an expert sailor, he had a basic understanding. And the system also offered a solution a rubber bottom and a fish skin bottom. Forget the rubber bottom. Rain now only has a life buoy. For one thing, the material is still a lot short. For another, it is still very useful. When White and Avril fall overboard, he can rescue them. So he definitely cannot disintegrate it. So there is another option, the fish skin bottom. Fish skin bottom, membrane 1 slash 500, fish skin, reduces seawater resistance and corrosion can be recycled for use after upgrading the ship. Rain checked the information and suddenly exclaimed, Damn, it actually costs 500 fish skins now. Before it was 100. Oh, I have become bigger now. So naturally, the need for fish skins has also increased. Seeing this astronomical figure, Rain fell into deep thought. 500 fish, even with Avril, there was no telling how long it would take for them to catch. Although he had plenty of time, Avril's warning gave him some urgency sense. That option, forget. Have to make the fishing nets first. Rain looked at the clothes on his body. He was gonna use them for sails. But the system couldn't make them for him. Well, what was important was to solve the pressing problems first. After figuring out this series of problems, Rain no longer hesitates. System, make a fishing net first. Don't make the grid too big. 
just as big as a fish before. Those clothes on the boat instantly seemed to be pulled out of a thread pulling, quickly disintegrated, and then the cotton and linen threads quickly compiled themselves, twisted into a more sturdy cotton and linen rope, and finally were quickly compiled into a fishing net. What the? Avril was scared and backed up, holding to White tightly, who licked Avril's face in delight. No matter what breed of dog, there always seems to be a penchant for taking advantage of opportunities. Captain, is that you? It's me. Rain couldn't explain too clearly and admitted, Avril, see if this net will work. The net landed in front of Avril, who put on a brave face and lifted it to look. The net was about five meters long, and the holes were roughly three centimeters and diamond shaped. Captain, your craft is so good. It's so sturdy. The net works, but it's too small. The nets we used to use for fishing were several kilometers. You won't catch much fish with a small net unless you run into a school of them. I want a few kilometers net too, but the material is not enough. Rain said okay, I'll make two more and put them together. Since the nets were usable, Rain made all the rest clothes into nets, leaving only the last few materials to make seven pieces of cotton and linen rope. The whole time Avril stared with wide eyes and a look of disbelief. Stop standing around and see if we can catch fish now. Avril froze and checked the nets. The quality of the nets was naturally no need to say. There were three nets, and the total field was 15 meters. Captain, yes, we can, but we still need buoys. Avril looked around and immediately dropped her eyes on the plastic bottles. We don't have much material right now, but we can use a rope to attach these plastic bottles to the nets to keep them from sinking into the sea. And we can tie one end of the net to the boat, so we won't lose it. Yo, Rain looked at Avril in amazement. This girl actually had thought of this. Not bad. The system is dead, but Avril is alive. Avril is an old fisherman. She says it can work with no problem, and the plastic bottles and rope can be reused. There is no waste. With a workable plan, Rain couldn't help but get excited. Okay, let's do as you said. Now, our goal is to catch 500 fish. Rain immediately followed Avril's vision and had the system complete a simple fishing net. The next step was to choose a place to drop the net, which was Rain's forte. Rain was always watching the fish when he was bored. There's a school of fish ahead, Avril. Row the boat, and I'll control the direction. Aye, Captain. The boat moved to the surface above the school of fish, and Rain asked Avril to cast the nets down. The net sank a distance, and was stabilized at a certain depth due to the buoyancy of the plastic bottles. After securing the end of the net to the hull with a rope, they had to do now was wait. Wow, there is a lot of fish. Captain, you are amazing. White, come and see. Avril leaned over the side of the boat and watched the fish swimming under the clear water. Their nets were nearby, just waiting for the fish to come into the net. After playing for a while, Avril turned her head to the bow. Captain, we'll wait an hour or two before we can collect the net. Well, can I get some sleep? I'm a bit tired. H.M., I guess you haven't slept for a few days. Rest first. Two days later, in the azure sky with white clouds, a woman stood up on a narrow wooden boat, and with a wave of her arm, she skillfully threw the fishing net in her hand with great force, stirring up a splash of water that sparkled in the hot sun. After casting the net, the woman takes off her coat, smiles at the white Labrador beside her, and jumps into the water together. Not long after, Avril and White caught two fish up. Gee, White, you're good at that too. Avril helped White throw the fish into the belly of the boat and held White's head against her chest, stroking it carelessly. Again, let's see who's faster this time. None of this escaped Rain's eyes, white this guy. Hey, just in front of me, she took her clothes off again. Fuck, I even lived worse than a Labrador. Why don't you take me for a ride? Rain has no chance to join them to catch fish, but with the harvest from the nets and the help of Avril and White, they caught over 300 fish in that time. Have to say, in the Azure era, without humans polluting the environment, the fish population has become more and more abundant. At this rate, 500 fish are just around the corner. With a new crew member added, Rain has also increased his food reserves. He has made a dozen pieces of dried fish and stocked up 30 or 40 fishbone spikes as a backup. The seawater purification unit was performing better than Rain had expected. Avril would check the unit from time to time and replenish it with seawater to keep the purification unit working all the time. For the time being, the little unit would have no problem providing drinking water for two. Eh, fishing boats women and dogs, quite a comfortable life. Rain floated leisurely on the surface, nope, should have kicked white out. After two more days, the goal of 500 fish had been reached, and Rain couldn't wait to have the system make him a fish skin boat bottom.
Once Rain's entire lower body was wrapped in a layer of treated fish skin, his whole body was soothed. Yes, Avril, White, feel me down there. It's super slippery. Captain, you are so bad. Avril blushed and looked shyly towards the bow. Rain almost spurted out a mouthful of seawater. He really meant nothing else. Whatever the bottom of the ship finally was settled, they could head to their next target. Avril, White, don't play. We can have fun. Since the hull is secure, we head for the deserted island. Aye, Captain. After the last few days of rest and adjustment, Avril was much refreshed and less depressed. White sat upright and let out a couple of woof woof. Yes, now let's go. Rain commanded in a full voice. Ten. Storm is coming. The fish skin bottom reduces the friction of the water flow, and sailing is much faster. Along the way, Avril and White paddled, ate, drank, and got closer to their destination. It is said that love is bad for single, but now Rain is embarrassed to find that he is that single. What's worse is that when the weather gets hot, Avril will take off her clothes just like no people around. It's too sexy. Do you think I don't have a dick? The answer is yes. He does not even have a stick. Fine, don't care. My goal is to dominate the Azure era. The next morning, after the boat had been underway for some time, Avril put down her oars and looked around. Captain, two of the three islands are not far apart. The nearest one should be near here. Strange how I can't see it? I think it's foggy in the morning, and visibility is too low. Rain was pretty sure there were no islands around here, as his warning system didn't beep. Let's take a stroll, Rain said. Aye, Captain. The small boat bobbed around the surrounding waters. And not long after, a long-awaited voice rang in Rain's head. Found a miniature coral island at 193 degrees southwest, 497 meters. Rain's spirits rose, Avril, rowed the boat. I know where it is. Oh yes, Captain. Avril had been playing with White for a while, but it was not just playing. After Avril's coaching, White was now paddling the boat with his teeth and making it go a bit faster. There are four main islands, mainland, volcanic, alluvial, and coral. But this was the information Rain had previously known, and he wasn't sure how many there were now. The place they were going to was a coral island. It is made up of coral worms and crusty creature carcasses and is not too large. The size of the island has nothing to do with Rain. He was here to cut down trees, not to settle. Gradually, the island became clear in the crowd's view. It indeed was a small island, perhaps only a square kilometer in size. Worse still, the island was only with some felled trees, bare and nothing. What the fuck, who cut all the trees? How there's not a single one left? Rain said angrily. Avril was also looking at the island blankly at this point. They would have faced the same sight if her family had come here. It looks like someone found it. After all, judging by the trees cut down, they should have just been here a few months ago. Then the other island probably be discovered too. Rain hasn't given up yet. He found this island with great difficulty. How could he give up so easily? Rain said. Whatever the other one, let's dock and see if there's any more wood we can use. The boat docked. Avril and White went ashore to check it out and soon returned. From Avril's frustrated expression and the fact that she and White's empty hands, Rain already knew the answer the place had been searched to the last crumb. Get in and go to the next island. Three hours later, the same thing happened again. The second island even was cleaner than the first. Damn, is it necessary to cut so cleanly? Not even a small tree? Rain said indignantly. Originally, he could get several hundred usable woods, enough for him to level up several levels. But now, no shit left. Captain, wood is an essential commodity for us, Avril explained. In this day and age, ships mean everything. Because of the scarcity of wood, even when they come across trees that don't grow, they dig them up and take them back to plant for later use. Those remaining stumps are unusable, and those pits in the ground must have been left when they dug the trees. Rain let out a long sigh. It looked like they were too late. Hey, forget it. It's useless to say anything now. Anyway, you guys get in the boat first. Rain was also depressed, but he had accepted it. He could even accept his regeneration into a raft. What else could he not accept? By the way, didn't you say there was another island? That one doesn't live near these two islands. It should still have a chance. Avril said with slight difficulty this time, Captain, that island is the smallest of the three. And, as I remember, it is in very dangerous waters. Hmm? I thought you said the uninhabited waters were safe? Rain asked curiously. Captain, there is no perfect safe area at sea, and I'm only talking about a relatively safe area compared to other areas. That island is located in a reef area and... Avril looked at the sky. The weather is not very good at this time of year. 
Rain couldn't help but sink into thought. With his small body, he would surely die if he hit the reef. Wait, not necessarily. The reef is a rocky bottom, and although wood is certainly no match for stone, it also depends on the boat's speed. He is weak, but he is all round weak. He's incredibly slow. The system doesn't even bother to count. At that speed, even if he ran into a reef, he wouldn't hang up just that. His rain had a feeling of clarity. Weakness has become a strength of his own. And he could see the reef. That was also a very favorable condition. All things considered, his little rickety boat wasn't really afraid of reefs. As for the weather, that depends on the god. Timber, timber, without timber, I'll always be just a small rickety boat. I have to get timber, Rain said to himself. Fifty timbers? I don't know how long I have to wait by scavenging. Besides, that island is dangerous so may no one will go. The chances of there have timber much higher. Captain, so you want? Avril stared at Rain with wide eyes. Not just want, now let's set sail for the reef area. Avril hesitated a little, but she only hesitated for a moment before saying, Aye, Captain. Two days later, the ship, one man, and a dog spotted a faint green ahead. Green appeared amidst an azure blue, so conspicuous, so inviting. Even without needing to be alerted by the system, Rain knew that was where he was going. Captain, 300 meters ahead is the reef area. We. Oui. Just then, Avril suddenly stopped and stood up nervously. She reached out her hand, twiddled her fingers, felt the humidity in the air, and then looked up at the sky. Having done this, Avril stared in horror and said blankly, Captain, it's over. A storm is coming. 11. To sail the sea by the helm. A storm on the sea comes without a moment's hesitation. As soon as Avril spoke, the sky around her became cloudy. The originally calm sea gradually surged up, and the layers of waves increased in amplitude. The tumbling waves seemed to contain great energy, ready to strike at a moment's notice. All these changes were telling Rain that this would be a terrifying storm. The blue sea, which was no longer so soft, was about to show its violent side. Rain could feel his body going up and down, shaking more and more. With his current power system, he would never be able to escape the storm. With the reef ahead and a storm behind him, Rain had no way out. Captain, Avril's voice sounded hopeless as she bowed his head. I'm sorry I brought you here. Thank you for saving me in the first place. And you, White, it's good I've had you by my side all this time to keep me from feeling so bad. Hopefully in another life. Next life my ass. Rain, who hadn't spoken, suddenly bellowed, looking up at the thick clouds overhead, and growled, Fuck God, in the last life, you took my life, wasn't that enough? As a result, I've been reborn, and you still refuse to let me go. You want my life? Fine, I admit I can't beat you now, but I, Rain, can tell you, if you want me to give up, you're dreaming. Avril looked at the boat in amazement. This was the first time she had heard Rain talk about his past. And for the first time, she knew her captain's name Rain. Captain. Rain finished venting and turned to look at the belly of his ship. He had so little to work. No defenses on board, not even handrails, just some ropes, seawater purification equipment, fishing nets, life preservers. As a small ramshackle boat at the top of the all-time shabby rankings, Rain certainly lived up to his ranking. The sea became increasingly unsettled as pulses of rain pelted down in the sky. Rain tried to calm himself and said after a moment's thought, Avril, put the antibiotics away and try not to lose them. They're the only medicine we have. Secure the oars with ropes and use the fishing nets to tie the oars on both sides. When it gets bumpy, you grab the nets. Remember, tie them securely. You put in the life belt first. Quickly tied the life belt to the boat with a rope. Quick. Avril froze for a moment but immediately did as Rain asked and got busy. White, make sure you bite down on the nets, okay. Woof. Avril was very handy and had soon finished the job. By now, the oars were inside the boat. It is tied tightly with rope, and the fishing net was messily stretched across the belly of the boat. Two sections secured in the oar slots, ugly but sturdily tied. Captain, what about the water purification unit? The water purification device was painstakingly made by Rain. It was of irreplaceable importance. But even if Rain could not bear to part with it, he could not be bothered at this time. Whatever. While Avril was busy, the sea was not the same as before. The wind churned the waves, and the sky was gray with heavy rain. Avril, white, Rain looked at his only two crew members and tried to sound even, don't give up. There's hope for us. Once we get through the reef area and get to that island, we have hope. I know the hope is slim, but I will never give up any glimmer of hope. Ha 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 ha. You two look like you've never seen any big waves before. 
This is just a little storm in front of an excellent captain and helmsman. We will survive. The sky thundered with a bang, and lightning ripped through the sky like tree branches. The wind howled at that moment the storm was coming. Rain narrowed his eyes slightly. What's the point of being arrogant in front of me? Today I'll show you what it means to sail the sea by the helm. After saying that, Rain shifted his eyes to the front. There was the reef area. The bottom of the sea was full of reefs. Under the high-speed movement, the giant ship would sink, let alone his small body. He was about to pass through here. Rain's biggest advantage was that he could see the reef, and this would be the most important factor in their survival. The waves behind them rolled and arrived in an instant. Rain's body instantly rose five or six meters to the highest point, and this life-or-death parkour was on. Ah, woof woof woof. Avril and White were on a roller coaster ride at this point. They barred straight down the several meter high waves, and their boat's speed skyrocketed. Rain's eyes were glued to the front. When he noticed his body moving fast, he took control of the rudder. In just a few moments, Rain had reached the reef. A reef ahead. Rain quickly changed the rudder to avoid it. Left, right, left front, right front. The sea floor was littered with bumps and bumps, and Rain was dodging from side to side with all his might. However, a huge wave came up behind him at that moment, sending Rain skyward again. Ah, help! Avro cried out for help desperately. Shut up! Hold on! Rain bellowed, his eyes fixed on the point of impact, where a large rocky outcrop lay on the ocean floor. Spin, damn it! Rain fought to turn himself, changing the direction of the force of the gale crashing against the hull to deflect the point of impact. With a loud thud, a small boat fell heavily to the surface. It sank almost completely into the sea, only to float back up quickly. Although the hull still scraped against the edge of the rocks, it did not crash. The waves were like crazed beasts with their teeth and claws, and Rain's body was as small as a black dot in front of the roaring waves, ready to be swayed by them. But he still balanced the boat with all his might while avoiding the numerous reefs underneath. In such a situation, it was difficult for him to avoid the reefs completely. The boat's hull had already developed an unknown number of scars of various sizes. The only blessing was that, so far unknown, he was still able to float on the water. Come on, just this? More. As if enraged by rain, a huge wave slapped behind him, and rain was swamped straight away. Out of sight, and seconds later, as a wave was crested, rain was sent into the air again and thrown straight out of the waves surrounding him. Avril and White kept a death grip on the net. But the throwing power was so great this time that they were almost flying out of the boat. They were just holding on to the net before they could detach themselves. At this point, the oar slot on the hull's right side, along with the side plate on the right side, finally deflated. The slotted ring broke off, and the side plate broke off. As the boat plunges at high speed, the nets are quickly spread. The force is unbalanced, and Avril and White are thrown off the boat simultaneously. A question suddenly flashed through Rain's mind. When Avril and White are in the water simultaneously, ask, who to save first? 12. This time I won. As is Rain's nature, the answer was to save both. The system could search for Avril and White's position, and at the moment of the fall, Rain redirected himself and quickly tried to reach the nearest Avril. Avril was floundering in the waves when suddenly her hands felt the life belt that Rain had flung in front of her. Grab the life belt. Rain shouted, seeing Avril had already clung to the life belt and immediately sailed in White's direction. The sea repeatedly flooded Avril's eyes, and Avril saw White in the water in the intermittent vision. In the nick of time grabbed White by the tail and pulled him to her, White. Both Avril and White were still submerged in the water, but the rope catching the lifeboat to the hull, at least they were not separated. Seeing the next big wave was about to hit, Rain hurriedly changed course and sprinted for the island in the distance. After an unknown amount of time, Rain finally broke out of the reef area and took Avril and White into the confines of the island. He was heading for the beach. Exhausted when the bottom of the boat touched the hard land, Rain looked back as Avril was carrying White and coming towards him. Captain, we made it, we made it. We're not dead. What's to be happy? It was too easy for me. However, not waiting for Rain to put on good speaking, his vision faded uncontrollably. At the last moment, Rain saw the storm raging in the distance, dark clouds overwhelming the sky, and the wind howling with fury. It seemingly becomes even more furious at Rain's escape. Rain sneered, fuck God, this time I won. When Rain opened his eyes again, the horrible storm was gone. The place was still blue sky, blue sea, sunny beach and, eh? Why am I in the sky? Rain hurriedly checked his situation and found that he was stuck in a tree. 
The next thing Rain knew, he found himself being pulled down and hitting the ground in one fell swoop. This was the first time Rain had touched the ground since his rebirth, and he didn't expect it to be so enthusiastic. Luckily the ground was soft, and the fall didn't hurt. Phew. Avril exhaled a long breath, hands at her waist. A rope still tugged in her hand. Captain, I finally got you down from the tree. I'll push you out to sea after I take a break. White looked at Rain on the ground, wagged his tail excitedly, and circled him. Rain doesn't want to deal with this guy who values sex over the master. He took his eyes off the two and looked around. He was already on this legendary island, which was a bit of a stretch to call an island. It was less than half the size of the two islands before it, and the size of a football field. But, on this island, however, many trees were growing. After the storm raging last night, many fell to the east and west. But instead, they made the thick trunks even more striking. Timber. Rain's eyes were now full of chunks of timber. Rain couldn't wait. I'm sure it's a blessing to have survived the disaster. Quickly, gather up all this timber. Aye, Captain. That I'll go ahead and make a stone axe. Avril was saluting Rain. She looks combative. Before long, there was the clunking sound of logging in the woods, which was the most beautiful music to Rain's ears. He enjoyed it with immense relief. After a week of felling, Avril had cleared the grove clean. Rain immediately opened his information panel. Host Rain. Vessel. Small single plank boat. Crew size 2. Ship speed. Open for details. Combat power. 1.5. Crew size 2. Load capacity. 6.3 slash 300 kg. Evolution points. 142.3 slash 50. Wood. Currently evolvable. Over 140 timbers. Ha 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 ha. It's a real fortune. Rain was in an extremely relieved mood. It seemed that the storm and the reef area were worth it. Rain's hull was now covered in wounds, but none of that mattered. He could build a new ship from scratch. Evolve. At the command, the system immediately began to build the next level of the ship. Right next to Rain, the beginnings of a ship were rapidly being completed. Avril looks on in shock. The keel, the hull, the dragon tendons, and the deck were all being completed quickly. And before long, a double-decker wooden ship about four meters long had been built. Captain, this, did you build this? Avril said in shock. Or else, you and White go play off to the side and see what other useful supplies. Rain had no time for her now. Let's get these two guys out of the way. Consciousness and supplies were transferred. The recovery of the single plank wooden ship was soon complete. And as Rain's consciousness fused into the new hull, it suddenly felt different. Wowza, I'm four meters now. At least a meter and a half wide. I'm now two decks too. I can't believe I have a steering wheel now. Look at the carving, hmm. That's more like a boat. Right, open the message template again. With a new ship, Rain naturally had to look at his new data. The system was quickly presented in Rain's mind. Host Rain, vessel, small double-decker plank ship, crew size 2, ship speed 3 knots, open for details, combat power, 1.5, crew size 2, load capacity, June 3rd, 1000 kg, evolution points, 92.3 slash 150, eh? Wait, why has my ship's speed changed? Open it up and take a look. Not bothering to look at the other data changes, Rain was the first to open the speed submenu first. Power equipment 1 boat or asterisk 2. Power equipment 2, wooden hand crank thruster. Power system, manual power. Boat speed, power equipment 1, no statistics on boat speed. Power equipment 2, maximum boat speed is 3 knots. 1 knot equals 1 nautical mile per hour equals 1.852 kilometers per hour. Actual speed is subject to the operator's operating effect. 3 knots is 5,400 m slash h. A bit slow. And Avril, that little minion with 0.5 combat power. It probably won't be able to reach the maximum ship speed for sure, but it's better than the oars. Customarily, new buildable items will appear when a ship is upgraded. Rain didn't forget this. He opens the list of buildable items again. Perhaps it was because he had so few resources but the only new items that appeared were the canopy, the live bunker, and the mast he longed for. However, now that Rain was over 90 timbers rich, just 60 timbers short of upgrading to the next level, he was a little hesitant to use them on these accessories. Definitely, evolution is the main focus. I'm not particularly short of wood at the moment, and these aren't really needed urgently, so I might as well wait and see. Rain mulled over the situation. Also, Rain suffered some losses during the storm. The fish skin bottom membrane was in a bad state of disrepair. 
It looked like it would have to be reworked as the boat's hull had increased in size, requiring an increase in the membrane area. The water purification equipment has long since flown off to who knows where, but good thing there's still wood here, and with some more fish skin, we can make a new one. No, we can make two, just in case. That said, there is still a need to fish. Captain? Avril came running over with white and tow with gusto, saying, We've found fresh water. There were plants on the island, so naturally, there was fresh water. Rain thought about it and said, Yes, we lost water purification equipment. Since there's some here, then there's no need to rush. This island is in a treacherous location. Shouldn't be many people coming. Let's develop here for a while. 13. Earn pearls? There were many stones on the island. With these, Rain made two buoys so that he didn't need to keep watch over the nets as long as Avril waited a few hours after casting the nets, and they could go to harvest. Avril made a bed out of leaves and used some unusable twigs for the fire. After eating dried fish for so long, she could finally have a few hot meals. Captain, we've found something good. It wasn't two days before Avril and White returned with the happy news. We found these clays. So, Rain wasn't sure what was so good about the stuff. Avril was used to Rain's calmness. She said excitedly, Captain, there are a lot of crabs and hermit crabs here, besides sea fish, so grind their shells into powder, add sand and clay. Apply it to the bottom of your boat. Burn it dry and it will strengthen the bottom of the boat and better prevent leaks too. Rain's heart fluttered. If Avril's method worked, it would be very useful to him indeed. He wrapped the boat with a fish skin membrane on top of the clay, so it would not affect the boat's speed. With multiple layers of protection, he would become even stronger. So what are you waiting for? Do it now. Although Avril was only a 0.5 combatant, she was pretty clever. She dug a hole in the beach and then used a log to roll Rain over the large hole so she could attach the clay to the bottom of Rain's boat. Avril stood in the pit and applied a large pile of mixed black stuff underneath him, then smoothed it out before baking up a fire in the bottom of the boat. What the hell? I put myself on the fire. Why would I do something like that? Rain was also depressed. Protected by the clay, Rain didn't catch fire. He just felt his body warm. Throughout the afternoon, System finished Rain's reinforced bottom. Following the original log track, Avril pushed Rain well back into the sea. How does it feel now, Captain? Slightly deeper draft, not much else. Haha, <laughs> Captain, don't worry about it. I used to help my dad mend boats all the time. After treating them like this, they'll never leak even without fish skin protection. Well, believe you for now. The days on the deserted island were particularly relaxed. Avril and White's tasks mainly consisted of fishing, eating barbecues and occasionally digging on the island. Avril hoped to find some useful ore, but unfortunately, they never got anything besides clay. Rain made the bottom of the boat out of fish skin and made two simple water purification devices, not only in greater quantity but also bigger than the previous ones. It used three units of his wood. With the increased weight of the boat, Rain also stocked up on dried fish in case. Rain didn't want to leave the extra timber on the boat. He didn't think he could fit 90 units of timber on board. He asked Avril to make a raft out of the timber, tie the timber to the raft with fishing nets, and drag it behind him when the time comes. In the blink of an eye, they had been here for most of the month. By now, all the preparations were complete. That night Avril and White returned to the boat to rest. The sea breeze was unusually cold for the evening. Rain didn't feel the chill but Avril couldn't help but shiver as the sea breeze blew through her malnourished pale yellow hair and danced gently along her cheeks. Avril tucked her hands into her sleeves and hugged White for warmth. Captain, where do we go next? Rain hesitated at the sight and said, I don't know. Do you know of anywhere else to get wood? With timber, you can usually only get it in the islands. But there are no more islands we can go to now, Rain said. And my grandfather only left my dad a chart. We've checked all three islands. In that case, Avril tried to think, if we can't get the wood ourselves, we'll get it from someone else by buying it or exchanging it. But then, we'd have to enter the human class waters. Only there has a medium to large size sea market. He had only two crew members with a combined fighting strength of 1.5. He was in great danger if he encountered pirates or something. I'm not going to enter human class waters for now. At least until I'm another level up, Rain said. Avril cocked his head and tried to think, if we don't go into human class waters, that's fine. We can look around human class waters. Some places have sea markets, but they're all relatively small. It doesn't matter if it's small. It's fine if it's there. Rain said, what do they usually trade for wood though? For everything, like iron ore, copper ore, etc. Gum, animals, food, water, sand. Eh?
Santu, wouldn't there be plenty of it here? Captain, the price of sand is very low. People have sand carriers of tens of tons. How much can you load? You probably won't make a single piece of wood on the run. Rain didn't understand the current market situation, but after a little thought about it, he did understand. Things are precious when scarce, like easily available supplies, fish, sand, etc. People can also obtain them easily, so the price is naturally not high. So look, do we have any supplies that we can use to trade? The ones that are a bit more expensive. It seems, there is no. Oh yeah, clay is quite valuable. It's just that. Here clay we have collected all and used it all up. Avril splashed over a pot of cold water. Is it so hard to do business these days? Isn't there anything I can do? Avril thought carefully and said, Captain, in fact, your craftsmanship is so good that you can process it on behalf of others. It's just that. People usually don't directly give their resources to strangers with confidence. You have to be in front of them to process it. In the state you're, I'm afraid it's not good for others to see. Showing others that rain can build instantly? Then it is estimated that the Sky Class C's fleets will rush out and snatch rain. Rain doesn't want to be caught as a laborer just yet. By the way, we can engage in transport to earn pearls and use them to buy timber directly. What, what does that mean? In the market, pearls are common currency divided into white, black, and gold pearls, which vary in value. White pearls being the cheapest and gold pearls the most expensive. Avril said between the various trading markets, there are times when goods need to be shared. So someone needs to help transport the supplies. But of course, not for nothing. They get some payment after transporting them. And aren't they afraid the transport ships will abduct the goods? They'll have someone with the ship. Besides, if what you say happens, the ship will be on the Navy's most wanted list and end up badly. Captain, I know a few small trading markets. Shall we go? And the Navy? Rain realized that this Azure era was quite developed. Yes, but the Navy doesn't help for nothing. The various maritime trading markets pay a large number of pearls to the Navy every year for them to step in and secure the trading routes. The Navy only maintains the trading areas and the shipping lanes between them. They patrol the shipping lanes and repel pirate fleets that try to seize the transports. So it's all relatively safe around the shipping lanes. We'll be fine even if we drag so much timber with us. I see. Rain was instantly impressed. Now he had a way to earn money. All he had to do was buy 60 more timbers and he could upgrade. 14. Mission. The next morning, when Avril woke up, she found that she and White were lying in a small room. She heard they got out and looked back. It turned out that a simple little cabin had somehow been added to the hull. Wow, Captain, did you make this? Avril excitedly got out of the hall and looked back and forth. If not me, was it you? Rain said faintly. Great, sleeping in at night won't be so cold, and it'll keep the wind and rain out during the week. Great, Captain, you're so nice. Avril was as happy as a bouncing bird. Rain didn't bother to pay any attention to her. Captain, Avril leaned over the bow and looked mysteriously at it. I used to think you were mean, but you're not that cold, are you? Nope. I was only afraid you'd get sick, and I'd lose my crew. Rain said without a smile, if you guys get some rest, we'll go to the nearest trading market. Avril immediately became serious and saluted to the bow. I, Captain, crewmate Avril is ready to go, as he said that. White came bounding out of the cabin and barked from the bow, woof woof. Eh good, now that we're all set let's go. A small boat and lone human sailed slowly across the ocean. As far as rain could remember, the average boat could reach speeds of 10 knots or more. Some could reach 15 knots or even 20 knots or more. Whereas right now, his maximum boat speed was only 3 knots, and he was not currently at his full boat speed. Currently, his boat speed is 2 knots equating to 3,600 meters an hour. Rain didn't blame Avril either. She was doing her best. He was satisfied that a little minion with 0.5 combat power could achieve this shipping speed. Eight days later, Rain's radar alerted him. It spotted a large number of ships and humans. We're almost at the nearest trading market. Avril said, Captain, I think I'll be in charge of communication when the time comes. It might be a bit inconvenient for you in this state. Rain naturally had no problem with this. As rain slowly approached, he noticed that many ships had gathered not far ahead, and a floating market had been erected on the sea. The market was lined with interlocking roads, many people hurrying back and forth, the voices of the people rising and falling. This isn't a small trading market, rain said. He had never seen anyone build such a large facility on the sea in all his life. This is a small one. The big market is almost like an artificial island. Avril section for rain, captain, now don't say anything. 
Someone is already watching us. Just tell me secretly if you have anything. On quite a few of the ships, people saw a new boat coming and looked at the small vessel strangely. It's brought a lot of wood. Such a small boat. It's here to sell wood, isn't it? That woman is really good looking. Really? Give me the binoculars. A sense of danger was pervasive all around. But no one dared to make a move here. The white three-masted warships moored in the distance were intimidating all the ships. Rain looked at the white battleship. Was this the Navy's battleship? The battleship was about 40 meters long overall, 10 times his length. Its sails were currently retracted, although the tall pole indicated how huge it would be when its sails were open. The battleship's hull is at least 20 meters high, with many cabins and a row of black holes on the side. If you look closely, you can see a muzzle of a door that looks very creepy. The ship's bow is shaped like a sword, and an artillery design is emblazoned on the hull. This is the same design as the flag on the ship, which may be a naval ensign. There were at least ten guns on one side and probably another row on the other. Twenty guns, what a battle it would have been if the ships had fought. Rain thought, I wonder when I'll be able to evolve into this kind of battleship. From time to time, crews walked around the naval ships. They wore uniform clothing with naval designs on them. Not only that, but there were people in the marketplace wearing the same clothing. And Rain noticed that the others were very respectful when they saw them. The navy seems to symbolize status and strength, even if it is just a naval crew. Just wait. I will surpass you all sooner or later. Rain made up his mind. But no matter what, Rain didn't dare to offend this behemoth right now. Because of the navy, a small ramshackle ship like his hauling a load of timber was so safe. And those who coveted Avril's beauty only moved their lips but did not dare to make any move. Captain, let's go to the mission posting location and see if there are any suitable transport missions. Rain sailed slowly to one side of the trading market, where many small boats were docked. Many of the boats had people standing on board, waiting anxiously for something. Before long, a large and bare-chested man walked up to these boats with a stack of papers. He waved the papers and said, here's the mission. I'll read it out. Anyone who wants to take it signs up themselves. Transport timber must reach the sell trading market within three days. At the same old price, 100 timbers for one white pearl. That's 500 in total. Go well, look here. I'll do it. I'll do it. I can run too. A group of men said eagerly. Avril hastily raised her hand. We'll take it. Rain thought to himself. 100 timbers are only worth one white pearl. The price for the transport task is too low. But Avril was a veteran and since she took it, the price should be reasonable. Rain didn't say anything. Colwell looked at the few boats that had signed up and casually named five, you, you, you. The five of you go to the back and register. Someone will follow the boat. Those who were named went happily to register. Sadly, Avril was not selected. Next mission, metal ore. The task requires a load of no more than two tons. It has to be transported to the Baikal trade market and arrive within two days. The price is two white pearls. Four ships are required. Only a few large ships took up the task this time. Rain obviously couldn't meet the requirements and had to give up. Next, transporting clay. Requesting a load of two tons, transporting to the Mississippi trading market, arriving in four days. For three white pearls, asking for two ships. Several missions followed all of which Avril had to abandon due to Rain's inability to meet the minimum load requirement. After a few missions being called, the task list in Goldwell's hands was getting smaller and smaller, and there were fewer and fewer ships around. Last mission, Goldwell couldn't help but glance at Avril. It was rare to see a beautiful woman here. He couldn't help but look at Avril a few more times too. This woman only grabbed the next mission at the beginning. There hadn't been much movement behind her. This is a search and rescue mission. The location is vague, about 15 nautical miles from here. The required search diameter is one kilometer. When they heard about the mission, many people around were very disappointed. Ah, uh, search and rescue mission. This is the most troublesome. If you can't find it, you don't get paid. Yeah, forget it. We'll withdraw if we don't have a transport mission. Goldwell did not care about these people and continued. This morning, a fishing boat sank. There were three people on board, a man and two women. The man was 35 years old, and the woman was 17 or 18. Take the task and I can give a portrait. Find someone alive to get one white pearl, dead half a white pearl. Anyone who willing to take it. This was the first time there had been a cold spell. Go well, this price is too low. The live ones used to be at least two white pearls. The boat owner is a small businessman, so he borrowed the boat and paid the maximum price. You can borrow it if you like, but don't say shit if you don't. 
The man lowered his head, embarrassed, and muttered unconvincingly, if that's the price for a search and rescue mission, only a fool would take it. A female voice suddenly rang out at that moment, I'll take it. 15. Emergency relief. At Rain's behest, Avril took on the task. No matter what anyone said, he couldn't do anything else anyway. Even if he fished three bodies, he would at least get 1.5 pearls, which was more money than transporting something. Avril returned and retrieved three portraits, a middle-aged man and a woman with two young girls. The four people were standing on a fishing boat, laughing and having a good time. Captain, let's go, Avril said in a lowered voice as she returned to the boat. This time no one was paying attention to the wood behind Rain's ass on the way. Their position was not yet out of the shipping lane, where transport vessels were often hauling all sorts of goods. Rain's wood was naturally assumed to be a trading market consignment. Avril and White were excited to take on the task, and the two were energetic. Combined with the wind, Rain reached a speed of three knots. Captain, why did you let me take on this search and rescue mission? Avril curiously asked as she cranked her prime thrusters. As long as they're not far from me, I can find them, Rain said confidently, and we can't take on a transport mission. Avril thought for a moment and said thoughtfully, is that how you found me in the water in the first place? Yes. Rain's radar covered a thousand meters in diameter. It could find lost fishermen as long as they were within that range. Hence his urgency in getting Avril to take the job. By the way, how much wood does a white pearl buy? Rain asked casually, thinking of the question. You can buy ten standard timbers. And a standard timber is about two and a half meters long. Avril said I reckon this woman in the portrait posted the quest. If all three people are found, she'll need to pay three white pearls to us and one more to the trading market. For white pearls can buy 40 timbers, which is almost enough to build a small fishing boat. Goldwell said they don't even have their own fishing boat, so maybe this money is what they'd been up to buy a boat. One white pearl buys 10 timber, then wouldn't three be? Rain came to life. If he could find three living people, he could earn three white pearls and buy 30 heels of timber, just 30 timber short of his evolution. Come on, let's pick up the pace, Rain said impatiently. Try to bring back as many live ones as possible. Perhaps because she had just been shipwrecked and lost a loved one, Avril felt extra sympathy for the family, and was touched by Rain's urgency. Captain, you are a good man. I wish they were all still alive. No, I have to speed up. On this point, Rain and Avril inexplicably agreed. Twenty nautical miles wasn't close for Rain either, but after Avril's outburst of power, they arrived in just ten hours. Let's take a look around, Rain said as he kept a careful eye on the radar. Avril controlled the direction while looking anxiously out to sea. White stuck his neck out of the boat to search constantly. Rain was busy too. He tried to communicate with the radar at such an important time. Brother alarm clock, come on. Now is the time I need you. Show up. Brother, get up. Hey, don't sleep. Brother, look how beautiful the night is. Come on, be a good boy. Give me a holler. Brother. After calling out an unknown number of times, a long-awaited voice finally rang in Rain's head. A human was spotted at 284 degrees northwest, 497 meters. Eh. Here we go. Rain was instantly like a chicken. Avril, steer the ship. I found one. Captain, how did you find it? I didn't even see it. Don't ask so many questions. Sail the boat. With a clatter, the boat sailed rapidly and approached its designated position. It wasn't long before Avril saw an exhausted but persevering man clinging to a wooden plank. Avril rushed to wake him up and threw the life preserver down. The man finally woke up and climbed up with all his might. Thank you, thank you, quick, help my daughter. Not caring that he was shivering from the cold, the man said anxiously, they're nearby. Avril hurriedly continued to steer the boat. Within minutes, the second person was rescued. Dad, Dad. Armin. The man hugged the girl tightly. Where's your sister? She was around here earlier. Then we got separated. Quick, sister, please help us. The girl begged as she clutched Avril's hand tightly, crying. Avril nodded. We'll do our best. Just sit down. The boat continued to travel. And finally, after half an hour, Rain spotted the last person. Arson. As soon as the man saw the girl, he hurriedly threw down the life else. But Arson was so exhausted that she could no longer get into the boat by herself. When Avril saw this, she looked at the other two. After gritting her teeth, she jumped into the sea herself. With a lot of effort, Avril and the middle-aged man pushed and pulled the dying Arson onto the boat. The family had reached the boat by now, but Avril was in the water. Saving people in the sea is very physically demanding, and many strong people may even drown themselves attempting to do so. 
Perhaps no one would have known if they had taken the boat away at this time. In this day and age, where everyone lives for themselves, that possibility cannot be ruled out. The man anxiously checked on the condition of this arson, and as each minute passed, Avril's worry grew heavier. After a few minutes, arson's condition improved, and the man was relieved. Turning around and finding Avril still in the water, he hastily grabbed a life preserver and threw it to Avril. Ma'am, I'm sorry I... I got so excited, I forgot you were still in the water. I'll pull you up, the man said with an apologetic voice. Rain had been watching the scene and would not have hesitated to throw all of them overboard if they had just now dared to take the boat away. Perhaps the Azure era was cruel and selfish, but there would always be righteous people who could make a different choice. Not bad, these guys, not saved in vain. When Avril was rescued, Rain was already silently calculating his big upgrade plan. Only 30 timbers short. 16. Seeking refuge. Thanks for finding us in time. If it had been any later, I'm afraid arson might not have survived. The four people sat in the cramped cabin and took advantage of the temporary rest to chat. Did you guys run into pirates or the wild winds and waves? Avril asked. Neither. The man shook his head. This area is still under naval surveillance, and it's rare to see pirates. As for the winds and waves, I'm an old fisherman, you know. I still have a knack for reading the sky. Then you are. We encountered an underwater monster. Rain's ears pricked up, though he had no ears to speak of. How did you encounter a monster here? Avril said in amazement. Yes, it's because this is a safe area where I came here to catch fish. But who would have known that our boat would have been attacked just as we got here? The boat was one we had rented from the trading market. I don't know how much money we'll have to pay now. It's good that you are all alright. By the way, what class of monster did you encounter? We didn't see it, but our ship was destroyed when it hit us. I reckon it was at least F rank. F rank. Jeez. Rain was now itching like crazy. What level was F class anyway? Why wasn't it made clear? By the way, you should be able to get some reward for reporting the discovery of an F rank sea monster to the Navy, which will somewhat reduce your losses. That's the only way. Finding sea monsters and getting paid for it? Rain exclaimed. How many other ways of making money in this damn world were there that he didn't know about? Then again, the fishing boat this family was using probably wasn't any worse than his. That sea monster had crashed and broken apart in one go, so I'm afraid he wouldn't be in for much better if he came across it. This money is probably not good. It's better to be steady, and develop a wave obscenely so he can carry the whole game back. Ladies, thanks for saving us this time, Armin, Arson. Hurry up and cut out to your benefactor. After the man finished speaking, he greeted his two daughters and was about to perform a big salute. Avril heard they stopped them. No, 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 we're just here on a search and rescue mission. Even so, if you hadn't been so efficient, we wouldn't have lasted much longer. We've been drifting here for two days and two nights. Even if we weren't eaten by fish, we would have frozen to death or lost our strength. We still want to thank you. Avril was a little embarrassed that she could only take a small part of the credit for this. The captain was the first to take credit, but it was better not to mention the captain in front of strangers. After an hour or so of rest, the man volunteered to drive the boat and leave Avril to rest herself. It was the next day when they returned to the trading market. All three of them are alive? Goldwell looked in amazement at the four people. Can your rickety little ship really be so efficient? Avril looked at Goldwell unconvincingly. You're not blind. Can't you see for yourself? There had been boats looking for them before but they had only found the wreckage of the boat, not a single person. This little boat had saved everyone. How lucky! Goldwell shook his head. Come up with me to get your pearls. And you three, come with me too. Not long after, Avril came back cheerfully. With a small cloth bag in her hand, she jumped off the board and said in a lowered voice, Boss, we got them. Three white pearls. Ho 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 ho. As soon as Rain made the sound, people looked around in surprise and Avril could only imitate his laugh in a thick throat. Ho 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 ho, cough cough, ho ho ho. There were no suitable quests today, so Rain stopped at the market corner to see if there were any suitable quests for tomorrow. Anyway, he would earn three or four more pearls, and then he would upgrade. He was in no hurry. In the evening, everyone in the market returned to their ships, and the lights on the various boats faded out except for the big navy guy in the distance, whose lights covered the market. Captain, no mission today. It's all right, no hurry. He was a ship anyway, and no one was behind him with a whip. We can take a simple transport mission, Rain said, and I'll grab it as soon as I can. The two were whispering when a line of people hurried over to this side. Hush, Captain, 
Someone's coming. Avril was alert and warned. Of the four people who came, Rain knew three, the same family they had saved yesterday. Ma'am, thank you for saving my husband and my daughter. Can we come to your boat for a chat? A middle-aged woman looked at Avril excitedly. Eh, uh, that you guys come up. Rain was inexplicably boarded by four people. These are some seagull eggs. Please take it, madam. The woman said as she opened the basket on her arm. White looked at the basket of eggs with an excited look on his face and his tongue out, mouth watering. He hadn't eaten anything else except the fish. Well, you don't need to be so polite. We're just on a mission. We've already received the pearls. There's no need to give us anything extra, Avril said. After a few polite words, the women placed the basket on the boat. Madam that you better take these eggs, the woman said as she did so, but with a feeling of wanting to say something. What exactly do you want to say? Avril asked directly. The woman gritted her teeth and said, Ma'am, our previous savings plus the bounty we got from reporting on the sea monster have all gone to pay our compensation and the mission. Bounties. Now we don't have any savings left at home, and we can't even afford to pay the deposit for renting the boat. I can help with crafts at the market, but my husband and two children can't go to sea and can't take work from others on their behalf, so they will soon be thrown out of the trading market. Avril looked at the woman sympathetically. So what are you going to do? Ma'am, I, I want to beg you to take the three of them in. The woman said with red eyes, I can't let them go, but I can't help it. I'll take them back when I've made enough money. Do you think that's okay? Avril was in a bit of a bind. It wasn't up to her to decide. Ma'am, I know it's hard for you too, but you just need to provide them with food and water. They're very experienced at sea. If it wasn't for the sea monsters, they would never have capsized. My husband can help you steer the boat. My husband is a man at least. He's got the strength. Armin and Arson know how to fish, dive, and mend boats. They can do everything. Madam, I beg you, my two daughters are still young. I don't trust the other men here. And my husband has a leg problem. You are the only one who is safe. I assure you, you can rest assured that my husband is a man of integrity. The man finally spoke up too, Madam. You are our family savior. I swear to the gods of the sea that I will not harm a hair on your head. And if anyone harms you, I will protect you to the death. Just please take us in. If we are driven away and don't even have a boat, we will only die. Avril was quite sympathetic to them, except she surreptitiously knocked on the side panel of the boat. Rain had been hesitating over this issue. Should these three people be taken in? 17. A surge in combat power. Some kind of unknown change has been detected in the body of one person on board. Please click on it for details. Rain was still thinking when a system voice rang in his head, which came with a surprising message. He immediately checked the details. The first thing that popped into Rain's mind was a 3D image of a person spinning slowly. This person was none other than Arson. Type of mutation. Benign mutation caused by contact with unknown creatures. Mutation stage unknown. Level of mutation unknown. Contagiousness none. Mutation description. Depending on the path of mutation, Mutation can be divided into mixed mutation and disseminated mutation. The target human falls into the latter category disseminated mutation. The disseminated mutation is defined as contact with a mutated organism that leads to secondary mutation of the contactee through various pathways. The target human's mutation has been tested to have no ability to retransmit and is a purely maternal disseminated mutation that will not retransmit unless it encounters a disseminated matrix. Currently, the target human is thinking clearly. It has active and non-destructive cell division in the body. Its strength is increasing slowly, and its accelerated cell division in the lungs is inferred to be the evolution of fish gills. Rain was confused. He had heard Avril talk about mutants, but this was the first time he had encountered one, and it was a newly transmitted mutant that was in the process of disseminated mutation. Rain couldn't help but look at the girl named Arson, who was shorter than her sister, and had been the last one to be rescued. At the time, she was in the worst condition out of all of them and looked almost dead. Arson was clearly not in the best spirits either, her eyes constantly looking at the dried fish that Rain had stocked on board and occasionally swallowing. She was eager to eat. Rain immediately realized that the girl's cells were dividing and needed a lot of energy, which was why she was so hungry and unhinged. If this was a disseminated mutation that didn't affect her thinking, then it was something worth trying. And this family was quite nice. They hadn't hit the ship while at sea when they were in such a difficult situation. After some deliberation, Rain decided to take in the three of them. A rope tied to an oar slot quietly turned into a pattern conveying sure in the palm of Avril's hand. 
Okay, well I agree with that proposition, but you must abide by the rules of this boat, Avril said. Really? That's great, ma'am. You'll be our captain from now on. Of course, we're at your beck and call, the men said excitedly. Avril shrugged awkwardly, not me, this ship. The man froze for a moment, but immediately responded, yes, yes, listen to the ship. At sea, the ship is what we live on. Even the captain can't screw with the ship. By the way, captain, what do we call you from now on? I'll start. My name is Terry. This is my eldest daughter, 16 years old. She can be called Armin. And this is Arson, 15 years old. Avril was running out of ways to explain herself. The guys were taking her for the captain now, and all she could do was stick her tongue out at the bow. My name is Avril. You can just call me by my first name, so go and pack your things. We'll take some missions here now, and won't be leaving for a while. When Armin and Arson returned, they had nothing else on hand, just two sets of clothes. Those who lived off the trading market relied on it for food and shelter, so there wasn't much to take. With Arson's family moving on to the boat, Terry naturally lives outside the cabin, and Avril is happy to squeeze in with Armin and Arson. The little boat became a little crowded. Poor White, there is no room for him in the cabin now, and he has to live outside with Terry. Rain hadn't shown his face until now. It was better for him to keep quiet with all the people here. Once he had officially accepted Arai's family, Rain quickly opened his message template. Host Rain, vessel, small double plank boat. Crew size, 5, assignable positions, open for details. Ship speed, 3 knots, open for details. Combat power, 5, can be viewed in crew info. Load capacity, 347.8 slash 1000 kg, open for details. Evolution points, 86.3 slash 150. With the arrival of the three family members, Rain's load also increased by 200 kilograms in one go using up more than 30% of it before it was even loaded with cargo. But this little disadvantage was simply ignored by Rain in the face of the increased crew size and the increased combat power of the ship. Holy shit, I'm bursting at the seams with combat power now. Rain exclaimed in hatred, No, combat power 5, it's still like a minion. Whatever, it's much more fierce than before anyway. As the stats became more complex, many options appeared in submenus, and Rain wasted no time opening them. The five crew members now all had their information templates. Only Avril's was simple, just her name and combat power. In contrast, Arson's was more complex, with the addition of a mutation panel in addition to the basic information. The crew and their combat power are White 1, Avril 0.5, Terry 1.5, Armin 0.5 and Arson 0.5, real time. So, one Terry can beat three Avril. Rain couldn't help but feel like laughing. Avril was just too weak. After these people, there was an option called pending orders. Needless to say, it was for Rain to assign them to positions, but Rain was still a small ship, so he didn't need to make it so complicated. Besides, he wasn't familiar with Terry's family members yet, so he wouldn't assign them to positions so early. After two days of waiting in the sea market, Avril finally got his assignment. This time it was a transport mission, a large ship in front of him had contracted most of the cargo and no one was willing to take the rest except rain, iron ore to the Mississippi market, time, it doesn't matter, it's the last bit of cargo, anyway, it should be there in 7 days, 1 pearl, the price for a 2 ton shipment to the Mississippi trading market was 3 white pearls, now Goldwell was only offering 1 pearl, even if it was the last bit of tailings, but no one wanted to go, it was a trip anyway, so it was definitely more economical to haul a bit more, let's go, Avril said with her hand held high in excitement. It's you again. Terry, you're running with them now? Goldwell looked at Terry. Terry nodded. Thanks to Captain Avril for being willing to take us in. Otherwise, we really wouldn't have anywhere to go. Goldwell nodded and whispered in Avril's ear while she was on shore. Make the most of this transport, and I'll give you all the small orders on my side from now on. Eh? Why are you being so nice to us? I'm not being nice to you. My son asked me to look after Arson a bit more. The bastard was waiting for Arson to come back. Avril nodded in surprise and squeezed her eyes at Goldwell. Don't worry, I won't mistreat them, and of course, getting more missions for us would be even better. 18. Evolve. According to the charts, the mission was a long way, 177 nautical miles in total. But with plenty of time to get there in 7 days, Rain and the crew were perfectly in time. Of course, this is where the advantages of having a large crew come into play. Terry, Avril, Armin, and Arson could take turns operating the hand crank thrusters, and with four people working in shifts, 
no one would be too tired to sail 30 nautical miles in a day and arrive well within the time limit. Hey, why isn't anyone controlling the rudder, Captain? You just take control of the rudder, and we'll crank the thrusters, Terry said. At that very moment, a human male voice suddenly sounded from the empty bow. I'll take control of the rudder. Rain's sudden appearance startled the Terry family, and all three people looked at Avril in horror. Captain, who is speaking? Is this, is this a ghost ship? Ghosts my ass. Rain said nonchalantly, I am this ship, and I am also the captain and helmsman of this ship. His new crew's eyes almost glazed over as they looked at Avril for help, but Avril simply nodded at them. Avril, talk to them. How can they be my crew when they're scared of this little encounter? Avril was more than enough qualified to communicate with them. When she had just heard Rain's voice for the first time, she was scared half to death too. It was only her sadness that caused her to not act so exaggeratedly. After some talking, the three finally understood what was happening. Well, now you understand, don't worry, I'm just a boat. I'm not going to eat you. Why are you so nervous? Rain said lightly, you are also my crew now. I hope we can work together in this Azure era. Only when we are strong ourselves can we live better. I, I, Captain, Terry replied warily. Rain didn't want to enlighten them further and continued arson. Get hungry? I have some dried fish here. You can eat first and catch more if you don't have enough. There is no reason for my crew to go hungry. Captain, but, said Arson hesitantly, I may be a bit of a big eater. I know. You're currently mutating. Mutation. The crowd gasped in disbelief. Rain said blandly, the sea monster you encountered the other day may have been a mutated female that had come into contact with Arson, causing changes to Arson's body. You don't have to worry. Her mutation is benign and not contagious. Really? Arson, you, you've really mutated? Arson knew that her body was undergoing some wonderful changes, but she had been too afraid to tell anyone for fear of being driven away. Now that Rain had said this, she felt relieved. Captain, am I really benignly mutated? Eh, uh, your strength is growing, and the cells in your lungs are dividing so quickly that they could potentially develop into fish gills. I can't believe it's a diving mutation. Great Arson, we've got a mutation in the family too. Rain looked at the happy group. It seemed that people didn't care too much about humans' appearance now. They were more interested in evolving their ability to adapt to survive in this world. And yes, what was the point of looking good and not being able to live? It was more practical to have something useful, especially for these civilians. In the two days that followed, the Arson family gradually became less afraid of Rain. And the fact that Rain could tell that Arson was evolving somehow made them trust the peculiar captain even more. Avril told them some precautions such as not revealing the captain's identity when there were people, and according to Rain, when there were people around them. Everyone still called Avril the captain. The Arson family said yes repeatedly. The group had to stop along the way to catch fish because of Arson's heavy appetite, but it was still in time. Seven days later, Rain finally arrived at the Mississippi market and completed the transport mission. Avril got another white pearl, and their total wealth came to four white pearls. Rain had previously used seven timber units in a very extravagant way to build the simple cabin. At this point, with the increase in the crew, he had built a seawater purification unit, so Rain was now three white pearls short of buying enough timber. After a day's stay in Mississippi, they never received a mission, and thinking about what Goldwell had said earlier, Rain turned around and headed back to Morgan's trading post. Goldwell was not a bad person, though his eyes were a bit lustful. He couldn't stop looking at Avril while picking out the rest of the assignments for them. Understandably, it's rare to see a woman of some beauty at sea. So if you can't eat it, at least you can see it. A month later, they finally had seven white pearls when Avril was paid for her latest mission. Rain immediately sailed the boat, headed to the trading area, and purchased 70 timbers. No rush now. Go somewhere no one will be during the night. Rain lowered his voice. Avril immediately complied and waited until night when all the boats around them had extinguished their fires before they quietly left the trading market and headed off into the distance. It was the first time the family had seen such an amazing sight, the huge amount of wood being cut, sanded, polished, and pieced together with unimaginable speed. On the other hand, it was Avril and White who looked almost as excited and anticipatory as Rain. Wow, look at this keel. It's at least seven or eight meters long. It's so thick. The hull is so spacious at least three meters. My goodness, the craftsmanship is perfect, the mortise and tenon inlay is tight, not a single gap. Wow, what is that? A self-contained cabin? It's so spacious. These were not Rain's words but Avril's, and Rain grimaced. Avril had stolen all his lines, 
But Rain had come to trust Avril after all this time. She was a good-hearted, trustworthy, intelligent and capable girl. Hey, also beautiful, but I can't do. Rain let out a long sigh. Eh? Captain, what are you talking about? Nah, nothing. I said you're smart and capable. No, you just said I couldn't do it. How come I can't do it? Uh, you can do it. It's me that can't do it, all right. No, you are our captain. You can do it too. You can do anything. Rain's heart was in agony. He's a boat. How can he do it? Without Rain's bleeping, the system was getting lazy, and it took eight minutes to finish building the new ship. New ship construction completed, consciousness and items transferred, small double plank ship recovered. With a shoe, Rain and the others had already transferred to the new ship. Open the message template. I want to see my new overpowered ship. 19. Weapon system. Host Rain. Vessel. Small to the medium sized double plank boat. Cabin 1. Crew barn. Crew size 5. Assignable positions. Open for details. Ship speed. 6 knots maximum. Open for details. Combat power. 18. Can be viewed in the crew information and weapon system. Load capacity. 447.8 slash 3000 kg. Open for details. Evolution points. 5.3 slash 500 units of wood 0 slash 100 kg of iron. The new ship has a much more imposing shape than before, with a hull length of 8 meters and a width of just over 3 meters. The bow and stern have been strengthened again, with thicker planks and improved stability. The change in appearance is secondary, and the most important thing is function. The load capacity has tripled again to a staggering three tons. The cabin of the old ship was built by rain and was very simple, similar to a canopy. But the cabin of the new ship is like a small wooden house, about three meters long, slightly narrower than the width of the ship, but at least two and two-thirds meters. This is where you can really live and store your supplies. Also, the boat's speed is doubled straight away to six knots. Rain quickly opens the ship's speed submenu. Power equipment 1, oars asterisk 2, power equipment 2, Wooden hand crank thruster asterisk 4. Power system. Artificial power. Boat speed. Power equipment 1. No statistics on boat speed. Power equipment 2. Maximum boat speed is 6 knots. 1 knot equals 1 nautical mile per hour equals 1.852 kilometers per hour. Actual speed is based on the operator's operating effect. The hand crank thrusters have become 4. But the weight of the hull has also been at least doubled. So the speed of the boat has only doubled. But even so, Rain is very happy with the maximum speed he can achieve. After reviewing this information, Rain also noticed another huge change. The combat power, which had gone straight from 5 to 18. After opening the crew information, Rain first noticed that Arson's combat power had skyrocketed, from 0.5 to 3.5 now. The info panel just tells me to check the crew info and... Weapon system? Rain reacted at this point. He had a weapon system now. Only he didn't seem to see any weapons on board. Open the weapon system. There was only one item in the weapon system. Name of weapon. Wooden spikes on the bottom of the bow. Combat power 10. Number of weapons 1. Weapon use. Method 1. Can hold up the spikes for impact when closing in on the enemy. Method 2. You can shoot the spikes through the ejector. Spikes can be recovered after ejection or refilled by consuming one wood. Firing spikes with a range of 30 to 50 meters. Effective against wooden on reinforced ship bottoms only, and against G-rank undersea monster. Rain immediately adjusted his perspective, and immediately spotted the wooden spike that was temporarily hidden in the bottom of the ship, which popped out at once with a single movement of his mind. Putting it away was a little tricky though, requiring Avril to turn the hand lever they had put on to activate the gears and put away the wooden spike. Easy to put up, a bit hard to put down. Rain wondered, that means that in a real fight, I have to hold this thing up and ram it into the enemy? Rain had a strange picture in his head. It always felt odd. Forget it, whatever. I'm a man with a stick now anyway, and yes, it's 10 combat power. Rain was thrilled. It was the equivalent of firing 20 Avril at once. Another epic super evolution, no doubt. The four people on the ship were slithering back and forth through the wear without feeling crowded. And everyone was looking here and there in excitement. Wow, Captain, you turned out to be so good. I've never seen such superb craftsmanship and it's so fast. Simply shocking. With a big ship, we can take on all the transport tasks in the trading market. Rain laughed calmly. That's not all. This is just the beginning. Follow the captain well. We can become even stronger later. Yes, Captain. Avril, Terry Arson, Armin, 
and white all stood at attention, each with hopeful looks on their faces. From a small raft to a giant, small to medium-sized plank boat, Rain felt a lot of emotions. Although the boat is still rudimentary, with an outdated power system and a somewhat awkward weapon system of a stick, he has nevertheless completed three evolutions. From initially relying on scavenging for resources to going to deserted islands and hanging around the trading market as a drudge, it has progressed by leaps and bounds. The new ships have also made Rain look forward more and more to the following ships. Right now, I'm still on a mission to collect timber. The next level will be 500 fucking timber. That's too much. Rain pondered in his mind, and for the first time ever, the next evolution will require iron. Right, there are other resources, clay and stuff. The bottom of the ship still needs to be reinforced. The previous clay is no longer usable. The cabin I made seems to be working, so I can give Terry and White barely enough room to live. Hey, the ship has gotten bigger, and the resources needed have also increased. Looks like it will be long before we can evolve by hanging out in the trading market. It was getting late, the sea was smooth, and Rain planned to go back in a few days. Otherwise, it would be hard for others to see that Avril's ship had become like this all of a sudden. Just say she changed boats a few days later. Arson has been eating a lot lately, four or five times as much as the others at one meal, and with the idea of developing the war effort somewhat. Everyone is keeping a tight rein on her first. During the two days of rest, Avril and the others caught some more fish in these waters to keep in reserve. On this day, as everyone was busy catching fish, Arson squirmed up to the bow and said, Captain, I, I want to go for a swim, is that okay? Go ahead. You're fine now anyway, don't go far, be safe. Yes, Captain. Taking off her coat, Arson jumped into the water with a plop and disappeared with a dive. However, after ten minutes or so, Arson was nowhere to be seen. Now everyone panicked and all leaned on the side panels of the boat, calling out Arson. Arson, she's fine. She's down there playing. Rain said faintly, she seems to be able to change her air underwater. I think her gills are growing. Growing gills. Arson didn't even tell me that. Terry shook his head woodenly. Rain said it was fine. Naturally, Rain could see into the sea, and everyone still knew it. About ten minutes later, a figure suddenly emerged from the water, and Arson came up swimming excitedly to the side of the boat and raising her right hand. Look what I found. The crowd rushed around. In her hand, Arson was holding a white pearl, slightly larger than those in circulation in the market. A white pearl? The crowd was amazed. Avril hurriedly said, Arson, the bottom of the sea is still too dangerous for you to pick up again, and there's too much pressure at the bottom of the sea. Your body won't be able to take it. Arson laughed, Sister Avril. I just happened to pick this one up by chance, so I'm lucky. It's too deep for me to go down there now. Oh, that's good. Avril breathed a sigh of relief. White pearls came from the bodies of mussels and clams in the ocean. Only they weren't all that easy to find, and the sea floor was very dangerous. Which was why it worked as currency. It hadn't expected Arson to be so lucky as to find one here. Rain was on the sidelines, his eyes wide. Okay, though only one pearl. It's always a nice thing for free. Twenty, the biggest threat. After two or three days at sea. Rain thought it was about time and led the crowd back to the Morgan Sea trading market. As soon as he returned, he quickly attracted the attention of many people. Eh? It's that woman. Why did she change ships? What? They're taking all the leftover missions, right? How can they make enough money so quickly? I think it's not even enough to cover the crafting costs. Even changing ships wouldn't be that quick. With so many people watching, Avril and the others tried to look as relaxed as possible. The ship traveled to the quest launch. It would be nice to get a quest and get out of here for a while. Hey Terry, you guys changing boats so soon? Terry tried to be calm. Oh yeah, the previous boat was too small. Captain Avril had been working on this new one before. And she went to pick it up the other day when it was ready. What do you think of our current boat? Is there a suitable mission for it? Golwell didn't doubt it. He nodded. It's okay. It's looking good. Your old ship really couldn't do anything. It's not much of a mission for a couple of days. The shipping lane is windy and unsafe for transport. It'll be a couple of days. Terry was finally relieved. Oh good. We'll come back in a couple of days then. Since there was no mission, Avril steered the boat to the far side where there weren't many ships, tied it to a stake, and a few people rested on board. Yo, nice new boat. A man's lazy voice suddenly rang out. Avril and the others looked up to see four or five burly sailors standing in the boarded up aisles of the marketplace. The men were bearded and smirking as they looked at Avril, Armin, and Arson. 
A few of the latter men's eyes lingered on the three women's breasts and stuck out their tongues to lick their lips. Avril had been around the human class C area for a while, and from her experience, she could tell that these guys were not good at first glance. But she didn't dare offend them, so she could only say in a cold tone, Thanks. Good luck, cripple. Someone's unexpectedly willing to take you in. A fat, scruffy man said at the top of his voice, All old friends, won't you invite us aboard? Terry knew them, and his expression was unnatural. Still, after some hesitation, he plucked up the courage to stand in front of Avril and smiled at the man at the head of the group. Brother Biao, if this were my boat, I would invite you, but now I'm just a crew member, so I think it's better another time. Cripple, I really don't think you're sincere at all. Can't you talk to your captain? Or you can go on our boat, Cripple, look at your boat, one man and three women, and look at our boat, such a big boat, two dozen people all fucking men, Cripple, your daughter has grown up too. Look at those tits, that ass, why keep hiding it? Do you want some grandchildren to cuddle with? And your captain, tut tut really nice. Hey chick, here's a chance for you, go and accompany our brother Biao. I'll give you two white pearls after you're well served. The more these men spoke, the more explicit they became, and Avril glared at these men, you can serve each other. When Biao heard this, he sank his face, girl, are you want someone to lose face? With that, he tried to get on board. Terry quickly grabbed the oar from the side, don't blame me for being rude if you catch up. Yo, the cripple's got a hard on. Biao laughed with a cross face and said to his brothers behind him, Tut tut tut, I'm so scared ha ha ha. Yeah, I'm scared too. Chick, if you won't stay with the captain, then stay with me. The brothers promised to spoil you properly. As soon as Avril untied a side of the threading rope, the boat moved towards the water, and now it was not so easy for these guys to get on board. Run? Guys, sail the boat to jam them. Several men quickly ran back and jumped into a wooden boat about 10 meters long. It was a Hufflepuff, about 12 meters long, with seven pairs of oars on the port, and starboard sides and several hand-cranked propellers on the stern. The spacious hull had a huge catapult with a 7 or 8 meter long boom, which was not loaded at the moment, but around it lay a pile of rocks, each weighing a dozen pounds. Avril, come on, move, Terry said hurriedly, Armin Arson, get out. Avril frowned, Terry. They wouldn't dare touch us here, would they? They know people in the Navy. They used to be slightly more scrupulous when I was a marketplace man, but it's different now. We're all here for a mission. Fights over missions are a regular occurrence here, and the Navy doesn't even bother with fights like this that aren't about grabbing goods. And they've got people, so they'll reverse black and white when the time comes, Terry said anxiously. Avril had been in the human class C area before, so she quickly understood that. Bluntly, there was someone behind that group to back them up. Avril, they must not just value you girls anymore. They must have seen us change ships and guess you were rich. Don't think about it. Let's get out of here. Maybe they won't dare fire. Avril got it too, and together with Armin, Arson hurriedly cranked the thrusters. The scene certainly didn't escape Rain's eyes, but as a boat, he didn't seem to have too much better to do now than to do as Terry said and avoid being forced to stop by the other side for now. Rain and his crews quickly made their way out of the harbor while Biao's group refused to give up and gave chase. On their boat, three men cranked the thrusters, fourteen slid the oars quickly, going extremely fast, and were catching up with rain. On the distant navy ship, navy men were looking this way. A few of them gathered together, and wondered what they were talking about, but they didn't make a move. Instead, more and more navy men were lying on the pole of the ship, watching the scene with great interest. A ball of anger rose in rain's heart. It seemed that the so-called navy was not the kind of navy he remembered for the defending country, but just a force in this world. Behind him, Biao stood at the bow of the ship, iron sword in hand, pointing his sword at Rain. Brothers, want a woman? Whoever put in the effort will have a share for the night. Rain's heart was complicated at this moment. All the difficulties he had encountered before had come from nature. But now he was in real trouble, and the biggest trouble of all, very ironically, was from the humans themselves. Hurry up, everyone, Terry shouted anxiously, don't let them catch up with us. Captain, change course and turn, Terry was experienced. The small boat was no match for the speed and only depended on agility. On the shore, there were no missions today, and this sea chase and people attracted many people with nothing to do and watched the scene leisurely. Did Biao strike again? Oh, it's that boat. Honestly, that woman I've been eyeing for a long time. What a bargain for Biao, tut tut. Just thinking about it makes me want to fuck. Fire, Biao. Have a duel. Rain was fleeing frantically.
but his anger was at full rage as the maniacal laughter behind him grew fuller and fuller. I've been reborn for a lifetime, and this is how you humiliate me. Can I even protect my own crew? If that's the case, then what's the point of being reborn? 21. Duel at sea. A duel? Biao still had the leisure to interact with the people on shore. Do they dare? A little boat, not even a weapon system. A piece of crap in my eyes. Haha. <laughs> Quite nimble, but still rubbish. Let's see if you are still nimble in bed when I catch you. In this era, no one has time to pity the weak. The fierce competition has made people more belligerent and numb. Rain made a sharp turn to avoid the boat behind him again and took the opportunity to catch his breath. Rain asked Terry, Terry, what's a duel? Captain, normally, the Navy does not allow firefights, but if both sides agree to a duel, then the Navy will not intervene. Terry shook his thrusters hard, Captain, don't get carried away. They have stone throwers on board, and their ship is bigger than ours. Rain grunted, but we can't keep running like this. They're too fast, and we're bound to get caught in the end. Terry, how are we going to duel them? Terry was also torn now. The captain was right. They wouldn't last long. There was a glimmer of hope if they dueled. But if they lost, the result would be worse than being caught. They would be left with nothing. Terry, if you still want to protect your daughter, tell me now. Terry took a long breath. Putting up a red flag on the ship means laying down a challenge. And if the other captain also puts up a red flag, it means to accept the challenge. The winning side gets to plunder one half of the other side's assets. If the other side raises the white flag, they surrender. And the surrender equals half a loss. The winner gets to plunder a quarter of their assets. Good. Guys, we can't run for long. I'm ready to duel them now. Anyone has problems? Terry kept his head down and never spoke. Avril, Armin, and Arson also tensed up. Eventually, Avril said, it would be an insult to be caught up. And I'd rather die. There's a glimmer of hope in the duel. I have no doubts. Neither do I. Captain. We are your crew and are willing to follow your orders. Good, Avril, give the battle cry. Rain bellowed. Today unless my ship was destroyed, I will not let you be taken from me. Avril looked around. Luckily Arson had a red dress. Otherwise, there wouldn't even be a red flag on the boat. She slipped the red dress over her oars, stood at the bow, and raised the red flag. At the sight of this, there was an instant boom around. Holy shit, is there any mistake? They're raising the red flag. Is this a duel? Just that little raggedy boat of theirs will duel with Biao's Hufflepuff boat. They don't even have a weapons system. Whatever, we will have a good show. Biao's ship was not the biggest, only medium in this market. But Biao's background was solid. He knows many naval forces, so it was not too much to say that he is a small king here. And this guy had a stone thrower on his ship, which was already considered rare in a place that did even not hold a candle to the human class sea area. Most of the ships were here for transport but they seemed to be here to show off. Seeing the woman raise the red flag, Biao was also amazed. Yo, did I read that right? Dueling with us? Are you out of your mind? At this point, Rain's boat slowed down. They had already initiated the duel, so there was no need to keep running. Avril stood at the bow and shouted at Biao at the top of her lungs. Do you dare to take the duel? You stupid pig. If you wouldn't, fuck off here. As they glided up to Rain, Biao looked at Avril's figure with interest and smiled evilly. Are you kidding me? I can't wait to have some fun with you. A man in a white pencil uniform stepped out of his cabin on the Navy ship. As he was so tall that reached two meters, he needed to bow slightly as he emerged from the cabin, only to reveal his majestic figure when he stood up straight. He wore a blue jacket, hands in pockets, a cigar in his mouth, and his eyes surveying the crew on the board. There seemed to be an unusually large number of people on the board today, didn't there? There was a lot of talk going on over there. Someone saw the man come out and rushed over. Lieutenant Shob, come and see. There's a ship dueling over there. Eh? Shob frowned, held up his jacket on his shoulders, and walked over. At this moment, not far from the sea, two ships were standing opposite each other at 500 meters. In the middle of the two ships, some naval minion was standing on a boat, holding a red flag ready to fall. Shob looked at the two boats and said indifferently, a 12-meter Hufflepuff boat equipped with a stone thrower and an 8-meter plank boat, and not even have a weapon system. What are they going to duel with? Is the captain brain damaged? The navy at his side agreed in a hurry. The captain of that boat is a woman, a beautiful woman, you know. Shob snorted coldly. It was better not to look at such a boring thing. However, at that moment, his eyes fell on a woman on the plank boat. The sea breeze blew up her long hair, revealing a piece behind her ear. 
a moment that an ordinary person would not have noticed, but Shob was not an ordinary person. He noticed that behind the woman's back, gills were growing. A mutant? How could he meet a mutant human here? The average mutant has a very good life or at least a big man in human class waters. Impossible to be bullied by other humans on a small boat. The Navy is always looking for people with special abilities, such as mutants. They want mutants to join the Navy. Of course, not only the Navy but also all the major powers are trying their best to recruit mutants. It can be said that the reason why humans have survived is due to the ships and these strong mutants. The captains of the most powerful fleets are all mutants. Shob looked at those on shore. From their reaction, it seemed that they did not know the news yet. He frowned and said nothing but dismissed the idea of leaving. In charge of the referee, the Navy waved his arm down at that moment. The duel between the two sides began. As soon as the flag dropped, the muscles in the hands of the strong man in the Hufflepuff boat rippled up. Seven pairs of oars swung in unison. Four propellers worked quickly and simultaneously, and their boat's speed was increased in a flash. Avril stood at the bow, ready to follow Rain's command. Avoid them first. Rain intoned firmly, speed up. Let's play with them. 22. Battle at sea. Full acceleration. I'll control the direction. Rain stared dead ahead at the oncoming Hufflepuff and concentrated hard. Avril couldn't get out of the way now. She had to pretend to control the direction of the boat. The two boats were traveling opposite each other aggressively, and neither intended to turn. This was a very interesting scene. Even if Biao's boat was bigger, if the two ships collide, two wrecks will likely be created. Rain was no worse than Hufflepuff boat from the momentum. As a new evolved boat, he was chased like a monkey for so long. As the captain of the ship, that was something he couldn't bear. Come on, don't dodge if you dare. If there is no other way, I'll go back to being a raft. He still had a pearl that bought ten logs to make a raft was no problem. The two boats were getting closer and closer, and Rain could already see Biao's expression. The guy's face was getting stiffer and stiffer, and the helmsman behind him was looking at the captain as if he was just waiting for him to give the order. On the other hand, Avril had a determined look on her face. After that crisis in the reef area, Avril trusted Rain more than anyone else. She was sure that that captain would win. Just when the two boats were 30 or 40 meters apart, someone finally got tense. Idiots, they want to die with us. A fool would fall for that, Pyrie. Turn the rudder right. The helmsman called Pyrie was relieved. He would have been the best unlucky one if he crashed into them. And as soon as he received the order, he quickly turned the helm with his hands at the ready. The Hufflepuff tilted a little and brushed past Rain. Shob frowned and took a puff of his cigar, and exhaled a puff of smoke. The skipper, a bit interesting. In terms of momentum, the Hufflepuff was already losing ground. Oh. Biao, you guys are even not as good as a pussy. Biao, you wimp, it's so humiliating, ha ha. After the two boats brushed past each other, they turned their bows quickly. Biao had been in this trading market for so long. His biggest capital was not that he had people in the navy but his fierceness. It was because of his fierceness that he had the chance to befriend those few navy soldiers. And it was also his fierceness that made everyone here afraid of him. But he lost to a woman just now, which made him look bad. Biao gritted his teeth and narrowed his eyes, staring dead at Avril. Bitch, you want to die, right? I'll make it happen for you. Set up the rock thrower. Four crew members ran to the projectile in a moment and operated it. At first glance, the projectile had only one arm and one chamber. But as they readied it, Rain realized that the fucking projectile was folding. At first, the arm bar was closed like a fan. And now the thrower was like an open fan, with three arm bars open and two chambers spread out in different places on the arm bar. Rain did a calculation in his head. Two times three equals six. They could fire six shells at once. Holy shit. Biao's thrower has been modified. This is awesome firing six cannons at once. It can almost cover a small area. That woman's ship is hard to escape. So quick to get the stone thrower out. Looks like this is over. Avril stared at the stone thrower on Huff's ship and asked in a whisper, Captain, what now? There's no way out. We only have one wooden spiker. We have to hit it with one blow. You keep going at full speed. I'll control the course. Avril breathed heavily, Captain. We can win, can't we? You're not going to leave us behind, are you? Nonsense. What else? Avril was scolded, but she wasn't angry at all instead, yes, you're the best captain, we all trust you, this life is yours. Rain took a deep breath and gave his full attention to the opposite thrower. Captain, which type of ammunition? A man asked. Biao thought for a moment, the corners of his mouth lifted with a cruel smile, light the fire, use firebombs, quick, 
finish them off. I can't wait to see them fall into the sea. Aye, Captain. Loading complete. Aim at. Fire. Boom, boom, boom. Six boulders covered in flames shot at rain like a great net. Shob had been watching the scene. Fire bombs? That little wooden boat will be ruined just with a little graze. Full speed ahead. Avril shouted, following Rain's instructions. The three members of the Arson family gave their all and cranked their cranks as hard as possible. Arson even grabbed the vacant crank to crank both thrusters. Captain, it's all yours next, Arson shouted excitedly. To the outsider, it sounded like she was speaking to Avril, but Rain knew the girl was asking him. Fine, leave it to me. As the fire came in, Rain controlled the direction with precision. The ship avoided the fire time and time again with millimeter precision, weaving through the gunfire. This, Shobe's brow grew furrowed, even if the cigar in his hand burning for so long he forgot to take a puff. Is that woman that good? Seeing that this side had avoided the firebombs, Biao was no fool. Here comes the second wave. Shuttling, sharp turns. Rain felt almost capsized. Avril and the others were lucky they all had grips to catch. Otherwise, they would have been thrown out 100% in this intensity of the lurch. Only White was hiding in the hatch, not wondering what kind of fall he had taken. 100M, 90M. Rain switched on the weapon system in his head. The bottom of the enemy ship is wooden and unreinforced. They're just bullies and not really transporting. So what's the point of spending that kind of money on reinforcement? 46 meters is the best shooting range for the wooden spike. Wooden spikes have a penetration range of 30 to 50 meters. But they can be fired at 40 meters for maximum power. Boom, 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 boom. The shells didn't land on the ship. But with just such a scrape... Rain's right side deck was already on fire. Ha 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 ha, you're finished. Go to hell. Biao laughed out loudly. Fire. Another round of firebombs. I'll beat you all into a hornet's nest. Rain stared dead on at the wave of firebombs. As long as he avoided this wave, he would be in the optimal range. His crew had put their lives in his hands. He only had one chance. Accelerate. Rain ordered. 23. The winner is, Rain sprinted towards the Hufflepuff boat under fire. His starboard side was blazing, but he couldn't care now. 55 meters, 50 meters to go. Stick, get an erection, eh? Why no response? Rain's entire ship was stunned. His wooden spikes weren't responding. At such a critical time, he couldn't even get up. Everyone was waiting for Rain to fire the fatal blow anxiously, yet the wooden spike was slow to react. Holy shit. The stone just now is stuck in the bow. Rain found out what the problem was in a flash. But even if he found the problem, no one could help him. This is a duel. At this moment, Arson rushed to the side of the boat, stretched out her arms, and jumped into the water. Arson, on the naval battleship, Shobe stared at the woman with wide eyes, fearing to miss any detail. She had finally struck. Just see how good she is. Asen entered the water and swam under the bow of the boat at once. After searching, she found the rock stuck exactly where the ejector device was. She tried to move it, but she could not remove the rock after several attempts. From under the water, she could see the Hufflepuff boat was getting closer and closer, and time was running out. Arson held the rock with both hands and had her foot against the bow plank. She exerted all her strength with a hideous face. Just then, her face changed. This face is not like a human face definitely. The skin of the face contracts quickly and many root-like patterns extend rapidly under the skin. Her teeth became sharp, fins grew next to her arms, and arm muscles bulged. In this scene, others cannot see what happened, but Shobe can see clearly. He took down the cigar and muttered, the mutation degree is so high, and also can switch between human and mutant. This woman. I must recruit her. With a click, Arson finally took out the stone. At the same time, Rain had already sensed it. The wooden spikes on the bottom of the boat propped up in a flash while Arson quickly swam away. The target distance is 40 meters. Fire the missile. The ship did not respond. Rain corrected. Fire the wooden spike. At this time, the sea was stirred up by the shells. Normal people would not see what happened at the bottom of the sea. Biao stood at the ship's bow, looking at Avril contemptuously. Chick, want to hit me again? I like that. I'll see if you're strong in the boat or bed. How about we have lovebirds play in the water? I like that idea. Brothers, step up. One more wave. All these women. The words had not yet fallen. Suddenly, Biao's body shorted a little, followed by a violent and huge shaking of the ship. Everyone still did not understand what was going on. The 12-meter Huff Puff boat, in the eyes of the people, 
exploded. To be precise, it collapsed from the bottom. A sharp and straight wooden spike slammed out from under the deck in the center of the ship. Those still struggling to swing the oars simply did not understand what happened, and several people were lifted into the air after the bottom of the ship exploded. The stones that had just ignited the flame were doused before they could be fired all landed on their ships. The people watching the battle on the spot, whether it was those boatmen who had nothing to do, or the navy on the naval battleship, at this moment, have left the armrests, stood up straight, and looked at this scene in horror. What the fuck is going on here? Who can tell me? How did the Hufflepuff boat blow up? What the hell did that plank boat do? Shob saw more or less. At this point, his eyes almost narrowed into a slit. He took a deep puff of his cigar and exhaled. Show weakness, wait for an opportunity, seize the opportunity and kill with a single blow. How can this woman be so calm? The previous helm was also wonderful. She used almost all the advantages of the ship wisely to avoid all attacks as much as possible. And in the nick of time, launch a fatal strike to break the enemy in one fell swoop. This operation, this combat education, this mentality. I can't believe it. That captain, I'll take it too. The Hufflepuff ship collapsed, and the only remaining remnants were engulfed in flames quickly. Biao looked back. His ship had become a sea of fire. Now he did not care about anything and jumped headfirst into the sea. Twenty or so people, desperately swimming in the direction of the market. At this moment, a boat with black smoke quickly came to a beautiful drift and blocked in front of these people. You, what are you doing? Biao looked at the boat that crossed in front of them in horror. Avril put her foot on the sideboard of the boat and looked at Biao with a bad smile. Hey, it seems that someone just tried to stop us. Who was it? Biao's face was green with fear, and he prayed hurriedly and pitifully, Beauty, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, we will never dare to do it again. We'll talk about the future later, but let's settle the previous matter now. It does not work on Avril. She must follow the captain's instructions to entertain these guys. Terry Armin, give them a good beating. The three people copied the wooden pulp and took good care of the Bial and others. A few even tried to dive to escape but were forced back to the surface by arson in the sea. You like to play lovebirds, right? Come on, I'll play with you. Avril had a plank of wood slapped up on the top of Biao's head and smashed a big blood bump. Help, help, help. Ah. A full half hour later, the navy in charge of the referee just couldn't watch anymore. The two dozen big men were beaten to cry in the water. Strangely, no one could run away from the hands of that arson. Probably, they were all scared out of their wits. Ahem, that well, well, they almost are killed. It's better to announce the result first. After that, they should pay for it. Avril and the others then stopped. Looking at the sniveling group in the sea, they felt their anger had been vented. It was hard to salvage Biao and the others. Finally, the navy soldiers announced the result. Lady, may I ask what your name is? Avril. Good, then this duel, Captain Avril get the win. Avril was a little embarrassed. But in the current situation, she could only carry this credit first. According to the rules. Biao, you must pay half of your assets to Captain Avril. Boss home. Biao covered his head with one hand and held his left rib with the other. Now he was in pain all over. Our ship has sunk. We don't have any pearls left on us. The people watching around coaxed at once. Biao, who are you fooling? You have been in the trading market for so long. How can you not have savings? It's my business. Do you want to meddle? Biao's face turned fierce and scared the man retracted his head in a hurry. Avril can win against Biao, but he can't so it's better not to get involved in such matters. Now the Navy Hong was a bit difficult. Biao said that he has no money, but everyone knows that it is a lie, and Biao seemed to be covered by someone. Should he expose him? In a short time, from the direction of the Navy came five or six people in uniform. Biao came to life after seeing these people. He looked hard at Avril, lowered his voice, and said, Bitch, want to get my money? I'm telling you, we're not done here. 24. Lieutenant Shob. Several navy men came over, and the leader was a man who was not tall, less than 1.7 meters, but very stout. He was draped in a blue jacket, holding a cigarette in his hand, and walked over at random. Biao you lost. You talked big with me that your ship can run the Morgan trading market amok. Biao accompanied by a smile in a hurry and walked up to Harry with a look of flattery, and signed Harry, this, this is just gutter capsize. Harry grunted as he walked over and looked Avril up and down. His eyes lingered on her chest for a moment, then he exhaled a ring of smoke, nice job. But Biao's boat has been wrecked by you, so now he has no money. Avril stared at Harry defiantly, you say there's no money, we're gonna search. 
Harry's gaze became fierce instantly. The cigarette was thrown into the sea. So, you want to question what I said? Are you questioning the prestige of our navy? At this time, none of those watching around dared to speak. They dared to laugh at Biao, but none of them dared to laugh at this Harry. Avril was so angry that her chest was heaving. They got the win after all trouble. But it turned out to be like this. What was even more exasperating was that Biao was hiding behind Harry and staring at her with an evil smile and sticking out his tongue to make lewd hints. Even if you are a navy, you can't violate the rules of the duel, Avril said in an angry voice. Seeing this, Terry pulled Avril in a hurry and whispered in her ear, Avril, this person can't be messed with. Let's just forget about it. After this, we can go to another trading market. No one knows why Harry's ears are so sensitive. He heard some of it unexpectedly. He walked to Avril and Terry with three steps, looked at the two, and kicked Terry away. You want to go to another trading market, so you have something against me? Dad. Arson and Armin hurried to hold Terry. Arson looked at Harry angrily. Which trading market we go to is our freedom. Freedom? Ha! Huh. Harry sneered, after pissing off our navy. Do you think you still have freedom? You can pick from the whole sea. If you can find a place to stop your ship, count I lose. Avril and others stared dead at Harry but did not dare to squeal. Remember, in the Azure era, only the strong, only the strong have the right to speak. Harry looked at Avril and several people fiercely. From afar, Rain watched the scene quietly. This time, he did not feel angry. Yes, in the Azure era, no, not only the Azure era, at any time, anywhere, only the strong have the right to speak. The weak can only be needed at will. Look at those boatmen. They were fucking with Biao and seemed happy before. But now, who dares to say no in front of Harry? Even the so-called ruthless people like Biao try to curry favor with the master as good as a dog in front of Harry. This time, Harry gave Rain a good lesson. Get stronger. Become stronger. I will become stronger. His mood just cleared up some when Harry saw these people shut up with no temper. He stepped forward, interested in staring at Avril. Avril, I think you look pretty good. If you are willing to accompany me, I... With a snap, Harry's navy cap was slapped a long way away, and the whole head was crooked to the side. The whole room at once became frozen. Avril was even wide-eyed, incredulous at this scene. Someone dares to teach Harry such a lesson. Of course, the most surprised was Harry. He got a face slapping from behind when he show off. At this point, if anger could be seen, his anger must already be used for unique skills. You fucking, Harry said while gritting his teeth and turning his head, the result. Shobo be bye. My name is Shob, not Shobo baby. A tall man dressed in a navy uniform, the same blue jacket outside. He had a cigar in his mouth, and after taking a puff, he put his hands in his pockets and kicked Harry into the sea. What the hell? How the fuck did I teach such a son of bitch? You guys and the one in the sea have been fired from the navy. To return your clothes and fuck off here now. Lieutenant Shob, we. Shob turned slightly and a small triangle of eyes showed a trace of fierce light. Several people froze and did not dare to say a word. You have three seconds to disappear from my sight. Three seconds? From this run to the warship, at least a few minutes. But these navies were not stupid. Poof, poof. They all jumped into the sea together and disappeared. Shobe was much more relaxed with these few scums out of his eyes. That you? The navy acting as a dual judge shivered. He was about to jump into the sea, but Shobe grabbed him. What, don't want to do? No, I, I, I said let them disappear, not you. Shob shook his head, take men to search the homes of those people. Bring half of all the property, not one pearl less. Yes, yes, Lieutenant Shob, I'll take the men immediately. How dare they break the rules of dueling? It's really getting unruly. Shob sighed. It's a huge crisis in the eyes of others, but under this man, it has been laid out in less than a few seconds. At this point, even a fool knows that this man was not an ordinary person. Shob walked up to Avril, sized her up, then looked at Arson and nodded slightly. Captain Avril, right? Hello, my name is Shob, a lieutenant in the Navy, responsible for the security of this area. Avril replied woodenly, uh, hello. Shob didn't mind Avril's reaction at all and continued, I watched your performance just now. Honestly, you exceeded my expectations, and I admire you very much. That's your boat, right? I wonder if I have the honor to sit on your boat? Anyway, this Lieutenant Shobe helped them, and it seemed he is not as horny as Biao and Harry. Avril thought about it, and said um, Lieutenant Shobe, I will return to the ship for a while and come back to answer you. Is it okay? Sure, Shobe said gentlemanly. Avril rushed back to the ship and reported the situation to Rain. 
He wants to get on me? Well, I can't beat this Navy now. I can't do anything even if he wants to get on me, Rain said helplessly. 25. Did I do all this? Avril invited Shobe and his men to go up to Rain together. Lieutenant Shobe, the cabin is a little small, sorry, Avril said apologetically. It's okay, the fact that you guys can use such a small boat and defeat your enemy rather makes me admire you guys even more, Shobe said while walking over to the starboard side of the ship and stroking the smoky gently board with his hand. Being touched so gently by a man, Rain got goosebumps. The injury is not serious, it seems to have avoided the frontal attack of the firebomb. Shob finally withdrew his hand. Where was this ship made? Very good craftsmanship. Avril's eyes darted around and she stammered. Well, it was made by an old craftsman who was quite at home in the craft. Said the same as not said. Shob shook his head with a smile and walked up to Avril. Don't be nervous. I'm just wondering. Well, I won't beat around the bush. I'm here for a purpose. Shob continued. And you guys don't need to hide anything from me. I know everything. Several people's eyes glazed over almost scared to hell. Ha ha ha, I said no need to be nervous. Look at you guys. Other people can't see this girl's mutation process, but I can see it clearly. Avril blinked dryly. Maybe now she should be glad that this lieutenant just knows that arson is a mutant. Mutants were rare here, but they weren't that scary in human class waters. As long as he wasn't aware of Rain's existence, that was all that mattered. Your mutation level is quite high. Shobe looked at arson admiringly. At the scene, Shobe was the only one talking now. These people actually did not react at all after throwing out such strong information. A little embarrassed, Shobe continued, Here's the thing this time I'm here. I hope this little girl, and you, Captain Avril, I hope you join the Navy. What? Join the Navy? Avril and others exclaimed. Avril was able to figure out the reason. The Navy values mutants. Since the lieutenant could see that Arson was a mutant, it was reasonable to invite Arson. But why did he invite her? So, Lieutenant Shobe, you invited me too? Shobe laughed, yes. I admire your ability to control the ship and your psychological and tactical qualities. And I'm not exaggerating to say that the role of a good captain and helmsman is no less important than the mutant crew. Your performance has conquered me. Avril gave an awkward smile, Lieutenant Shobe. No. Shobe realized the situation was not good. He stops Avril at once, don't rush to reply to me. You should think about it later, and then reply to me tomorrow. You can meet me on my ship. Don't worry. With me around, no one dares to covet you. Thank you very much for your hospitality. We'll see you tomorrow. Huh, you still have a dog here. It looks a little seasick. White wobbled out. The previous sea battle shook it almost to hell. Now finally slowed down. As soon as he came out, he saw a stranger on the boat so he showed a fierce look at short notice. Now Avril was too late to explain to show because of White's sudden appearance. She stopped White in a hurry and said awkwardly, well, then we will meet on your ship tomorrow. The boat seemed a little quiet, and both Arson's family and Avril felt preoccupied. Later in the evening, Arson asked Avril to go around the market. All this was watched by rain. The next morning, Arson's family and Avril went to the Navy warship together. All of a sudden, rain and white were the only ones left on the ship. Fine, they want to join the Navy, rain let out a long sigh. White leaned against the bow of the ship in a good manner. It's okay. They are all people with no one to depend on, and there is no future in following me, so it would be good for them to join the Navy. Avril wants to revenge, join the Navy must be able to quickly realize her wish, right? Arson will also be useful when the time comes, their family can still live together. Hey, all gone. White, you are my best, we are back to the world of two people. Rain's mood was far less open-minded than he showed. After so many things, whether it's Avril or Arson's family, Rain has taken them as his most important partners. For their sake, he risked his life to fight for a chance to live in the storm. For their sake, he defeated the far stronger Biao. However, in the end, all the effort was no match for the Navy lieutenant's words. Hey, White, do you think, is it that I was too mean to them? White lifted his head and then down. Rain looked at the azure sea of the sky in front of him with a hard heart. Avril and others were there for morning plus noon. He guessed both sides chatted a lot and stayed for lunch. The food in the Navy should be much better than mine. But it does not matter. White, from now on, the dried fish here is yours alone. Happy or not, excited or not. White took a look at the dried fish, shook his head with no interest, and continued to lean against the bow of the boat, lying there listlessly. Rain didn't know how long it took until a sound of laughter in the distance. Avril, Terry Arman, and Arson came back, laughing and talking. When they reached the front of the boat, 
the three women jumped down at once and then helped Terry down together. Haha, it turned out Biao has so much money. This time we can at least share 30 pearls. Yeah, and they said they have no money. Avril, there is so much money. Can we talk to the captain to go buy some meat and eat something good today? Avril showed an amazing look in her eyes. She ran to the bow. Captain, now we have 30 pearls. Can we go to buy some food? We're getting sick of eating dried fish. Rain got a boat of confusion. You guys, aren't you going to the Navy? Yeah, we went in the morning. Lieutenant Shobe took us to raid the house in person. No, you guys are not going to stay in the Navy? Avril frowned strangely. Stay in the Navy? Captain, you just don't make fun of me. They don't know who runs the ship, don't I know it? Well, what about arson? I see that lieutenant seems to think highly of her. She? She said she only follows you? Avril said while her expression became more and more strange. His captain, you haven't said a word in the past two days. You wouldn't be jealous, right? Jealous of what? How can I be jealous? I was just wondering how many pearls I could get this time. Oh, so that's how it is. Avril nodded exaggeratedly. But you actually don't care about pearl at all. This is not your style. You care about other things. Too smart and clever is not a good thing. The guy's eloquence made Rain freeze. Captain? Avril put away her smile. I know what you're thinking. Joining the Navy indeed is a great temptation for us. But there are many reasons besides the fact that we have all said that we will always follow you, Captain. What reasons? Rain asked curiously. He wanted to know what was keeping these guys from joining the Navy. Avril sat down and leaned comfortably on the bow, looking up at the azure sky. I remember the sky was as beautiful as today, but at that time, my heart was so desperate that I couldn't see a ray of sunshine, and at that time, you came to me, with our resources so tight, when Uncle Terry and the others were desperate. It was you too, you lent them a helping hand, you said that you never leave your crew behind, you also said that you would take us farther and farther away. Although you were fierce at times, I believe that even in the Navy there would not be a better captain than you. Rain got a little depressed. He actually got a little touched by this woman. Did he do all of this? Sounds a little unlikely. But at this time, he had to say something. Ahem, corrected, not the captain. It's the captain and helmsman. Rain said condescendingly, but you are right. One day I will take you to conquer this world. 26. Wanted. These crew members did not let Rain down, and his previous depressed mood was cleared away at once. By the way, captain, it turns out that there is a mission on the Navy side as well. Avril leaned over the side of the ship and said mysteriously, They don't call it the mission. Lieutenant Shobe said it was called the Wanted. Wanted? Wanted Luffy? Ah? Uh? Who is Luffy? Luffy is the protagonist in an anime that Rain used to watch, but more than 300 years have passed. Avril naturally doesn't know. Oh, I'm kidding. You go on, what exactly is the Wanted? Captain, I saw two Wanted posters. One is a Wanted G-Class pirate group Wild Wine Pirates. The bounty is 1,000 white pearls. One is a wanted G-Class sea monster Medusa. The bounty is 1,500 white pearls. Rain was shocked to hear this amount. It took them several days to make a round trip to earn a few pearls. But a wanted reward amount more than running the ship themselves for a few years. Avril, what level is the G-Class pirate group and the G-Class sea monster anyway? Rain couldn't help but pry. Well, how can I say it? The main ship of the G-Class pirate group at least is a G-Class battleship. Do you see that naval warship? It is a G-Class warship. Rain almost sprayed out a mouthful of blood. That battleship is at least 40 meters long and 20 meters high. And the ship is equipped with at least 30 guns and at least 100 people. This is only G-Class? G-Class seems to be the lowest level Rain has ever heard of. Terry said the sea monster they encountered might be F-Rank. The level is higher than G-Class and it turns out that G-Class is still his unattainable level. In addition to the main ship, the G-Class pirate group probably has four to eight warships escort. The level of the frigates was not much of a requirement, even a small ship like Biao's boat. Even a small ship like Biao's boat? Rain's heart took tens of thousands of tons of blows. Biao's ship seems to be stronger than his, but it's the most insignificant existence in the G-Class pirate group. Avril saw Rain silent. She guessed what Rain was thinking and said with a smile, Captain, don't put yourself down. Think about it. If the pirate group doesn't have some strength, what makes the general ships be afraid of them? There are even some pirate groups strong enough to go head to head with the navy. Eh? That seems to make some sense. After all, Rain only evolved a few times. There is no need to compare himself with the pirate group. Besides, as long as he is given enough time, 
It is not certain who is one that escaped when an encounter in the future. Rain was finally relieved. There are also G-rank sea monsters. Well, to put it bluntly, sea monsters are the mutant of undersea species. The Navy has a test apparatus that can be graded based on various parameters, and then inferring the strength. But we are not the Navy, and don't know how the specific grading works. But Captain you can understand it this way. A G-class sea monster can clash head-on with a G-class pirate group, or a naval squadron, and have a certain chance of winning. Holy shit. Rain couldn't help but let out a gasp. In that case, it's a miracle that Terry and the others survived. Yeah, no wonder no one else would have taken the time to find them. After all, the chances of them surviving are almost zero. Their fishing boat just shattered as soon as it touched that monster. And so that's why a piece of wood was not fished. After Avril's science, now Rain has made up his mind that he will never touch the pirate group or sea monsters. We'd better take some transport tasks. I think the most important is the safety of the crew, Rain said righteously. Now we should not care about those impractical. By the way, just now you said to buy some good food. Go ahead, but control within one pearl. Avril had known Rain would be like this, and she heard that the stingy Rain actually agreed to give out a pearl as a treat for everyone. She said excitedly and mischievously, Great Captain, I'm on my way. While Avril, Arson's family, and White were eating, Rain began to plan his future strategy. The next evolution would require 500 pieces of wood and 100 kilograms of iron, with wood costing 10 units for one pearl and 50 pearls total. Iron is an even rarer material. It is even more expensive. A white pearl can only be exchanged for one kilogram iron ingot. I still have to earn 121 pearls. Rain said indignantly if I'm lucky, I can get an iron or transport mission to the Sicily market every time. But it's only three pearls for one trip and it takes 14 days to get there and back. That adds up to 560 days. If I don't get it, or if I encounter a sea closure, it will take even longer. Two years to evolve. Holy shit, that's terrible. However, Rain also had no better way to make money. If a steady transporter can complete the evolution, it is possible to spend two years. Thinking of this, Rain still decided to continue to engage in transportation while seeing if there were any other good missions, such as rescue missions, or whatever he had not encountered. After that, Rain began to continue his career as a transporter. During this time, it was the happiest for the Arson family. Whenever they were free after running missions, Armin and Arson could visit their mother Arwi. At times, Avril would also invite Arwi to be a guest on the ship. Although Lieutenant Shob did not recruit the two crew members he wanted, it seems that he has not given up. He not only helped to search Biao's home in person but also offer a messenger seagull to Avril. Seeing that Shobe always shows friendly to Arsene and Avril, Rain always has the feeling that someone else is chasing his girlfriend, which is odd. If not for Rain knowing it was his own illusion, and Shobe seemed to be a decent guy, Rain would have thrown him off the ship. During LT, Shobe's contact with Arsene, he soon learned that Arsene's mother was working as a handyman in the market. And it so happened that the Navy kitchen lacked a person to wash dishes, so he recruited Arwi to go over. This is great news for Terry's family. This means that Arwi will have a stable and lucrative income in the future, and her status has also been raised. Every day went by without a care in the world. One day, Shobe came uninvited to talk to Avril about maritime tactics. Suddenly, seven Navy soldiers came rushing from the Navy battleship. Lieutenant Shobe, quick, emergency, why are you so panicked? Don't be seen as a clown. Shobe shook his head and smoked his cigar leisurely. Say, what is it? Lieutenant Shobe, 300 nautical miles from here, a G-class sea monster has been spotted. The soldier said anxiously, 13 ships coming from the Mississippi trading market have been destroyed, and the Navy there is requesting support. Avril only felt a blue shadow flicker before her eyes, and then she realized that Shobe was no longer on board. In the distance, Shobe's tall back walked quickly towards the Navy warship, inform all personnel, gather for battle. 27. Strong data of mutant. This guy. A mutant? Rain was amazed. Just now that guy's speed definitely exceeded ordinary people. But the system didn't seem to prompt itself. Could it be that the system would only make the analysis of the enemy and his crew? If that's the case. Rubbish system. Rain couldn't help but curse. Captain, this is a problem. If they can't kill that sea monster, this voyage will definitely be blocked for a long time. At the moment, we are mainly taking up transport missions to the Sicily market, Avril said with a frown. Rain was also thinking about this problem, 
This sea monster is too good at choosing places. That said, there are actually more than a dozen merchant ships that have been wrecked. Luckily, they haven't received any missions in the past two days. Arson went to the bow of the ship and looked at Shobe's distant back. She hesitated for a long time with worried and whispered, Uh, Captain, can we follow them? Just take a look from afar. Terry and Armin's faces also showed the same worried look. Rain understood at once that Awi is still on the warship. They must be worried about her safety. After all, Rain had a system warning, and his current ship speed was not too fast, but it was at least six knots. Maintaining the maximum safe distance should still be safe. Besides, he also wanted to see what a ferocious character the so-called 1,500 pearls worth of G-Class Sea Monster are. Although the G-Class Pirate Regiment and Naval Squadron can engage the G-Class Sea Monster head-on, it is important to know that the Pirate Regiment and the Navy are not only a warship. So in terms of individual capabilities, the G-Class Sea Monster is much more powerful than the main ship of the G-Class Pirate Regiment and Naval Squadron. In addition, the same G-Class also has a difference between strong and weak. Avril saw the sea monster Medusa with a bounty of 1500 higher than the wild wine pirates. Rain also was curious what the strength of the sea monster. Okay, we'll go and see too. Wait for the navy to open the way first. Just follow them. Thanks a lot, Captain. We will go crank the oars here. Not only was Rain going to see the action, but there were a dozen larger ships following the navy before and after Rain. Eh? What are they there for? Captain, they probably want to take their chances. This sea monster is definitely on the wanted list. As long as they kill it, the bounty is astronomical. Terry said there will be brave men under the heavy reward. Even if they know it is very dangerous, they will go to sea. Rain nodded, this idea he could understand. A four-figure bounty is also astronomical for them. Wait. The system seems to have said that his wooden spikes can cause damage to G-class sea monsters, right? If that's the case, maybe he'll have a chance to make use of the loophole, or something. He felt excited to think about it. On the sea, a huge ship followed by many small boats. Only, the location of the incident is far away from here. The most enthusiastic boat is slowly being left behind. Damn, I have at least six knots of ship speed, am I left behind just like this? Rain wanted to cry without tears. The one who was left behind naturally was him. Even if it was a merchant ship, they were at least equipped with weapons and had a speed of at least 8 to 10 knots. While Rain only had a wooden spike and the speed limit was only 6 knots, which made him look particularly different. In a short time, there were only Rain and his crew around. Not to mention the navy ships, and even those merchant ships were nowhere to be seen. Come on, everyone. Come on. Captain, our limit speed is only so much, and now there is a little headwind, Avril said anxiously. No, we have to go faster. Arson said urgently, Captain, I'll go down and push you. Push me? I seem to be quite heavy. Arson did not care so much. She took off her jacket and jumped into the sea. She swam to the stern of the ship and put her hands on the hull. Immediately, the skin on her face tightened, blue fork lines appeared on the inside of her skin, and fins grew on the sides of her arms. Rain saw more clearly that not only the arms, but Arson's legs also grew fins on the side. Suddenly, Rain just felt his speed increase. His boat's speed increased by at least two knots at once. This was even with the lack of Arson's hand crank thrusters. So powerful? Rain couldn't help but be amazed. System, check Arson's condition. The system quickly pulled up crew member Arson's personal information. Mutation type, bio-like mutation, interchangeable with human form. Mutation stage, first stage slash, open for details. Mutation level, four out of ten, open for details. Transformation ability. Underwater transformation, currently 40%. After transforming, you can move underwater for a long time without having to change your breath, and your body functions will be further enhanced with the percentage of transformation. The current enhancement value is 40%. This effect is effective in the water. If transformed on land, the effect is reversed. Contagious, none. Rain open the mutation stage suboption. Mutation stage. Each stage has a total of 10 levels. Currently, the target stage is in the first stage in level 4, due to the propagation of the mother cannot be determined, cannot get the target crew mutation stage limit. Rain moved on to the next item and opened the mutation level sub-option. Mutation level 4. It improves with the maximum percentage of transformation. Currently, the maximum percentage of target transformation is 40%, and the level of mutation is 4. 
In this level period, the target crew's body has each basic attribute four times the average adult male and can be stacked with the value of the enhanced attributes after the transformation. Rain read this paragraph carefully. If he understood it correctly, in Arson's usual state, her physical attributes would be equivalent to four times the adult male average value. And after the underwater transformation, it would have to be boosted by 40%. 5.6 times. Another thing to note was that Arson's mutation in the water is a plus, but it becomes a weakness if it comes to land. If she transforms on land, the effect would be reduced by 40%, which is also equivalent to 2.4 times the average adult male. But since Arson can control her form change, so only a fool would change on land. Terry's combat power is 1.5, but he has a leg disease. Then the average combat power of adult men can be assumed to be 2. So now Arson's combat power is 11.2. Rain quickly checked Arson's combat power, and it was indeed not far from his estimate. Arson's combat power was 10.8. It's more powerful than the wooden spikes. Rain exclaimed, and it's only the first stage in level 4 now. Well, no wonder people say mutants are strong. Now it seems not strong, but too strong. 28. Terrible naval battle. Shob stood at the bow of the warship with his hands behind his back and his tall body standing straight. Two navies stood behind him. These two are completely different from Harry. They have straight bodies and quick eyes, with a height of more than 1.8 m. They give a sense of composure at first glance. If not for the Shob standing in front of them, these two should also be able to take charge of an army. Ensign Baika, did Hades say which sea monster in the end? Shob bit the cigar at the corner of his mouth and asked, Lieutenant, according to Lieutenant Hades' description, we have confirmed that it is the deep sea octopus emperor. Baika replied dryly. Shob couldn't help but grimace after hearing this result. That guy came out again. No wonder Hades begged me for help. By the way, how much is the bounty on the monster now? Lieutenant, the latest bounty amount came out last month. The bounty for the deep sea octopod emperor is 1,800 pearls. 1,800? Higher than Medusa. Shob snorted coldly. That means if we can kill that guy, we can get 1,800 military merit points. But lieutenant, that guy is notoriously difficult to deal with and has a cunning nature. It has escaped from the navy four times in our navy records. At this point, another ensign on the side of Baika, there were nine chases, five of which ended in failure and four escaped. Nine chases resulted in a total of 744 missing and 89 wounded. Five G-class main ships were scrapped, one was severely damaged, two needed major repairs, and the remaining 49 small were all towed into the sea by it. It's easy to see that this dude is a number cruncher, he reported a series of precise numbers in one breath. The monster is good at destroying ships. As long as it is entangled by its tentacles, the ship will either be strangled or towed to sink. As long as the crew members fall into the sea, there is no record of survival yet unless mutant. The previous data said missing, but this person said no survivors. No one questioned, because they knew the navy too well. They were missing because they were eaten by the monster, and no bodies were found. Shob took a deep sip of a cigar, turned his head, and spat around that number cruncher. Rachel, can you shut up? Rachel choked a straight cough, taking the hand in front of the wave. Lieutenant, I'm afraid you'll be reckless. Ha 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 ha, I wouldn't. Shob laughed out loud a few times, then put away his smile again and looked grave. I have 243 men on this ship. How could I be careless? Baika, pass the order to speed up. Yes, Lieutenant. Arson was pushing the ship behind. But desperately, the fleet ahead began to speed up again. Rain fading away. That wasn't the worst. After pushing for a few hours, Arson was exhausted and was pulled on board by other people, which made Rain's speed for knots. Damn, some people are walking and falling apart, Rain heard said. It seemed that Rain was far from qualified to join this battle. Arson, don't rush. I believe the battle will continue for some time. Maybe we can catch up. Avril comforted, besides, Lieutenant showed they are gonna support, which means there is still a navy over there. The danger factor should be much less. Arson sighed as she looked down at her hands. I'm so useless. Suddenly the captain's voice rang out. Arson, don't blame yourself. You did your best the whole time you were near the limit. It's a miracle you could keep it for four hours. Captain, Arson looked at the bow of the ship. Don't worry. I think that Shob is not a simple man. He is a backstabber, so he shouldn't be that stupid. This time, Rain's words did not resonate with the crew. He seemed to be the only one who felt Shob is a backstabber. However, 
his point did get across that Shobe was still a man with a brain. Besides, there didn't seem to be any other way out now. They could only move slowly in the direction of the battlefield. 300 nautical miles. According to theoretical calculations, even if Arson will push the boat four or five hours a day, it will take four or five days to reach. But in the early morning of the third day, the sea was flooded with a mist of water, while wave after wave of gentle waves rocked the bottom of the ship gently. Rain's feeling was the deepest. Weirdly, the wind and the direction of the waves were opposite. Rain was alerted immediately. Under normal circumstances, the direction of the waves must be consistent with the direction of the wind, so the current anomaly can only mean one thing. Something was happening in the sea ahead and set off waves. While Rain was wondering, a series of booming sounds came. It woke up everyone on the boat. Boom, 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 boom. Arson opened her eyes, the whole person spring like sitting up, Sister Armin, Avril, there is the sound of gunfire ahead. The three hurried out of the cabin. Terry and White were already standing in the bow position and looking ahead. There were sounds in the distance from time to time. Besides the sound of cannons, there seemed to be the shouting of people. Only the sea was too foggy for them to see. Captain? Avril asked bewildered, what's going on, are we there yet? It can't be, it's only been two days, didn't the Navy say it was 300 nautical miles from here? Armin said in confusion. Rain did not say anything. Now he was keeping an eye on the system radar at all times. Even if the Navy said it was 300 nautical miles away, the sound coming to his ears could not be fake. There was a mirage at sea, but it could not be sound. No matter what was happening ahead, he had to stay alert now. The radar was still not responding, and the 1,000 meter warning distance had not yet been reached. It's possible we're already there. While this was happening, Rain said, at that time, the Navy said that there were already other warships that were at war with the sea monster and asked for support. So that means that Navy couldn't beat that sea monster, and I guess they might have retreated to Morgan's trading post to wait for Shobe and their support. That means we walk opposite each other. The speed is naturally fast. When Rain said that, the crowd immediately realized that this possibility was very high. It's too foggy now, so let's approach carefully. Rain said everyone, return to your positions. They quickly led the way, I captain. Avril was standing at the bow of the ship, she must stand in this position. The sound was getting closer and closer. 999 meters directly ahead, a G-class sea monster found. 994 meters directly ahead, a naval battle is taking place. Participation. 2 G-class 3 masted warships, 8 2 masted warships, 11 3 tier Somali warships, 31 double deck transport ships, 1 G-class sea monster deep sea octopus emperor, 981 M position in the direction ahead, found a large number of timber resources. A series of warning sounds came from his brain, but now Rain wanted to kick the system away. What the hell is a large amount of wood found? Do you want me to take advantage of the war between the two sides is now in full swing to pick up wood? Although also a little want, he doesn't want to become wood now. Stop moving forward, we're here. Rain lowered his voice and said, 1000 meters ahead is the battlefield. This was the first time Rain encountered such a large scale naval battle. 29. Fighting Octopus Emperor. Where the hell is that monster? Arson tried hard to see ahead, but her vision kept being obscured by the fog and she couldn't see anything. Terry looked at the time and said the sun is out. The fog would dissipate soon. Terry is worthy of the old crew. When the sun gradually rose, the sea fog dispersed not long after. Even if not completely disappeared, the people can already see the sea. Rain felt a lot of pressure after seeing the monster. What the hell? Are you guys sure this is a G-class sea monster, not a mountain? Rain said in shock. A warship at least 20 meters long capsized completely in front of them. It was floating on the surface, and right on its hull, a huge red octopus was coiled on it. It is at least 40 meters high. It is huge and thick, with soft tentacles on the hull underneath the rapid rolling like a giant anaconda. And this is only the part that is exposed to the air, the majority of the tentacles are lurking in the water. Fear often from the unknown, only God knows where those tentacles will suddenly reach out. In front of this behemoth, the two G-class warships are going to look much smaller, those who don't even reach the G-class warships, and the distant merchant ships almost become toys. Rain was marveling at the enormity of this octopus. Suddenly, a 20-meter warship below the fierce rush out of a tentacle a slap in the middle of the warship hull. The navy on board panicked, some desperately attacked the tentacle with weapons, while others simply jumped into the sea. In the distance, Shobe's warships saw the scene and attacked the tentacle with cannons. Blast its tentacles off, 
Shob stood on the prow of the ship, he held his cigar in his mouth with eyes sharpened. However, before they could launch their attack, someone immediately shouted, Lieutenant, we have detected an object under the ship approaching rapidly. Without waiting for them to make a move, the monster made a move on them first. Shob took a reluctant glance at the entangled warship. He wanted to save them, but he first had to make sure his ship didn't get entangled. Pause the attack, full sail, left full rudder out of here, quick. The sails on the warship were quickly pulled tight and the wind multiplied. With the wind, the ship quickly turned to the left. Just as they left their previous position by a dozen meters, two huge tentacles rushed out from under the water at an alarming speed, grazing their hull and striking into the air. If they had been a little slower, even if the direction was a little off, the ship would have been hit hard. Although this sneak attack did not succeed, the monster still stopped them from interfering with themselves. Without this obstruction, the monster rolled up the previous warship with its tentacles and lifted it several dozen meters directly. A warship like this is at least tens of tons, plus the water tension generated when out of the water, its weight is even more unimaginable. However, the monster used the tentacle and lifted it like a toy. The crew members who hadn't jumped off the ship could no longer be stand stabilized, and they all fell off the ship into the sea. What's it doing? Rain stared closely at the monster. The next second, the monster flung the warship and threw it violently in one direction. Holy shit. Rain was already scared shitless, although he couldn't pee there. As a ship, he couldn't help but think of the ship that was caught by the monster. If he was caught, how miserable will die. Although frightened, Rain still looked in the direction of the warship that was thrown. The result made he was even more alarmed. The monster had thrown the warship into a pile of merchant ships. A loud boom, simply louder than the sound of artillery. The sea flooded with a shocking curtain of water, and seven or eight merchant ships were instantly hit hard. Those crew members saw that they could not save the ship, they jumped into the sea. Fortunately, rain is inconspicuous, if the warship just smashed over, now sinking is him. It's too scary. Avril said blankly, is this the strength of G-class sea monsters? At this point, the sea suddenly formed a whirlpool, the size of the whirlpool getting bigger and bigger, and all the ships had to sail in reverse not to be involved. But those who fell into the water were not so lucky, they desperately swam, but found themselves closer and closer to the monster. In no time at all, the sound of screams came from all directions of the sea, one after another. Tentacles rolled across the seabed, and soon grabbed those crew members. Some of them were strangled to death in the middle of the process, while others were still struggling desperately, pounding desperately or slashing at the tentacles with their weapons, but no matter what the process was, the result was the same. They were sent into the mouth of the monster. Rain froze. Eating human? Coming to this world, this was the first time Rain saw such a horrible scene. Eating at least dozens of people at a time. This is only what Rain saw, from the scene of the wreckage. There has been a fierce battle here before. Where is the crew? The system reported sea monsters, ships, and even wood, but only didn't tell him that there was a human found. At this moment, both the merchant ships and the usually majestic navy had become food for the sea monsters whenever they fell into the water. Damn it! Fire! Shob's eyes were already bloodshot. Hades, now is not the time to fight for credit. Let's encircle it and pounce together. On the other G-class warship, a large bearded man with a uniform identical to Shob's nodded to Shob. Got it. I'll go around. The two largest warships began a new round of joint attacks. Boom, 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 boom. The guns on the flanks of the two G-class battleships fired dozens of shells in quick succession. A series of cannons bombarded the monster, and that guy didn't seem to like the feeling too much, its huge body swaying back and forth. It hits, Armin said in surprise, but Terry shook his head. It's not hard to hit sea monsters, but their defense is so strong that it's hard for ordinary artillery to seriously injure them, especially for soft-bodied sea monsters like the Octopus Emperor, which is very hard to kill. Their bodies can absorb a lot of damage. Now we can only pray that such heavy cannon fire can at least drive this guy away. Just as Terry's words fell, the octopod emperor slid into the water from the capsized ship's hull suddenly. Lieutenant, the target is gone. Shob said coldly with a cigar in his mouth, ran away again. In any case, now it seems that even if the monster escaped, it is still a kind of luck. Everyone's tense nerves finally relaxed at this moment. But there was one more person. To be precise, there was one ship that instead of relaxing its guard, was getting more and more alarmed. Rain was keeping an eye on his radar. At this point, 
he was tempted to tell Shobe that the monster was lurking at the bottom 300 meters below his ship. Avril, tells Shobe that the monster is on. The eight tentacles of the monster at the bottom of the sea suddenly opened backward before Rain finished his words. With the reaction force of the tentacles, the whole body like a cannonball from the bottom of the sea shot at the Shobe warship. 30. Crazy plan. Lieutenant, we detected something fast approaching the bottom of the ship. What? That monster. Shobe's eyes widened at once, move at full speed. Shobe's ship was also moving before, but now the speed has increased dramatically, double than before. This ship must have other power systems. The Navy's radar doesn't seem to be too advanced. Its detection range is only about 200 meters, and it can't get an accurate picture of the other side's situation. In that case, Shobe's reaction was already very fast, and he made the right decision the first time before he could figure out the situation on the seabed. Rain was slightly relieved. According to this speed, Shobe should be able to avoid the attack of the monster. However, at that moment, the system's voice sounded again in Rain's head. Detected the Deep Sea Octopus Emperor launch skill spray. From the mouth spray a large amount of seawater, using the reaction force to increase its speed for a short time. Damn skill? It's already so strong in itself, and it still has fucking skills. From the radar, he could see Shobe's ship moving fast, but the monster's speed surged by several times, bringing the distance between the two sides closer by dozens of meters at once. Lieutenant, that monster's speed has skyrocketed. We were gonna be caught up. Shobe's face was tense, and he didn't care to smoke a cigar, and shouted angrily to the other warship, Hades, what are you still standing there for? Fire at the undersea. Shob certainly cannot hit the bottom of the sea, but Hades can. Hades was in a bit of a bind, he couldn't even see the monster. Besides, if the shells hit too far will not threaten the monster, but if it is too close. Shob's ships move quickly, it is easy to hurt their people. Damn, whatever, I don't care even if hit you. Hades ordered, gunners aim at the bottom of the dreadnought 30 meters vertically below, give it a hard hit. Boom, boom, boom. The dreadnought was desperately fleeing and Hades' ship was right behind it, and the flanking guns were firing wildly at the bottom of the dreadnought. By this time, the battle had already entered a white heat, and the only remaining ships could not help anymore. They couldn't keep up with the speed. Just then, with a loud boom, the sea seemed to be blown apart. A huge red object suddenly out of the sea from the middle of the two ships. In the air, this guy fiercely opened its eight tentacles and grabbed two G-class warships at the same time. It pulled two warships together that are not far apart at once. Immediately after, its huge body landed on the two warships. Arson's eyes became desperate all of a sudden. It's over, the monster got on board. No, no, mom. I'm already a mutant. I can protect you, mom. Wait for me. Rain ship. Everyone did not notice that Arson suddenly jumped into the sea towards the dreadnought and swam quickly. Arson. No, come back. Terry found a strange situation behind him. Then he realized something wrong. He lay on the side panel of the ship and shouted desperately. What Arson went over? Avril and Armin looked back and their faces turned pale. Although Arson was a mutant, she was still too weak in front of the deep sea octopod emperor. If she went now, it was like seeking death. Captain? Avril called out to Rain anxiously. But Rain didn't answer her. Now he was regretting. He was only looking at the monster and not paying attention to Arson. But what was he can do now? There was a horrible battle going on, and even the Navy's G-Class fleet couldn't deal with the monster, so what could he do with a small 8-meter plank ship? If he went, 100% deaths and no life. Arson. Armin knelt on the board and cried. Terry sat down like lost to soul. Avril leaned against the bow of the boat and hugged White tightly. Fear, remorse, pain, and a deep sense of remorse. Avril, is that messenger seagull still there? Rain suddenly spoke. Captain, we can't go. I shouldn't have asked you just now. We can't do anything at all. Is the seagull still there? Rain said angrily. Rain hadn't been this aggressive in a long time, and Avril was a little intimidated, yes. Do as I say, write it down, and have the carrier seagull send a message to show. Rain's tone seemed somewhat determined. Captain, what are you doing? We can't lose you. Terry was sore, but with a little thought, he knew that they were seeking death if they went over there now. They were not afraid of death. But the captain and Avril were still here, and it was too much to ask them to put their lives on the line to do such a senseless thing. Rain's faint voice came from the small wooden plank boat. I told you, I'm not leaving any of you behind. If I can't even protect my crew, how am I gonna conquer this world? Avril, hurry. The navy won't last long. Write down my plan. We must get Arson back. 
There was no pen on board, so Avril bit her finger and tore off a piece of cloth from her jacket to listen carefully and record Rain's words. On the dreadnought and the charge, all the naval forces were fighting against the tentacles of the octopus emperor. Sho blasted the tentacle in front of him with a cigar in his mouth, and the immense tentacle began to shrink up because of the pain. Want to overturn my ship? You are not qualified. However, just behind Shobe, another tentacle of the monster had already crushed the command room. Shobe narrowed his eyes slightly. He was only one person after all, and this guy had eight tentacles. Where's that bastard Hades? Shobe looked up to find Hades repelling another tentacle on the other ship. But the situation was similar to Shobe. He could defend himself. But he could not defeat the monster nor protect the entire ship. There were constant screams from the crew around him. Shobe's chest rose and fell violently. Damn, if my power system could be stronger. At that very moment, a white seagull in the sky stopped on the mast and searched for a while in the crowd, finally finding its former owner. Eh? Little booty? What are you doing here? Shobe spotted his seagull as well. The little booty skillfully passed through several tentacles and stopped on Shobe's arm. Shobe found a piece of cloth tied to the guy's leg in an extremely ugly way. He opened it to see in a hurry. Shobe looked into the distance after reading this blood letter, where a double plank boat was parked. Shobe narrowed his eyes slightly, thinking of the tactics in the blood letter, and could not help but dry swallow a mouthful of saliva. Holy shit, are those guys crazy? But now, it seemed like the only hope. Shobe immediately scurried through the chaos of people and slimy tentacles to find the person he was looking for with great difficulty. Rachel, can you do this? Shobe shoved the blood letter to him. Rachel was fighting with the tentacle. Although he was suddenly dragged over by the boss and stuffed with a piece of cloth, he remained calm. He opened the blood letter and read it, then he looked at Shobe in horror. Boss, are you crazy? You fucking crazy, tell me can you do it? Rachel thought carefully and finally gritted his teeth. My side is no problem, but I don't believe that someone can complete what it says. You just be responsible for your share, the rest only to that woman. 31. Spaceship? A white seagull calmly crosses the sea monster's exaggerated tentacles and chaotic deck. People's fear, anger, swords, and firearms spray were irrelevant to it. It had only one purpose, to deliver information to its master. The gull landed on the bow of Rain's ship, and Avril took the reply at its feet. After a glance, Avril hurriedly reported to Rain, Captain, they're ready. And good. In that case, let's start moving. You guys get off the ship. This position should still be safe. Rain said blandly. No, Captain, we're staying with you, Avril said firmly. Don't let us off the ship or I'll never forgive you. Rain had a bit of a headache. Why were women always so troublesome? Yes, Captain, you are there for arson. Armin and I have no reason to leave. Even if we die, we have to die on the ship. Terry, can't you say something auspicious? Rain sighed. Captain, you can't leave us, and we won't let you go alone. Armin, who was never one to talk, chimed in. Besides, you'll need us to paddle, won't you? Woof, woof. White barked twice toward Rain. White, even you don't listen to me. Rain was depressed. It was in such a critical situation. These guys dare not listen to the captain. Headache. Well then, now there is no time for nonsense. All of you hold on tight. I have no time to save you even if fall down. Rain still maintained his ruthless captain's personality. At that moment, the guns of the dreadnought fired a dozen shells one after another landing behind Rain's buttocks. The sea behind Rain gradually started to rise and Rain began to move following the waves. At the same time, Terry and Armin came to the stern of the ship to control the two cranks and quickly cranked the propeller. The speed of the boat was increasing. Target, the Emperor Octopus. Avril stood at the bow of the ship, hands resting on the rudder with a serious expression unusually. If followed Rain's plan, this would undoubtedly be a crazy suicidal act. But this time, she still trusted the captain completely. Boom, boom, boom. The dreadnought's shells landed precisely behind Rain. It caused the waves behind him to continue to accelerate, while Rain's speed continued to break through the upper limit under the dual thrust of thrusters and wave propulsion. The surrounding ships saw Rain. The crew members couldn't help but stare at the scene with wide eyes and surprise. Eh? You guys look at that ship. Isn't that Avril's ship? What does she want? She, why is she rushing towards the monster? Want to die? Honestly, I'm really shocked. I've never seen someone for kill steal so desperate in my life. Wreck found 300 meters ahead. Please slow down. Ship speed has reached 10 knots, exceeding the upper limit. Please slow down. Shipwreck found 200 meters ahead. Please slow down. 
Ship speed has reached 13 knots, exceeding the upper limit, please slow down. Shut the hell up, I can see. Rain shouted, the wreck is the warship that was upside down in the sea before, so how can he not see it? He was concentrating on driving the ship, but the system kept prompting him like a complainer. Ship speed, 20 knots. Sinking ship, 50 meters. Boom 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 boom. Another series of accurate shells. The dreadnought applied isotropic force, again and again. It made Rain's ship's speed reach 21 knots. Now it was like flying for Rain which is normally only 6 knots. At this moment, they even overtook Arson. It caused Arson to look confused. What are they doing? Why are they going so fast? By the way, even if they came to save me, why are they running faster than me? Did they run past the station? Unfortunately, no one could answer her. In the blink of an eye, Rain had already rushed past. Holy shit, are they crazy? It's going to collide. Someone on the merchant ship let out an alarming cry. What the hell are they up to? Attracting the attention of the monster by committing suicide? Makes sense, should be trying to scare the Octopusy Emperor. Wreck position, 10 meters, 5 meters, 2 meters. The next second, everyone shut up. Hold on tight. Rain yelled low. The bottom of the warship was curved. If it was normal, it should be wide at the top and narrow at the bottom. But this sunken ship was upside down on the sea, so its hull became wide at the bottom and narrow at the top. This shape was like a perfect uphill slope. With a sharp and narrow piercing scraping sound, Rain's hull rubbed against the hull of the warship, and then people saw a magical scene. A double-decker plank ship rushing towards the octopus emperor flew up. Time seemed to have become half a beat slower. Rain and his four crew, and a seagull, escaped the Earth's gravity and soared between the sky and the sea. At this time Rain was not a boat, but a spaceship. What the hell? No one will believe what happened today. Shob's cigar fell to the ground. His eyes glazed three times larger than usual. Ah! Avril. Terry and Armin tightly gripped the boat board. The three whole bodies were almost about to fly out. White chewed a boat rope. The whole dog, especially the two ears fluttered joyfully. Rachel had a dead eye on the ship through the cannon hole. These crazy guys, they did it. But he didn't have too much time to marvel, because he still had a most important task. Rain's hull was parallel to the monster, and according to their request, he had to perform another operation to help them turn the ship around so that they would face the Octopusy Emperor head-on. The initial speed is 22 knots. The angle of inclination of the diving board is 30 degrees. Their final maximum height is 33.4 meters, and their time to pass the gun ports is... After a series of complicated calculations, Rachel took a deep breath. It takes two seconds for the fuse to burn and three seconds for the cannonball to fly. It's now. Rachel lighted the fuse, and bared the fuse began to burn. Two seconds later, with a loud sound, the gun spewed out a shell and accurately hit Rain which happened to pass the mouth of the gun hole. Rain really wanted to curse. I didn't see you guys so accurate when you hit the monster except hit me. With this shell hitting the target, Rain's bow started to turn towards the octopus emperor. The monster was having a good time. There was a lot of food on the two G-class warships. And at that moment, it suddenly saw a small ship passing by its eyes. What is this? Its eyes blink. That ship was facing it now, and a straight and hard wooden spike stood under its bow. Distance to target 37.3 meters, entering the best range. A faint voice said, fire the wooden spike. With a whoosh, the wooden spike instantly shot out. The powerful recoil even made Rain feel like he has pushed backwards some distance in the air. The Octopod Emperor saw a blur before his eyes, followed by a small dot coming at his eyes. At that moment, it seemed to have an illusion, and it seemed to hear the ship talking. Remember, you cannot afford to mess with my crew. With a poof, the wooden spike entered the monster's eye without a doubt. At this moment, the whole world was silent. 32. Curtain Falls A loud boom broke the calm of the sea and Rain fell into the sea stirring up a large water splash. Rain felt like he was about to fall apart, but the system's craftsmanship was so strong that he finally landed safely. Rain did not wait for the octopus emperor to find him trouble to run away in a flash at a speed of more than 15 knots with the help of inertia. I'm not feeling well, bye. Leave the rest to the navy. Anyway, I tried my best. If you can't win the only eye monster then I really can't help it. Rain was running away, leaving only a group of dumbfounded and shocked onlookers. What the fuck, am I dreaming? Impossible. How did they do it? No, it's crazy just to think about it. I think my eyes have gone blind. What demons and monsters are on that boat? 
People were pulled back to reality by the Octopus Emperor's rampage after a full ten seconds or so of shock. A heartbreaking pain came from the eye, and the body of the monster suddenly began to wriggle in pain. Its eight huge tentacles began to roll in agitation. At this time, the Octopus Emperor One Eye has been blind. Its vision was blocked and emotion was disordered. Facing this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, Sho bent down to pick up the cigar on the ground, dusted the mouth of the mud, and disgusted it back into his mouth. In this day and age, cleanliness and the others go to hell. The price of a cigar is very expensive, so it's a waste to smoke half of it and throw it away. Shobe felt better after taking a deep sip of the cigar. He threw his navy jacket to the side and hung it on a broken mast. Okay, your show was over. Now it's my turn. Before the words fell Shobe saw a figure on the opposite side of the ship quickly along a tentacle toward the head of the octopus and ran wildly. Damn, fuck you Hades. I have not seen you work so hard before, now you want to take credit with me. Dream on, said Shob. His body suddenly stepped on a tentacle not far away and ran frantically upward. Hades also seemed to see Shob, so he speeds up quickly. But Shob was not weak, he jumped fast on the sucker. At this time, the monster had no time to take care of these two people. While it was in a frenzy, the two of them ran to the nearest position of the monster's torso, and they leaped up at the same time. Ghost hand. Hades shouted violently while his right hand became a claw and vainly grabbed at the left eye of the monster. From his palm, a black breast shot straight to the monster's left eye. Shob's eyes opened wide, Miss Shadow. His body instantly became illusory and his entity appeared directly in front of a dozen meters. Hades, you are still too slow compared to me. Shob pulled out a firearm from his waist and shot toward the left eye of the monster after saying that. According to reason, the monster's defense was extremely amazing and even the artillery cannot hurt it. But at this time Shob was too close to the monster, and the attack was its vital point, the other eye. This shot was very powerful and faster than Hades. The monster's eyeball was shot out in one shot. The whole ship was shocked when Rain saw this scene. This is the strength of the mutant. No wonder they say that the strength of a fleet depends on the ship and the crew in the Azure era. The power of these mutants was no less than powerful weapons. The deep-sea octopus emperor with both eyes destroyed frantically pumped its eight tentacles, but everyone knew that this monster was at the end of its rope. Hades and Sho began the final indiscriminate bombardment of the octopus emperor. The two G-class ships adjusted their guns and fired wildly. In the sky, a rain of blood poured down and dyed the whole seared. With a loud rumble, the immense and incomparable body of the deep-sea octopus emperor crashed into the sea from the two battleships. Its scarred eight tentacles slid helplessly down the two hulls. Detected a level G2 sea monster deep sea octopus emperor corpse in the direction of 113 degrees southeast, 384 meters. Rain finally breathed a sigh of relief at the message coming from the system. The deep sea octopus emperor was finally dead. Arson. Armin found that Arson has swam to their side. Her father pulled her up hurriedly and sent dry clothes to her. Arson looked at the bow of the ship. At this time the bow of the ship has broken a big hole due to the cannon hit. The ship's body was not as strong as before, some places appear loose, and the foot even appeared the phenomenon of leakage. The good thing was that the gun did not directly destroy the shipboard, otherwise the ship would already have been sunk. Arson sadly lowered her head and did not dare to speak. At this time the situation over there was not completely clear. Rain doesn't want to say anything for the time being. He was focusing on the battlefield. The body of the deep sea octopus emperor surfaced to officially announce the end of the operation. Although the monster died, the scene of celebration did not appear. Navy losses were also very huge, the two G-class warships were badly damaged. The ship was littered with broken wood, a deformed hull, collapsed cabin. At least half of the crew was injured. But this was not the worst, the real tragedy was that the ships on the surface of the sea that was only wrecked had sunk to the bottom. In all, seventeen frigates were destroyed, seven merchant ships were destroyed, and the seamen who jumped overboard. All missing. Shob looked at the Rexy and took a sip of his cigar. The cost of this victory was too great. Hades jumped over from another boat. He walked over to Shob and patted his shoulder. I've notified the nearest command to come over and salvage it. Let's go. First pull the Octopus Emperor to Morgan Exchange, and wait for the combat section to come over and receive it. And, Shob responded. But soon he thought of a problem and quickly walked to the other side of the mast to look out to sea. He was relieved when he saw that the boat with the four people, a dog, and a seagull were all safe and sound, those crazy bastards. Bika, throw a rope at them. 
Their boat was badly damaged. Let's take them with us. Hades also came over. Are they your people? No. Cough, Ed, not for now, but I warn you don't design on them. I will recruit them sooner or later. Hey, you said it is not. Then I also have a chance. Hades was not a Shob henchman. The two men on an equal level, that said they really flew. I was thinking I was hallucinating. Hades was not the only one who thought he was hallucinating. Now Rain also had a hallucination as if he had a nose ring and was being led around. His bow was shot through, and Avril just happened to put the rope through. Damn, doesn't this guy have any consideration for my feelings? Why don't you tie the rope to the side of the boat? These two big nostrils that are killing me are really conspicuous, so someone can't help but want to use something to go through them. And why put the monster behind my own butt? That guy's pair of bloodshot eyes have been attached to my ass. It looks like he died with everlasting great hatred. Brother, don't keep staring at me like that. I only stabbed you in one eye, they killed you. You must remember to find them if you want to take revenge. Rain prayed silently. Due to the damage to the hull and also to pulling the huge corpse of the octopus emperor, the dreadnought and the charge did not drive fast and only arrived at the Morgan trading market three days later. When the navy returned, the trading market exploded at once. Look guys, how did the dreadnought become like this? The one next to it is also a G-class warship, it seems to be the Mississippi's charge. It's also turned into this. Hold on, you guys look behind the charge, what's that? Oh my god, it's a sea monster. And eh? Uh, and a broken ship? 33. Reward. Morgan Trading Market. The Navy men got busy. Seeing Terry and the others hurrying, Shobe took the time to inquire personally about Arwee's situation. Although she had been in the kitchen and almost was scared to death, luckily, nothing happened. Seeing that the Navy was so busy, Rain didn't bother them anymore and docked alone at the corner of the trading market. The merchant ship that came back told everyone about the thrilling experience. They said with excitement when it came to Rain and their feet. People coming and going always intentionally or unintentionally look at them. It makes Avril and others a little uncomfortable. It was finally quiet until night. Late at night, the sea breeze. The surrounding ships have gone to sleep. Only the distant dreadnought and charge were still lit up. They were still busy repairing the ship but also waiting the next day for someone to receive the monster's body. Rain quietly swayed gently with the sea breeze. Avril, Arson, and Armin slept in the cabin. Terry and White slept under the simple canopy and Little Booty was also nestled on the canopy. Only Rain was still awake. He can't sleep now. This battle not only lets Rain know the gap between himself and the Navy and G-Class sea monsters but also let him see the ability of the powerful mutant. That is already beyond the scope of his imagination. Moreover, Shobe and Hades are still only the Navy stationed at the periphery of the Human Class Sea, which is already so powerful. What about the Beast Class, King Class, Dragon Class, and Sky Class Navy? Moreover, the navy is not the only power in this world. How powerful would they be? One day sooner or later, I must go to the sky class sea to take a look. Rain secretly made up his mind. Although imagining it for half a day, Rain was depressed again when he saw himself in this state. He has been entirely unrecognizable. The system provided the current damage, the bow was severely damaged, the deck punctured, the hull was severely damaged, the keel was damaged, and the bottom of the ship needed to be repaired. A total of 80 units of wood. The ship was built with 150 units of wood. It is equal to half of the ship being scrapped. So see the righteousness of such a thing can't do. They killed the octopus emperor in the end. I can't get anything. Rain lamented. At this moment, there was a movement in the cabin. And then Arson draped in a jacket out of the cabin. She stood up straight with hesitation but walked to the bow and sat down. Captain, are you asleep? No, don't you sleep? Rain said softly. I can't sleep. Captain, if you want to scold me, just scold me, it was I put you in this state I, said Arson's voice was a little choked, don't blame you, eh? Arson looked at the helm in surprise with a tear, rain is come and goes like a shadow, so everyone who has defaulted to the bow is rain, but now, the bow has been destroyed beyond recognition, so rain now uses the helm to make the sound, if it was my mother on that boat, I would have gone out of my way to save her, rain's tone had a hint of sadness in it, but, I should have been more sensible. A few people can keep their sanity in that situation. Besides, you have some ability, unlike Armin who can't even swim. If she wants to go, I'm sure to scold her for being stupid, but you, understandable. Captain. Oh, by the way, next time you encounter this kind of situation, remember to tell me and trust your captain, okay? Yes. The next day, 
a line of naval warships appeared at sea. They hauled away the body of the deep-sea octopus emperor after a morning of negotiation. Afternoon, Rain was planning to let Avril and the others go to buy wood and repair the ship when Shobe came again. Are you guys going out here? Wait a minute, I want to tell you something. Well, your ship was badly damaged, but I should still be able to get on board. After saying that, Shobe jumped down. Rain only felt a sinking body. This guy was running too frequently, and now even White didn't roar to him anymore, which made Rain feel that his last ally had left him. Lieutenant Shobe, what are you want to? Avril asked curiously. Oh, I was supposed to come yesterday, but that Hades guy kept staring at me. I have got rid of him just now, Shobe said heartily while pulling out a cigar and preparing to light it. You know, the deep sea octopus emperor long ago on the wanted, its bounty is 1,800 white pearls. But if our navy hunted monsters, no pro reward, only military merit value. This time, Hades and I each had 800 military merit value. Suddenly, the ship swayed, almost throwing Shobe out. Rain was not willing to. This bastard got 800 military merit value although he also doesn't know what the hell military merit value is. It sounds mighty, and the bastard came to show off. 1800 pearls. I can ascend several levels in a row. It's okay not to know, but now that he knows, Rain just feels his heart dripping blood. Unfortunately, Shobe is not an ordinary man, and it was a bit difficult to shake and throw him like that. However, Rain did manage to fling Shobe's cigar into the sea. Holy shit, my god eater. Avril looked at Shob strangely, god eater? Shob looked at the body of god eater in the sea with heartache. Oh, it's a brand of cigar. It's very expensive. Forget it. It's my fault for not catching. Shob took out another cigar. This time he looked around at the calm waters and then lit it. We'd better get down to business. Although we killed the octopus emperor, there is no doubt that if you had not come forward at the critical moment and stabbed it in one eye, Hades and I would not have been able to get close to it. Hades and I have discussed that the bounty that we take must be shared with you. Now the ship was stable as hell. Not a single wobble. But then, Hades and I took our military merit value. This thing is the Navy's internal military merit points. It cannot be transferred and is useless for you guys. So we both decided to personally take out some pearls to count as a bounty to share with you guys. Hades took out a small cloth bag from the pocket of his clothes. I hey, like to smoke, not many savings. Hades is poorer than me. He likes to drink, so, really sorry, we can only come up with 150 pearls. I contributed 100, and Hades only 50. Showed very emphasis on the two people's funding situation. Avril was not polite at all. She took the cloth bag directly, then many thanks to Lieutenant Shobe. Oh, in addition, please convey our thanks to Lieutenant Hades. Shobe was hurting now. That sack of pearls is enough to pay for his cigarettes for a few months. Oh, okay, no problem. But you'd better not contact Hades more. That guy not only likes to drink but is also horny. So beautiful girls like you must always avoid. Shobe whispered a reminder. That's okay I'll go first. You are welcome to come to sit on my ship when you have time. And I'd like to know how you came up with this crazy idea. After seeing Shobe walk away. Avril opened the bag and ran to the bow excitedly. Captain. 150 pearls. Ho 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 ho. 150 pearls. Rain was very excited. He doesn't need to fix the ship anymore. Go to buy materials quickly and replace the new ship. 34. Evolve. New weapon. Evolve. Rain gave an order, and the system quickly got busy in a deserted sea. Many people stood on the boat and watched with anticipation as the materials moved on their own. Gee, look at this keel. This must be 13 or 14 meters. I'm afraid this boat will not be smaller than Biao's. Wow, the wood polishing is done so quickly. The bottom is so high. This may be more than three meters. And it's three layers. There's a regular bow and stern. Rain was depressed. This should have been something he should have done. Now Avril and the four of them, plus a dog, were more excited than he was. Now there was a bit of nothing left for him to do. The new ship was finished being built twenty minutes later. After a quick transfer of consciousness and supplies, Rain took a look at the little broken boat. This body was the one that had been with him the longest for several months. The small boat that was exquisite at first had become scarred and bruised. Good job brother, thanks for always being so giving. Rain said then saw the system recycled the double layered wooden plank boat. Also, the old does not go, the new does not come. The overall shape of the new ship was different from the previous one. The length reached 12 meters and the width increased to 3 meters. The side panels were raised, 
and the hull's curvature became smaller. There were two wooden steps between the bow and stern and the belly of the ship. In addition, the cabin became more spacious, the hull became higher, and the bow had an additional metal spike than before. Not only the bow spike was metal, the bow part of the hull and the side of the ship's important connection position were all metal reinforced fixed. The 100 kilograms of iron may have been used in these places. There are cabins in here. Terry lifted the concealed door on the ship's deck captain. There are two levels inside. The upper level can be used as a storage compartment. Rain now cannot care to see what the difference was. He hurriedly opened the information panel to check. The system immediately responded, and the data of the new ship appeared. Host Rain, Vessel, Small and Medium-Sized Three-Tier Iron-Headed Plank Ship, Top-Level Plank Ship, Cabin 2, Crew Cabin 1, Storage Cabin, Crew Size 6, Assignable Positions, Open for Details, Ship Speed 8 Knots Maximum, Open for Details, Combat Power 63.1, can be viewed in the crew information and weapon system. Load capacity, 584.4 slash 9000 kg, open for details. Evolution point, 0.4 slash 1000 units of wood, 0 slash 300 kg of iron, 28 slash 200 kg of textile fiber. The new ship has an extra storage compartment, which was good news for Rain. Now he needed more materials, some of which can be purchased and stocked here first. In addition, the load capacity has tripled to 9 tons. This was very important for Rain who intended to continue to run transportation. One more crew member? How come I didn't know that? And the combat power has been directly increased by 45.1. Who is so fierce? Rain opened the crew information in a hurry. He had an extra crew member. But this one's combat power had reached a new low of 0.1. This guy is 0.1 of 63.1. Rain could not help but look at the little booty. The guy probably looked at the sea and sky with a look of fascination. The sky is my home. You try your best. Rain shook his head. The guy was still living in his world. Best to ignore him for a while, then where is the extra combat power? By the way, check the weapon system. Weapon name, bow bottom wooden spike. Attack power 10. Number of weapons 1. This was originally there. But underneath the wooden spikes, a new weapon appeared. Weapon name, iron battering ram. Attack power 30. Number of weapons 1. Weapon usage. Hit the side of the enemy ship with the ramming horn, which can make the enemy ship break. Effective against wooden ships. Effective against G1 level sea monsters. It cannot be fired due to the weight being too large. It is called battering ram. Rain was quite excited to look at the metal spike on the bow of his ship. The ramming horn was used to strike the enemy. In the cold weapon era, ships often collide in naval battles. Not bad, not bad. Wooden spikes can be fired. The ramming horn can be head on hard. I'm stronger than before. What was even more surprising was another piece of equipment, after the battering horn. Equipment name, iron reinforced hull. Defense power 10. Equipment description, increase the hull defense. In the process of ship ramming or being hit, protect the hull while increasing the performance of hull water release. Holy shit, equipment? Rain found a new world. Ha 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 ha, defense. Yes, defense is also a kind of combat power. Just now I didn't pay attention to C, so it turns out that the new attribute of defense power is added. With the extra 45.1 points of combat power, Rain has found 40. Precisely 40.1. The remaining 5 points. Rain has thought of it. These 5 points were necessarily from his excellent crew. Open Arson's information panel. Sure enough, Arson's current combat power was 10. Arson's mutation type and stage had not changed but the mutation level and ability had further increased. Mutation level, 5 out of 10, open for details. Mutation ability, underwater transformation, currently 50%. After transforming, the enhancement limit is 50%. Combat power, 10, real time. Arson's combat power without transformation has already reached the combat power of 5 adult males. If Arson transforms underwater, her attributes will increase by 50% and her combat power can reach 15. Rain took a deep breath. Arson is too strong. After checking the weapon system, Rain rechecked the power system. The power system changed from the original four hand cranked propellers to the current four pedal propellers. There were four foot pedals used for foot pedaling at the stern. People say that the arm can't twist the thigh. Although this power unit was still a manual power system, the limit speed has been two knots higher than before. Rain's maximum ship speed had reached that of an average merchant ship. After a double check, Rain exhaled a long breath, 
and a row of bubbles appeared on the bow. With this evolution, Rain felt that he had become too much stronger. All aspects of the data to improve, especially the combat power increased substantially. With the new iron battering ram and iron reinforced hull, the bottom of the ship leaks also got solved together. Moreover, the growth of arson was also a surprise. In addition, the next level needed to use textile fiber, which made Rain cannot help but think of an evolutionary possibility. Perhaps he will complete a qualitative change to the next level. White, this guy actually has not evolved. I don't know how it mixed into the newbie gift bag. Rain can't help but think of another crew member. The white just knows to bear his teeth and fierce people, and now mixed with show quite familiar. Never mind, don't worry about white. After wandering outside for a while, Rain returned to the Morgan trading market with his crew. When they were still some distance from the market, they saw many boats gathered around the place. The people on those boats all looked very excited. Eh? What are they doing? Avril looked over there strangely. Terry ran over and also saw the scene. He thought about it and said, Captain, we go to Golwell first to take the task and then ask for news. 35. Treasure Map Since the blockade of the Mississippi Trading Market route, Morgan Trading Market has seen a sharp decline in missions. Rain quickly swam near the mission point, and his arrival immediately drew the attention of the surrounding ships. Huh, it's Captain Avril. Why did she change ships again? It seems to say that LT, Shobe and Hades gave a sum of pearls to them. It seems that they got a lot of shares. Don't be greedy. You also can blind the Octopus Emperor's eye if you have the ability. Hello Captain Avril, an awesome new ship. The captains here stopped staring at Avril's body when they saw her. Now when they see Avril, they politely call out Captain Avril. In addition to LT, Shobe's frequent visits, the ship's legend is enough for others to respect the woman. Avril smiled politely, well, the previous ship broke down and had to replace it. After a few casual words, the ships around the mission point consciously gave way so Avril could stop a little closer. When Golwell saw Avril and the others, he took the initiative to greet them. Avril, you're back. The new ship is very good. Avril smiled and said, thank you. Avril pointed to the crowd gathered over there and asked, Golwell, what's going on over there? It seems a traveling merchant has brought a lot of rare things. Rain looked in that direction. There was a figure covered in a cloak. But the curve of the cloak could tell it was a woman with a very delicate figure. She sells equipment, materials, skill books, and even has an armor that reduces underwater resistance. It seems called Zora or something. But I guess she can't sell anything. These things are rare in human level seas, let alone ours. The crowd stopped paying attention to the merchant after hearing that it was expensive. Terry shouted Golwell, is there any good mission? Goldwell laughed. You guys came back just in time. A treasure map came over here. Are you interested? Treasures are a unique symbol of this era. It was very common. Wealth sometimes becomes a dangerous commodity in this world of the weak and the strong. If you don't have enough strength to protect your wealth, it will only bring disaster. So some people store most of their wealth somewhere, thinking of waiting for other days when they are strong enough to take it out. But after many people hide their treasures, and then there is no more. In this era, shipwreck is too normal. Of course, although wealth may be dangerous goods, no one will hate these dangerous goods. There are too many rumors that a certain fleet of ships became rich overnight after discovering the treasure. These unverifiable legends let people treasure hunting tend to rush, like a drug addiction. Treasure hunting is also very risky. Treasure hunting requires a treasure map, but a treasure map may not be able to find the treasure. It is possible that the map is false, or true. But the time has changed, the crust movement, or by someone first, and so on for a variety of unknown reasons, and the treasure is no longer. In addition, treasure hunting outside is not safe, it may encounter pirate groups, sea monsters, bad weather, or something, and the risk factor is very high. So some people do not search for themselves after getting the treasure map. They will directly consign the sale of the treasure map. Some low-level treasure maps or crippled treasure map value is too low, and no one in the human level see to buy, and they will entrust Morgan trading markets such as a small market to sell. Thus, there is this mission. Rain's knowledge of treasure is not so familiar, but he has an overwhelming obsession with money, so he is already heart-pounding just hearing the words treasure hunting mission. How much is the treasure map? Terry is more knowledgeable and asked. This is cheap, this is a quarter treasure map, but the treasure's location is just on this one. This map only needs 30 pearls. The people around immediately let out a hush. Is the fragmented map worth 30 pearls? The commissioner treats us as fools, HM? That's right. Usually, 
A complete low-grade treasure map is only worth 100 pearls. Boss Goldwell, how much commission do you take to help them sell such useless treasure maps? A quarter of the map, who can find the place? Goldwell, you should slam the map in the owner's face and let them find it themselves. Goldwell glared at these people and said cut the crap. If it was a complete map, would it only sell 30 pearls? Besides, the treasure map shows the approximate location is only 500 nautical miles around us. You can take a stroll. Maybe you'll find it. Mr. Goldwell is fooling people again. We've been here for years. There is no island in a 500 mile radius. It must have sunk to the bottom of the sea, and it's impossible to find it. This time Goldwell did not say anything. He just casually made a perfunctory remark, shut up if you don't buy it. Rain did not say no, nor did say bye. It is natural for such an important decision to be made by the captain. But there are too many people around. Avril cannot directly ask Rain. Uh, Goldwell, can we look at the map first? Avril asked. Yes. Goldwell stood at the edge of the board, stretching his arm to hand over a piece of leather of an unknown kind, looking like it had experienced an unknown amount of wind and sun. Avril took the treasure map, went to the ship's bow, squatted down, and spread it out on the bowed deck. Rain's enthusiasm cooled off when he looked at the map. Sure enough, it is a quarter of the treasure map, so big a piece of skin, but the top is a small piece of painted things. The topography of the above cannot be identified. It can only roughly see that there is an island. The treasure is on the island. This island is also not big. How big can the island have in no man's land? The overall shape does not show where the island is at all. With this map alone, even the person on the treasure island may not be able to recognize it. The treasure map of the owner is very sinister. Even the latitude and longitude lines are not written. Just note down the general area. Presumably, someone may want to rely on his memories with this map. He is confident that he can find the treasure. After all, the treasure map recorded the range of just 500 nautical miles around Morgan's trading market. Only just now, it was said that there is no island around, and looking at the performance of Goldwell, that's true. In other words, the island may now be out of the sea. The search difficulty increased substantially. Just when Rain wanted to give up, the system's voice rang in his head. Detected a copy of a fragmented treasure map. Do you want to scan it? Does the system still have this function? Wait, the system does have a radar. Rain only uses it to warn of danger. But if it can warn of danger within 500 meters of the ocean floor, it can naturally scan the terrain there. The Azure era is only 300 years old. Even if this island sinks, it won't sink below 500 meters, right? Scan. Rain immediately ordered in his brain. Soon, a map appeared in Rain's head. This map Rain had seen, he had shown it when he went to the island with Avril but most of the area was black. However, after a few months of hanging out at Morgan's Exchange, the chart showed more places than before, especially around Morgan's Exchange almost were shown. The location marked on the treasure map has been searched. On the chart, a small red dot appeared. Rain's heart jumped wildly at once. Just that easy to find it? Is this the rhythm of getting rich? 36. A gamble? Wait. Rain suddenly woke up. The treasure map showed the island's location but there was only a big red cross on the map. No indication of the location of the treasure chest. That means even if they arrived at that place had to do a carpet search. But the island was now silent in the sea, and the carpet search was too difficult. No wonder Goldwell could be so generous to show them the treasure map. Rain intends to observe again. Avril held the treasure map pretending to look at it for a while. It was a bit strange to look at it again, so she stood up and returned the treasure map to Goldwell. By the way, Boss Goldwell, you gave me the treasure map just like that. Aren't you afraid that I will remember the location of the hidden treasure? Avril was unexpectedly thinking about this, too, worthy of being Rain's acting captain. Ha ha ha, Captain Avril, you are joking. The treasure map is generally divided into two parts. Here only recorded the general location of the treasure was. To find the hidden treasure's specific location, you need to see this treasure log. This also recorded the traps around the treasure. At the same time, Avril and Rain marveled at Goldwell's old cunning. Well, let's discuss first. After all, I just changed ships. There is not much money on me. Thirty pearls are also a bit expensive, Avril said with a shake of her head. Goldwell's embarrassed smile still said atmospherically, no problem. But Captain Avril, if you want to buy it, you have to do it before it's too late. Don't let someone else buy it then. Okay. After saying that, Avril and the others went back to their clear corner to dock. Now that everyone was at the mission release point, 
and just about no one was here. Avril came to the bow and sat down. Avril and Rain said at the same time, Captain, I think only the idiot would buy that treasure map. Let's buy that chart. The atmosphere was a little awkward. Rain had just said he wanted to buy it, and Avril said that only an idiot would buy it as if it was tailor-made. Ahem, Captain, I didn't mean you. Avril rubbed her nose and said awkwardly. Rain was speechless. Well, Captain, do you want to buy it? Terry and the others also came over. Only White was chasing and playing with the little booty. They sat side by side with Avril. Everyone also leaned together on the bow. Captain, there is no island around the trading market. I used to fish with Armin and Arson, and we never saw an island. Right, Captain, even if you do find the location, it's hard to say whether the treasure is still there or not. Captain, we only have 29 pearls now, and we can't afford it. The crew was united in their opinion. Rain deliberated for a while. He was able to find the location. But Terry was right. Whether there is treasure is another story. Or just go to the treasure location. But the bottom of the sea is still too dangerous with no treasure log. The complex terrain is difficult to search for a comprehensive. Plus there are traps. It's too dangerous. After thinking for a long time, Rain also didn't decide. He asked Terry, This kind of treasure is probably worth how much? Hard to say. But most of these low-level treasures are left by small forces or individuals. They are generally worth no more than 500 pearls. But we can't rule out someone being particularly lucky. Terry said, 500 pearls. Even if there are number 500 pearls, 200 is okay. With 30 pearls bet 200 pearls, hiss. This feeling is similar to gambling. Now we also have nothing to spend money on. Before Rain could finish his sentence, he was immediately countered by the crew. Why not? Captain, you can't tell the cost of food and fuel without being the head of a household, huh? I also want to talk to you. We need to buy a boiler. We can't eat dried fish always in a long voyage, right? Avril immediately said. Now we have foot thrusters, but dad has bad legs. Maybe he can't use the thrusters. It just so happens that I saw another sale of wooden power arms, said Armin. Terry also said the ship lacks some necessary living supplies. Soon to be winter, we may need to add some quilts. Rain instantly felt a headache. It looks like there are quite a lot of places that need to spend money. After thinking for a while, Rain suddenly thought of a question. Since we are so poor, why don't we gamble when we have such a good opportunity? Rain looked at the crew. If we lose, there's nothing to say about this. Let's keep doing the hard work. It should be okay to prepare these things in time for winter. But if we win, all these problems can be solved. But Captain, are you sure you can find the treasure? Arson asked with a frown. I'm sure I can find the treasure, Rain said with certainty, in fact I've already found it. I just need the treasure log to know the mechanism and find the exact location of the treasure. What? Captain, you've already found it? The crowd all looked back in shock at the ship's board. What else? Do you guys think I'm an idiot? Several people's attitudes suddenly changed. Oops, Captain, you should tell us earlier. We just didn't want you to spend money frivolously. Those things to be bought won't cost many pearls. Rain sighed long. I think you all have itchy skin, right? Do you want to go to the sea for a few days? Avril and others spat out their tongues. Rain didn't have time to pay attention to them. He muttered to himself, We're still short of a pearl. Hey, I shouldn't have let you guys go shopping for food in the first place. No, 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 Captain, don't be so ruthless. Avril immediately balked at Rain. Terry thought about it and said, Captain, in my experience, this treasure map consignment price is unlikely to exceed 20 pearls. Goldwell is estimated to have secretly added a lot. Let's wait a few days for no one to buy. He will naturally lower the price. Terry, are you sure? Rain asked. Sure, none of the ships here can explore the seabed. Rest assured, it absolutely can't be sold. Captain, I'll keep an eye on him these days if you are not sure. Two days later, Goldwell was still peddling charts. But unfortunately, people were only concerned about other tasks. At this time, Rain rode over in a leisurely manner. As soon as he saw Avril and the others, Goldwell immediately perked up. Captain Avril, you're here. How about it? Are you interested in that treasure map? Avril stretched her head to look at the side of the transport task and said inadvertently, Oh, we discuss later. We think it is impossible to find. And the price is also so high that we wouldn't buy it. Boss Goldwell, what's a good transport task today? Goldwell was a little disappointed, but it seemed he didn't want to give up yet. Captain Avril, well, can I come to your ship? I have something to discuss with you. Something? Is this a good mission? Avril had a strange look on her face. Uh, well, it's a mission, sort of. Not much time, 
Golwell threw down those guys looking at the mission and ran to Avril's ship. Let's talk in the cabin, Golwell said mysteriously. All this has not eluded Rain's eyes, with his years of shopping experience to see. With his crew's brain, the Godwell will be cut a high price as if cut off a layer of skin. Too cruel. Rain could not help but feel some sympathy for Golwell. 37. Undersea Treasure Hunt Not long after, when Golwell came out, he almost cried out, No, I... I'd rather not sell it. Terry, who came out right after him, pushed Goldwell, Boss Goldwell, your map is almost like rotting in your hands. It's better to earn less than to lose money. The deal has already been struck. There is no backtracking, Mr. Goldwell. Business is about integrity, huh? Avril said with a serious face. Rain sympathetically watched Goldwell leave. This fatty did not escape the clutches of these demons. Now that they had the stuff, Avril and the others took the boat to the corner and immediately conferred. You guys, how much did you pay for it? I see that Goldwell is crying. Rain asked. Twenty pearls. Avril mischievously squeezed her eyebrows toward the bow. Boss Goldwell said the consigner wants twenty pearls. He had a hard time cutting it down to nineteen pearls. Holy shit, you guys are also too inhumane. Rain said cut the profit to one pearl. Are you demons? It's also not easy to yell for days. But nice job. Hey, it's all learned from the captain, Arson said with a smile. Rain smiled a little stiffly. Now the treasure map and treasure journal were in hand. The day, they spent a whopping five pearls, purchased two sets of wooden robotic arms and a few ropes, and then set off. Some people looked at the boat as they left the port in amazement. No way. Did they buy the treasure map? Rich fools. Impossible to find. I can put my words here. I will immediately run naked three times in the trading market if they can find the treasure. Uh, no one will make such a stupid bet with you. I thought they were very powerful. Now I think their previous deeds may be just a coincidence. These words did not reach the ears of Rain's crew. All they thought about at this point was the treasure. The mechanical arm is not the kind of automated machine but can be shaken by the arm to achieve the effect of saving physical strength and changing the direction of the force. Terry can use this mechanical arm to simulate the action of the foot pedal so that he cannot use the foot pedal. This was also very expensive. The original price was three pearls. Finally, Avril bought two with five pearls. Rain's system does not have a way to manufacture a mechanical arm, so he could only buy two first, one for Terry to use. Others who are tired of pedaling can also use the other one. Five days later, Rain and the others had arrived near the location of the hidden treasure. Soon after, the radars showed they had reached the top of the map island. Sure enough, it sunk. Rain looked at the bottom of the sea. Since the bottom of many islands had been submerged in the ocean floor for years, Making their geology constantly changing, the island could sink even today. Of course, there is also the possibility of a new island rising somewhere in the shallows. This island is unfortunate. At this time, it has been completely submerged in seawater, about 200 meters. Rain doesn't know when the owner of the treasure drew the map. Rain scanned the island again according to the treasure log. Finally, he determined the exact location of the treasure and drove to the treasure directly above it. Arson, the location is below here. Do you remember those traps? Be careful, Rain said. You guys tie this rope to Arson. I will notify you in time if there is an accident and pull Arson up. Avril and the others followed Rain's plan and tied the rope around Arson's waist while Arson took off her jacket and pants. Captain, don't worry. I remembered all the traps. Wait for my good news. After saying that, Arson dived into the water. The others lie on the side panel of the boat and look at it for a while. Then they take out the nets and spread them out to pretend to be a fishing boat fishing here. Rain kept an eye on the bottom. As soon as Arson got into the water, she transformed and grew fins next to her arms and calves, diving down quickly. After a while, Rain's vision was also difficult to see, and he immediately began to focus on the radar. On the radar, a small dot is approaching the previously marked location of the treasure. Ten minutes, twenty minutes, half an hour. The boat had been quiet now. Terry was pretending to pull the nets. Avril, Armin, and White were sitting on the boat deck, each nervous now. Arson had never dived this deep before, and she had to find the treasure while coping with the traps. All of their eyes would look at the rope from time to time. They were afraid that something would happen, and they didn't notice. Rain is also very nervous now. Forty minutes have passed. Half an hour ago, the radar showed Arson had overlapped with the treasure's location, but Arson had not yet come up and Arson hadn't pulled the rope either. Now they just had to wait. A whole hour. Rain intended to have people pull Arson up, 
Suddenly, the rope tied to the side of the boat moved. Armin and Avril almost jumped up. The two rushed to the side of the boat and saw the rope shake. They rushed to pull the rope. So heavy. Captain, is that arson down there? Avril couldn't help but ask. Arson is also floating up. You guys keep pulling, Rain said. Terry saw the two girls pulling hard, and he also came to help. White also bit the end of the rope and desperately pulled back. After a few minutes, Rain saw the bottom of the sea. Arson had tied the rope to a large box, and she was helping to push it up. Arson and the treasure were there. There is a treasure. Rain got excited all of a sudden. With a crash of water, Arson and a rusty iron box surfaced simultaneously. Arson. Arson looked a little tired. She gasped for breath and said, This box is too heavy. It took a lot of effort to tie it. You throw another rope. I'll reinforce it, and then pull. With great difficulty, the crowd pulled up the big box. Rain's heart was excited. Such a heavy box. They will get rich if it is a box full of pearls. Arson also boarded the ship, and now was all around the iron box. The iron box has grown around the rust. There are some water plants, coral, and conch sucked in the top. The front of the iron box has a large lock. It cannot open temporarily. Captain, we don't have the tools, Avril said with difficulty. Rain immediately opened the system. In the Get Materials menu, Rain quickly found Harvest this time. Iron 50 kilograms, unknown item 200 kilograms. Can't you just scan what's inside? Rain was a little disappointed. The treasure is right in front of me, but I can't open it. It's too torturous. Unintentionally, Rain glanced down, and he found a magical thing. Craftable item, 18. Iron ingot, 50 slash 1 kg, a common resource for building ships. Eh? How about crafting 50 iron ingots? Rain's words fell, and the iron box was quickly dismembered, followed by a scream from Avril. The box gushed a large amount of seawater, and a crab ran away from Armin's feet in a flash. Along with the scattering of seawater is a large number of pearls. Wow 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 it's pearls. How many pearls are these? But the treasure seemed to be more than that. And finally, there was a round thing that landed heavily on the deck. Terry looked blankly at the suddenly scattered pile. He held his forehead and stuttered this is, the gift of Poseidon? Poseidon's gift? What the hell? Rain had a boat of confusion. 38. Poseidon's gift. Terry you're saying this is the gift of Poseidon? Avril, Armin, and Arson all froze as well. Rain felt isolated again. These guys all seemed to know about Poseidon's gift, and only he, the captain of them, thought it looked like seaweed wrapped into a ball. Asking them is obviously not as wise as asking the system. Rain began to check the items in the system. The new items obtained from this salvage were clearly marked on the menu. Obtained item, 344 white pearls. Obtained item, 1 pike crab. Rain had a little speechless. Can you skip the pike crab in this situation? Obtained item, gift of sea god open for details. Rain hurriedly looked for details. The item name, Sea God Fruit. The Sea God Fruit is also known as the genetic fruit that promotes mutation, the gift slash fruit of Poseidon, etc. It is produced from the Sea God Tree. Every time the sun breaks out, high-intensity sunspot activity will generate variation in some underwater trees in the body. When the mutant trees run out of life, they can bear a Sea God Fruit. As the Sea God Trees wither, the fruit will fall off the tree and be lost. It must happen to benign mutation. The type of mutation is related to the original sea god tree type and the mutation situation. Still, since the sea god tree withers, after it bears fruit, it is basically impossible to tell. Rain was shocked now. In other words, if you eat this, you can become a mutant. Judging from the status and ability of the mutants, the value of this fruit is simply too huge. No wonder Terry was dumbfounded after seeing this thing. Now even Avril and Armin are also infected as if they were standing there dumbfounded, looking at the ball with fascination. At this time, Terry suddenly bent down and picked up the Poseidon fruit. Rain doesn't know if the Poseidon fruit is this big or if this one is especially big. Terry felt like holding a watermelon when he held it in his arms. Rain frowned slightly. Terry is, as the saying goes, the heart of beware someone cannot be absent. Although they have shared several difficulties, even the good brothers may turn their faces, especially in the face of such valuable treasures. People's hearts are hard to measure. If the worst happens that Terry's family wanted to rob, and Rain would have no way. Terry, what are you doing? Avril looked at Terry blankly, with some confusion in her eyes. Terry looked at Avril and said strangely, Do you intend to continue showing here? If others see it, they will grab it. Hurry up and hide it first. After saying that, 
Terry looked around, finally lifted the concealed door on the deck, and carefully put the sea god fruit into the inner cabin. Captain, you watch out, don't lose it. If it is lost, you will have full regret. Rain, at this time, really has some shame, but more as a relief. These people on board are trustworthy partners. He should not go to doubt Terry. After putting the sea god fruit, the crew picks up pearls and puts them together. 128,129, 344. Avril counted while putting the pearls into her small bags. Wow, Captain, we're rich. 344 pearls. Terry looked around at the sea. No other ships. He smiled compared to the Poseidon fruit. This pearl is nothing. Rain immediately got excited and asked, Terry, how much can the Poseidon fruit be sold for? At least this much. Terry put up five fingers. Five thousand? Rain asked. Five thousand? Captain, you may still underestimate the importance of the mutant. For those humans who are not mutants, the Poseidon fruit can make them soar in one day. And some big families will also buy the Poseidon fruit if they have no mutants. Once this thing enters the auction house, it is the most fiercely contested commodity in the whole auction. Therefore, its value will not be less than 500,000 white pearls. Five, 500,000. Rain was shocked. For him now, this is undoubtedly a huge amount of money that is too huge to imagine. More than that, the sea monster will eat a huge portion of the Poseidon fruit, and very few of them can be found by humans. Terry added, half a million white pearls. If they sold this sea god fruit, Rain didn't know how many levels he would go up. Holy shit, I'm really getting rich this time. Then where should I sell it? Rain asked eagerly. Captain, if you want to sell it, just go to the auction house in the human class area. Terry thought about it and added, but Captain, I advise you better not sell the pearl we can earn slowly. But the sea god fruit is too rare. I guess this treasure was from a long time ago, when the land did not sink so deep now. At that time, finding the sea god fruit was not difficult. Now those mutated trees are basically in the deep sea. If not a powerful fleet, it is difficult to go deep, plus so many strange things in the sea. Most sea god fruit was eaten by them. We are lucky this time to find in the treasure chest, if normal circumstances, there is no way to encounter. Of course, Captain, no matter what you decide, we listen to you and we'd better hurry back to the ship. It would be a problem to keep stopping here and encounter pirate groups or sea monsters. Rain absentmindedly responded and asked the crew to drive the ship back. All the way, Rain was thinking about Terry's words. What Terry said also made sense. Half a million pearls were astronomical, but not so much that he couldn't earn it, and as he continued to evolve, even if he just engaged in transportation, he would earn more and more in the future, plus other income. In short, he can earn it in the future. But a mutant crew is not the same. The major powers are frantically fighting for mutants. From the performance of Shobe, Rain also can see something. Even Navy lieutenants have to pull the strings, which shows how important the mutant is. Rain can see Arson's growth with his own eyes. And that time of killing the deep sea octopus emperor, Shobe, and Hades's performance is still imprinted in Rain's mind until now. That was absolute strength beyond his understanding of human capabilities. Finally, Rain and his crew returned with a bit heavy expressions. The people around them couldn't help but whisper. Looking at their downcast faces, I knew it would end up like this. The thirty pearls were thrown into the sea just like this. I think they don't have brains. Just think about it, and know that there can't be such a good thing. Goldwell will find it himself long ago if it's easy to find. Late at night, only Dreadnought and the charge had lights and sounds. They were still repairing their ships. At this time... Avril's ship quietly sailed out of the harbor. After being out of sight of others, the crew gathered around the bow, except for White, who was lying around with nothing to do, and Little Booty, who had gone to bed early. Rain finally spoke up. I've decided this Poseidon fruit. I won't sell. 39. Team. This way, let's vote on who eats this Poseidon fruit. Besides Arson, you guys pick one of Terry, Armin, and Avril, Rain said. The Poseidon fruit was so precious that Rain could imagine that the guys were preoccupied because they were under too much pressure. Of course, they might be thinking about more. For ordinary people, the sea god fruit is enough treasure to change their fate if the captain did not sell the sea god fruit. Who will the fruit be distributed to? The crew looked at each other, and none of them said anything. The atmosphere was a little strange, perhaps because of suspicion, but Rain did not believe that his crew would be like this. They have experienced life and death together. Well, since none of you are talking, fine, everyone vote anonymously. Avril, go get four pieces of the same paper, 
one for each person, and write it down. The crew dawdled and dispersed. The voting time was shorter than Rain thought. Avro reached the bow with four sheets of paper. Captain, it's all written. Open it up, and I'll read it out. Avril was a little nervous for some reason but opened the first chapter of the note anyway. Avril. Good, next. Rain read out the name on the first sheet of paper, and at the same time, he noticed Avril froze for a moment. This girl seemed to have something in mind. Second one, Avril. Next. Avril froze for a while this time. She looked at Terry and the others while Terry, Arson, and Armin looked at Avril with a smile. Avril. The result of the third one also came out, and it was still Avril. This time. Avril's eyes were instantly red, and two lines of tears couldn't stop flowing down. She lowered her head and looked at the last piece of paper. Everyone, thank you. I, three of the four chose Avril. The last vote did not matter. Armin came over and hugged Avril, Sister Avril, although my Abba has a bad leg and maybe the Poseidon fruit can cure him. We all know that you are the one who needs this Poseidon fruit the most. Terry laughed. Avril, I am also so old that it doesn't matter whether my legs are good or not. Besides, our family has already produced an arson. This Poseidon fruit should be rightfully yours to eat. Arson also came over with Armin, hugging the crying Avril. Avril, we go together when we find your enemies, okay? Avril agreed to raise her head, looked at Arson, crying sadder. Surprisingly, Rain's keyvote seems to be useless. But this is good. Everyone did not let him down. So why did they make the atmosphere so mysterious before? At night, the boat was floating quietly on the sea. The crew was basically asleep. Only Avril leaned on the bow, looking at the stars in the sky. Captain, thank you. I didn't expect you to keep Poseidon fruit. Avril's head leaned on the side panel of the ship, arms hugging legs. The night sea breeze is a little cold. I thought investing in the crew would be more profitable. Rain said honestly, but I warn you, in the future, even if you get your revenge, you must follow me. I don't want to let my 500,000 run away. Avril couldn't help but laugh, Captain. When you saved me, I said I would always follow you, even if I didn't get the Poseidon fruit today. Rain did remember Avril's words. Avril let out a long sigh. She spread her palm, a note in her hand, the one left over from the daytime vote. Captain, am I being selfish? Eh? Rain wondered. Avril slowly opened the slip of paper. Rain saw that it was still Avril. In other words, Avril voted for herself. Rain immediately understood the meaning of Avril's words. Terry and the others were thinking of me and I felt. I was really selfish. The sea breeze blew by, raising Avril's long hair, the hair gently caressing the bow. Although Rain could not see Avril's expression at this time, he could feel Avril's deep self-blame. Avril. Rain's voice became calm. Did you all forget I have a vote? Avril looked over sideways, wondering why Rain suddenly mentioned this point. Whatever it turns out, my choice also is you, Rain said with certainty. For a moment, Avril's eyes became blurred. Captain. Do not look at me so fondly. Even if you find your enemies, I may not help you. I never do any dangerous attempts. Avril didn't say anything else, just leaned against the ship's bow, with a strong sense of satisfaction on her face. After eating the sea god fruit, the body will undergo more drastic changes, which will last for some time. It is obviously not appropriate to eat it on the Morgan trading market, so Rain decided to head to the island he passed by before, where the resources are gone. But because of that, it should be safer. Five days later Rain and his crew passed through the reef area and arrived at the most secluded island. Returning to the island again, Rain was no longer a small plank boat of two or three meters long. Now, he was twelve meters long. There are storms here from time to time, so fewer people come. Arson, you accompany Avril here to eat Poseidon fruit. We go to the sea to catch some fish. She may have a large meal after that. White, you just on the shore to watch out. Avril, Arson and White got off the boat with the Poseidon fruit. Terry and Armin stayed on the boat, and fished just a short distance out to sea. Terry skillfully spread the nets, then sat bored on the boat board. Captain, is this island you found? It was recorded on Avril's grandpa's chart, Rain said. Armin also came over to chat, Captain, this island is a little bit remote, but the surrounding reef area is a good natural barrier. If built, it can be used as a place to live. I'm afraid not. The storms here are frequent and particularly fierce. It's not safe to live here. Ah, uh, Captain, have you seen the storms here? That's for sure, I tell you, that time. Rain was about to tell the crew a good story about the captain's legendary experience. Suddenly, Rain received a warning from the system. Southwest 202 degrees, 1000 meters position, found three pirate ships are heading this way. 
Before he had time to show off, the bad news came. Shit, how can anyone come to this shithole? Rain immediately exclaimed, Terry Armin, a pirate group is coming. 40. Iron Anchor Pirates. The other side seemed to be moving fast. Terry and Armin also saw the three ships. Captain, they're coming straight at us. Terry hurriedly ran with Armin to the stern thruster. Captain, get back to the island. Rain glanced at the island. Avril and Arson were so hidden that they couldn't be spotted directly from the surface. And now the pirates are watching themselves. If they return at this time, it may reveal the two girls' location. No, we can't. Terry Armin, sail the boat, quickly. Rain tried to calm himself down. Let's lure them away first. Terry operated two power arms by himself, and Armin footed one, which got the ship up to six knots. Only, their ship's speed still couldn't compare with the pirate ships. Though those three ships were not very big, all had a ship's speed of about ten knots. Damn, sooner or later they would be caught up. Rain looked at the approaching pirate ships from the stern of the ship. These three pirate ships are sailing ships. The largest one is about fifteen meters long, with three masts on board. The other two are smaller but also three-masted sailing ships. The side of the three ships was blackened gun ports. These three ships are equipped with artillery. At the top of the masts of the three pirate ships, they are fluttering three skull flags, which is the symbol of pirates. But their skulls are different from ordinary skulls. Below the skulls, the two bones that should have been crossed are drawn in the shape of two anchors. Captain, it's the Iron Anchor Pirates, Armin exclaimed. Iron Anchor Pirates? Rain only knew of the wild wine pirates on the Navy's wanted list. Captain, I usually like to read these pieces of information on the sea. The Iron Anchor Pirates are often active in the nearby waters. They used to have 13 ships at their most powerful, including a G-class warship, but then they were badly hit by the bounty fleet. Only the captain ran away with a few people and three ships. Their captain's name is Chak, and he is also a mutant, biological mutation, but I don't know what type. Rain drew a breath of cold air. Not to mention the three ships, this Captain Chike actually is also a mutant. He had never fought a mutant before. Thinking about Shobe and Hades' power made his legs go weak. Holy shit, quick, faster. Terry and Armin are already doing their best, but they are only two people, after all. The power system has no advantage. The gap between the two sides is still closing. Just running was not working. Rain tried to calm himself down. What to do? How to do? They can't run away, and even if they fight, they definitely can't win. Pirates, if they were caught, they would definitely not end up well. At that moment, the main ship behind them was getting closer and closer. At the bow of the main ship, a man wore a black pirate hat, dressed in a scruffy manner with one foot on the bow. He put down the binoculars in his hand, turned back to his crew and laughed. Ha 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 ha, brothers, there are women. A cheer erupted from the boat. Oh. I haven't seen women for three years, ha 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 ha. Captain, can we all enjoy ourselves this time? Killing men, women and ships they. Captain, this time we're rich. Chuck, with a smile on his face and his hands behind his back. Fuck, I heard that the island had been washed all over again. I didn't expect to encounter this kind of good thing. This boat is very good huh, although a little smaller, but almost brand new. Look at that bump corner, nice metal reinforced hull. It can be incorporated into my team after installing a power system. Thinking of this, Chike is even more excited mood. Front ship, do not run. Anyway, you cannot run away. Ain't you too tired of driving such a big boat? Chike shouted. Rain felt a chill run down his back. They were close enough to hear each other directly. Hey, I am calling you guys. Really bad brain to fish here. Stop. I want to talk to you. Rain wanted to say, fuck you. Do you think I'm stupid enough to stop and get caught by you? If you don't stop the boat, we're going to fire, Chai threatened. Rain didn't care what the guy said. He just wanted to run anyway. Rain anxiously said to Terry and Armin, Quick, turn into the reef area. Rain is a not-so-small ship and can't navigate the reef as agilely as before. But for now, he has no choice but to gamble. Hey, 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 don't stupid. The front is the reef area. How sad to destroy the little boat, Chai shouted in the back. Seeing Rain and the others did not listen to him. He turned back to the crew and said, Speed up, prepare to get on the lasso. A group of bare-chested men with fierce faces and lewd smiles. Captain, don't worry, I'll get that woman. Chike shouted angrily, Nonsense, that woman can't escape. I want the ship. Try not to break that ship. We would revive our majesty. Now the most missing thing is the ship. Yes, yes, boss. And, Chike added, don't hurt that woman. 
I have not tasted fresh woman for a long time. The crowd immediately grinned mouth sighs. The boss still thinks about that woman. The main ship of the Iron Anchor Pirates has the fastest speed. In order to catch up with rain, the other two ships left a distance gradually. On deck, 23 sailors are flinging the iron hooks in their hands. These iron hooks are tied to the rope. They can climb over with the rope as long as the hooked rain hull. On board only the two unarmed fishermen. The result was undoubtedly lopsided looting and killing. Arson watched Avro carefully open the Poseidon fruit in a low-lying part of the island. The fruit has several layers, like peeling an onion. It was hard to peel off the outer skin, and the real fruit inside was only the size of a papaya. Arson's eyes widened. Avril, how is this fruit golden? I've never heard of a golden Poseidon fruit before. Avril shook her head. I've never heard either. The two women were astonished, but White looked at the fruit unimpressed. Come on, eat it. Arson said, don't let the captain and the others wait. Mmm. Avril nodded, picked up the fruit, and took a bite. Avril ate the whole sea god fruit in a short time, and her expression was a bit hard to bear. Arson immediately held Avril nervously. Avril, what's wrong? When do you feel uncomfortable? Well, a little full. After saying that, the two women laughed together. Yeah, such a big sea god fruit. Eating it must swell the stomach. While the two were joking, Avril suddenly covered her stomach, and the smile on her face disappeared suddenly, looking a bit painful. Bloating again? Arson said with a smile. But this time, Avril didn't smile anymore. Beads of sweat began to seep from her forehead, and her expression became increasingly uncomfortable. She could feel that the cells inside her body were undergoing some unknown change. 41. Another crazy plan. Avril. Arson was anxious all of a sudden. This time Avril did not joke with her. She stood up at once to go to the captain. As soon as she stood up, she saw a frightening scene. On the sea, four ships speed fast. Three ships flying the flag of the pirate group and close behind Rain. Especially the largest of the main ship. The bow is only a dozen meters from Rain's stern. The pirate crew was waving the iron hooks in their hands, ready to get out the hooks. Judging from Rain's route of escape, they run away to the reef area desperately. But this is obviously not a good idea. The reef is not their home. Barging into the reef area may hit the reef. What happened? Arson suddenly panicked. Why there are pirates? Over there, the captain and his crew were in danger. While over here, Avril's body was undergoing a violent mutation and was in pain. What should I do? What can I do? Arson was so anxious, but she was at her wit's end. No, I can't mess myself. Last time because I wasn't calm enough almost got everyone killed. The captain is calm every time when he encounters danger. As a member of the ship, I must be calm. This is when they need me the most. This time I will not let everyone down again. Arson tried to take several deep breaths, calming some emotions slightly. The captain has been sailing into the distance. He must be trying to lure away those pirates. There were no other ships on the sea and no ships docked around the pirates, which meant that the pirates hadn't found anyone else on the island. Now they were located in a low-lying position on the island. If they didn't look closely, it would not visible Avril. In this case, the boat was more dangerous than the island. After calming down, Arson quickly cleared her mind. She glanced at Avril. Although still worried, now she had to make a decision. Why, they met the pirate group. I am gonna help them now. You look after Avril here. They may not find us here yet. You must not run around, understand? After admonishing White, Arson touched Avril's wet forehead. Avril, you'll be fine. After saying that, Arson gritted her teeth and quickly rushed to the beach. A fish leaps into the sea. Captain, father, sister, wait for me. At the bottom of the sea, Arson quickly transformed and shuttled away at a breakneck speed. Rain made a sharp turn, dodged a few lassos behind him, and dashed into the reef area. Terry Arman, hold on. Rain was also very nervous. Those iron hook lassos were almost thrown to the ship just now. The opposing main ship saw Rain enter the reef area and finally stopped. Chike stood at the bow of the ship. His face was a bit unsightly. Fuck, what are you fucking doing? Are you guys aiming with your ass? Captain, there is no one on that boat to hold the rudder, but it actually turns by itself. Strange. A big man with a bare chest scratched his head, a face of confusion. Chike also saw that. Usually, if his men were serious, they would hook it. But that boat actually inexplicably turned in the absence of preparation. Who would have thought it? This boat is a bit weird. Chike said to himself, Bobby, let two small boats in. I don't believe he can escape under my eyes. Yes, Captain. And Captain, can we fire? Chike thought about it and said, if you can't get him, fire. Aye, Captain. 
The two small boats sailed into the reef area and approached Rain. Terry and Armin had no strength left in their arms by this time. Armin was pushing and pedaling while Terry could only crank a power arm with arms. Their boat's speed was only three knots. The two boats were not much faster but still faster than Rain, splitting up and coming towards Rain. Rain had already noticed Terry and Armin's situation. They had used almost all their strength to get him into the reef area under such a tense situation. And now they were close to their limit. They were struggling to push the boat with just an instinct to survive. Rain now had three means of saving himself. Wooden spikes, ram horns, and metal reinforced hull. But the other side has artillery. If they rushed straight, Rain was afraid they would be blown up before arriving. Ten points of defense in front of the artillery are completely inadequate. Rain's heart was not willing. He had evolved after all the trouble from the raft to this today. He had a hard time finding four partners he could trust. At this moment, Rain suddenly found someone knocking on his ass. To be precise, knocking his stern. Arson? He was so focused on the enemy ship that he didn't notice Arson approaching him from under the water. Arson hid in the stern of the boat, showing her head, and said against the stern, Captain, I'm here. I know, Rain answered in no time. Arson was a bit confused. Isn't the captain usually only appearing in the bow? But now was not the time to be confused. Arson immediately gave up the strange idea and whispered, Captain, is there a way? Arson's sudden appearance made Rain's already desperate heart come alive again at once, and his brain go to great lengths to begin to work. Now their situation was very bad, but there was also good news. The main ship did not enter the reef area. If they could put these two small ships. Of course, these two small ships were also bigger than Rain just relatively small compared to the main ship. If they can get it done, they might have a chance. Only they were both equipped with guns, and those two ships were coming in a pack. The distance between each other was about 30 or 40 meters, and they can cover each other. How can Rain sink two ships at the same time? Wait, 30 or 40 meters. This distance seems to be exactly within the range of the wooden spikes. Rain instantly realized, they have the guns. I have the spikes, plus the ramming horn, there might be a chance. He quickly drew up a plan and told it to Arson. Arson was shocked when she heard, Captain, do you have a less crazy plan? Nonsense. I will never do that if there is another way. Now we are at a total disadvantage. How can we win if we don't fight for our lives? Arson could only nod. All right. Rain said, when we're 20 meters away, you push the boat, okay? We must catch them off guard. Okay. With that said, Arson sank back into the bottom of the boat. Terry Armin, don't act abnormally. Arson is below us. Do you still have strength now? Rain was at the stern of the boat, asked the two in a whisper. They probably didn't know Arson was back yet. The two stared at once. Arson is back. Then, they still had a chance of survival. The two tried to keep their original expressions to avoid others seeing them as abnormal. Captain, this time is a matter of life and death. Even if no strength, we have to hold our strength. Since Arson is back, we can still charge again. Terry said, and good, now y'all pretend to surrender, then drive the boat over, not to the middle, drive to the side of any random boat, I will accelerate at the distance of 20 meters, and you also sprint with all your strength, captain are you going to melee, now there is no other choice, life or death in one go, Terry took a deep breath, okay, we know, 42, fierce battle, when Terry was ready, he took a deep breath, stood up, walked to the ship's bow, and adjusted the direction, Rain had been adjusting the boat's direction to avoid hitting the rocks. Now he needed to square up to one of the pirate ships. Do not chase. We surrender, Terry shouted. The captain of the two ships looks at each other with a smile from a distance. You should have done that early. Let me chase so hard. Hey, hurry up and bring the ship over. Yes, yes. Terry feigned obedience. He followed Rain's previous instructions, turned the ship around a big turn, and drove to the outside of one of the pirate ships. That captain kept his eyes on Terry and frowned when he saw Rain was sailing on the right of his ship. Rain has a metal ramming horn. If the ship is so rammed over, afraid their ship can't take it. Hey, drive slower. Yes, yes. We are only two people. And this is a reef area, so we can't drive fast. Terry also explained to dispel the other party's concerns. At this moment, the captain of the other boat scoffed, Baldy, are you scared? Don't worry. We are here. Shut the fuck up. Baldy could not help but attack. Everyone prepares the hook rope. Wait for them to get close and get straight on board. More than 20 people took hook rope, leaping to try. Ha 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 ha. Go and taste that woman well first. That chick's skin is so white. 
It's rare to see such a tender chick at sea. Terry nervously held the rudder and visually measured the distance between the two sides. 30m, 25m, 22m. At this moment, Terry suddenly rushed to the stern of the boat. While running also shouted Armin, quick. The two quickly accelerated the boat. At the same time, the underwater arson takes a push on the stern. Arson bared her eyes, gritted her teeth, and made all her strength. The boat accelerated violently and rushed towards the other boat. Holy shit, Captain, they, they want to ram us. Captain Baldi's eyes widened. Why did this ship's speed suddenly increase so much? They would have had time to react if it were the original speed. But now, the two ships were about to collide. He hastily roared gunners, blast them. Rain saw a sudden movement of people at the opposite dark muzzle of the gun, and several people quickly adjusted the muzzle while lighting the fuse. Damn it. Come on. The opponent's ship was moving but slow when it first started up. Rain rushed at the opponent regardless of everything. Boom, boom, boom. Three guns went off, and Rain couldn't be bothered to dodge. Rain was facing the enemy ship, which made his target small. But the two sides were so close that all three shells focused on Rain. Two hit the ship's bow, which was fine, as Rain's bow was covered with a lot of metal that could withstand most of the cannon's power. And the bow was only deformed but not pierced. But the last one landed directly on the side of Rain's ship, and the wood splinters flew everywhere, and Rain felt his body tilted to the side severely. The ship's side was damaged, but Rain's speed was not reduced, and he rammed headlong into the enemy ship. The long ramming horn was as powerful as a bull, piercing the opponent's ship straight through the middle for the most part. The huge impact pushed the pirate ship to the side. Damn it. Baldi was hit. The captain looked at the scene in horror on another ship. Did they want to die? Fire the wooden spike. Before the captain could react, a long wooden spike came from the belly of the ship directly through the hull. An unlucky sailor even caught the wooden spike through the chest with a miserable scream. The whole person and the wooden spike flew out a long way. Captain, our ship was penetrated. The hull and the deck are all ruined. The crew came to report in panic. Nonsense, I'm not blind. Quickly find a way to plug the gap. Rain watched the ship gradually crack from the break and sink and he finally breathed a sigh of relief that his plan had worked. Crash the first ship first, using the first ship as cover so the other ship wouldn't dare to fire easily, at which point he would fire his wooden spikes and sink the second one. Rain did sink two ships, but the battle was far from over. At this point, as Rain crashes Captain Baldi's ship, that ship is also sinking fast, and the seamen on board try to jump onto Rain's ship. Armin pulls Arson into the boat. Terry rushed to the boat's bow to swing the oar wanting to drive the pirates who boarded the ship down. Terry and Armin quickly returned to the ship's stern, reversed the propulsion, and poured the ship out. Dad, sis, quick, I can't hold it. Those pirates are desperately running this way to stay alive. If not for Arson's great strength, someone would have boarded the ship. Terry and Armin also made a great effort to pour the boat out. Quick, out of here. There are pirates under the boat. They want to overturn our boat. Rain couldn't care less about revealing his identity and shouted. Arson saw that the hull of rain had been separated from the other side. No one can directly jump into the boat. She jumped into the sea again. Sure enough, seven or eight people are at the bottom of the sea, shaking the hull hard. Asen quickly transformed and fought with the pirates. At the bottom of the sea, Arson's combat power multiplied. Even in the face of seven or eight big men are also easy. She dragged a man's feet, pulling him directly into the sea floor. The man looked back at Arson, saw Arson's horrible appearance, scared even the idea of resistance, desperately swimming upstream. But he was not a match for Arson. After not much time, he was dragged by Arson to the bottom of the sea. The more down the seawater pressure greater, the man's oxygen soon was not enough. He upstream desperately, but Arson directly used an oar hit his head, solved the first, and the following is the second. Arson pulled the second man and fast sank. Until the fifth one was solved, the remaining two or three men knew they were no match for Arson and ran away. Finally, Arson purged the threat of the bottom of the ship. She looked down where five sailors had drowned. Her eyes flashed a strange color, and she gritted her teeth. She returned to the surface without looking back. Arson, get on board. Armin and Terry pulled Arson into the boat in a hurry. Captain, I finished them. Arson breathed heavily. I know, it's just that. The ship stopped quietly, and Rain was a little unsure of what to say. They had destroyed two ships, which had been very difficult, but they were also in a bad way. Terry and Armin had been exhausted, and Arson, 
who had pushed the ship desperately earlier and had entered a vicious battle, was also exhausted, and the side of the ship was heavily damaged. But now, they have not won. They still have one opponent left, the most powerful opponent, opposite, the main ship of the Iron Anchor Pirates was speeding up. The man at the ship's bow with one foot on the huge battering ram at the bow, his eyes filled with strong killing intent. You good, destroyed my two ships. Today I'll skin you, a little mutant. I'll show you what the real mutant is. 43. Chike's power. The crew couldn't help but stand up when they saw the main ship coming at them. Captain? Afraid this was the biggest test they had ever encountered, and at this point, a look of despair was revealed in the crew's eyes. Can't run away? No. Even if there's a ray of hope, never give up. Lie bravely, like a man. Everyone, as long as I still have a breath, I will never give up. Rain suddenly said, we still have this glimmer of hope. We have no reason to give up. Just pirates. He has a ship. I have one too. Just a mutant. We also have arson. So, why should we give up? I said I would take you to conquer this world, and I will do it. Terry Armin Arson, if you don't want Ari to grieve for you, go sail the ship right now. Mom, Armin suddenly thought of that woman, the one who was willing to give everything for them, and if they couldn't live, it would be the greatest harm to her. The three looked at each other, and quickly ran to the stern and started the boat. Rain turned the ship's bow and rammed the horn right into the enemy ship. You're just pirates. Why should I be afraid of you? Everyone, charge. Seeing that the ship in front of him did not escape but turned around and sped towards himself, Chike frowned. Uh? What does this mean? To play with me? According to his previous character, he would come to a hard fight at times like this. But today was different from the past. Two of the only three ships he had were destroyed. If this one were destroyed again, then he would really be finished. Even if they win rain by that time, everyone will have to survive on a deserted island. This is obviously not what he wants to see. Until now, he had not fired his gun, and it was because of this that he wished to preserve this enemy ship. Although Rain's luck is bad, in such places can meet the pirate group, but not so bad. If the other pirate group, he would have been blown into a sieve. Captain, should we turn around and fire? A man shouted, standing behind Chike, asked naively. Chike is also a belly of anger. He's pissed off but cannot fire. Chike turned around to slap the man. Are you fucking brain dead? This boat I must grab myself. Chike said angrily. Give me the clothes. I must do it myself. Chike took his dirty jacket off and thrown to the men. Eyes dead on rain. Remember, do not fire. Wait for me to go to kill those few bitch to feed the fish. The gang of pirates saw the boss would do it himself. Exuberant all of a sudden. Oh boss finally came out himself, you bunch of trash. Wait to die. Boss, boss, those women stay. I have not tried the mutant women. Chike stood on the ship's bow, threw his hat aside, and said coldly, I will keep the women. When the time comes, you treat them well. Oh, hooray, captain. Don't worry, boss. We'll treat those two women well. Rain saw the man standing on the bow of the opposite ship from afar. The guy took an anchor hook launcher from his men, aimed at Rain's bow, and fired a shot. An iron hook tethered to a rope hit the hull directly and pierced through the side of the boat. Satisfied with his shooting accuracy, Chike handed the launcher to his men climbed on the rope, and quickly climbed to rain. Chike's speed was too fast, far beyond the average person's. Between the wobbly ropes, his body always remained stable and climbed over at a very fast speed. What the fuck this speed? Rain exclaimed Terry quick, cut the rope, we turn. Terry rushed to the side of the ship. The rope has a metal wire. It can't be cut off simply. Terry then tried to pull out the iron hook, but the iron hook into the inner cabin, which seemed to have some mechanism, locked firmly. I said don't bother. At this moment, a lazy voice sounded, and then a pair of boots stepped on the rain deck. Chike had already boarded the ship. The previous distance between the two sides was at least 70 to 80 meters, and Chike only used a few seconds. Climbing along the extremely unstable rope but can arrive in such a short time, this Chike's strength is definitely stronger than Arson's. With less weight on the rope, Terry finally could pull out the iron hook. Although it is meaningless to pull out the iron hook at this time. Terry still throws the iron hook into the sea. The captain had said not to give up any glimmer of hope. If they can win, they can avoid other pirates on board, which could have one more chance of survival. Watching Terry throw the iron hook into the sea, Chike's brow locked, could not help but look at Terry in anger, you fucking. I said do not do anything stupid. Terry Armin and Arson leaned together and stared dead at the guy. 
Chike shook his head, fine, anyway, you would die. Why I see with you in general, and you actually destroy two of my ships, tut tut, what a nerve. As he walked over recklessly, Chike said, now then, it's time to teach you a lesson. Arson hurriedly blocked in front of her father and sister, stop. Chike snorted coldly, and in the next second, his figure was already at Arson's side. Who do you think you are? A mutant? Sorry, I'm much stronger than you. When Arson found Chike, she only felt a sharp pain in her belly, and Chike had already smashed his fist hard into Arson's belly. Immediately after that, Arson only felt paralysis all over her body. Her legs went weak, and she fell to her knees. Tut, it seems that your rank is very low. Oh, I forgot to tell you, my mutation from the jellyfish. As long as I touch, or touch me, who can only be obedient to lie on the ground, don't worry, I won't kill you. Do you see so many hungry men on my ship? They all say they have never played with mutant women, just right to satisfy them a little. Arson fell to the ground, unable to move her body. She looked behind her in despair. Father, sister, Terry and Armin had both fallen to the ground in the blink of an eye. Their symptoms are more serious than Arson's, falling to the ground, being unable to move, foaming at the mouth and spasming all over. Chike looked at his fist and shook his head helplessly. Why? Why am I so strong? The loneliness of the strong, no one can always understand. After saying that, Chike grabbed Terry's collar and lifted his whole body. I think you came up with the tactic just now, right? Terry said with difficulty, yes, it was me. Chike nodded, and, good tactics. But unfortunately, there is no more room on my ship, so you only have to die. Terry spits on Chike's face. Chike immediately had angry eyes. A fist blasted out Terry ten meters away, hitting it to the bow steps fiercely. Terry spits a mouthful of blood, leaning on the steps helplessly. Seeing that Chike drew his belt knife and approached step by step, Terry laughed feebly. Captain, take care. I'll go first. 44. Avril's ability. Captain, don't make a sound. You still have a chance to escape. Terry whispered. Rain also knew this, but he really could not hold back a little. Terry was on the ship, but Rain cannot do anything. He, as a captain, watches his crew die on his body, and he did not even dare to say a word. Damn, why do I have to become a ship? Why can't I do anything? At that moment, a voice suddenly sounded in Rain's head. Ding. Rain wanted to pull the system out of his head. Do you realize the situation now? Ding ding ding. Who has time to read your messages at this time? Detected a crew member's body mutation. Do you want to check it? Check. Rain did not hesitate to give the command and quickly open the menu. Name, Avril. Type of mutation. Use the fruit of Poseidon to trigger body evolution. The mutations caused in this way are benign and not contagious. Detailed classification. Auxiliary type of evolution. Mutation stage. First stage. Mutation level. 1 out of 10. Variation description. Evolution is a type of mutation of active acquisition nature, through various ways to obtain some special species ability. Evolution is divided into dynamic evolution and fixed evolution. Dynamic evolution means that the evolved species can continuously devour or otherwise use other species abilities to enhance their abilities continuously. Fixed evolution means that after a one-time acquisition, the ability will not change, and the strength of the ability will increase with the mutation level and stage of the evolution. The target human belongs to the latter category of fixed evolution. Mutation ability the target human can accelerate and decrease the cellular activity and intracellular reaction rate of a unit of individuals for a given time. At the current level, the target human can alter cellular activity by 10% for 10 seconds. Combat power, 1 real time. Rain quickly scanned through this large description and was a bit confused. But when he saw the last line, he finally concluded. The Poseidon fruit Avril took is cheating. Yes, Avril's combat power was doubled. But it doesn't do anything. Now a wooden spike fired out is equivalent to firing 10 Avril. The goddamn fruit. What the hell skill was given? My 500,000 pearls. Thinking about Shob and Hades' unbelievable strength, Rain's heart cries. Even if not as powerful as they are, the same as Chaik is also okay. And even the same as Arson is also fine, but the result. Even if Avril can boost her cell activity by 10%, which is a short time to boost her combat power, then she just went from a minion with a combat power of 1 to 1.1. A bigger minion. Rain doesn't want to blame Avril. It only says that his luck is too bad. He should have known that the sea god fruit was so cheating. He might as well sell it for money. 500,000 pearls. Enough for him to go up several levels. If he did that, he wouldn't be afraid of these privates. 
Rain was desperate. Desperate? Chike stood in front of Terry, leisurely playing with his knife. Are you still hoping with your little mermaid? How naive. Chike looked at Terry from above. He liked this feeling of controlling other people's life and death. I admit, her mutation is quite strong. It should be the result of some sea monster mutation. This kind of sea monster mutant transformed in the water increase is very high, while the degree of weakening on shore is also very low. To be honest, I am a little envious. But so what? I rank higher. She does not exceed the first stage in level 6. And I, a second stage mutant, we are essentially different. Chike squatted down and slapped Terry's cheek with the face of his sword recklessly. My strength can be equivalent to 22 adult abilities on land. So strong. My god, I'm scared of myself. See monster mutant? Shit, in front of me, she is a waste I can slaughter at will. Let her have sex with me more and see if we can get a hybrid mutant. If I can't there are so many other crew members. Someone can. Terry stared at Chike with a deadly glare, his eyes bloodshot, wanting to eat him alive. Yo, quite unconvinced. Chike didn't care about Terry's angry stare. Hey, it's been a long time since I've met an opponent. Although you're not a mutant, your brain is not bad. I can't help but talk to you for a little longer. But then, it's getting late, and I'm going to enjoy those two women. So, our chat is over here. After saying that, Chike stood up and raised his knife high. A cheer erupted from the crew at a distance. Beheading, beheading, beheading. Chike licked his tongue, aimed his knife at Terry's neck, raised it high again, repeated several times, and looked playfully at his ship. It was as if he was deliberately frightening Terry. It made those on the pirate ship bloodthirsty and crazy. Watching all this, Rain just felt like he was about to suffocate. No, it's not right. Calm, calm. Panic is no use. Rain forced himself to calm down. He had to do something. Suddenly, Rain heard several barking dogs and hurriedly looked toward the island. Avril was standing on a raised rock, her arms outstretched towards Rain's side. Her two small hands clenched into fists, looked like her whole body was exerting itself. She seemed to be using her powers, and White was trying to ask him. Avril? White? He could grasp White's meaning. White asked himself to play for time, but what was the point of stalling? Rain's brain was spinning. Wait, Avril. That action seemed not to enhance her own ability. She, she was trying to influence his side. Avril's specific type of mutation is auxiliary evolution, which means that her biggest role is influencing others. At this moment, Chike's knife was about to swing down. Rain couldn't think more and shook his body frantically. The ship's hull swayed strangely and automatically. This kind of rocking is nothing for people like Chike, who always live on the boat. It only slightly delayed his beheading for a short time. However, this swing let Chike retarget Terry's neck. But suddenly, without warning, for unknown reasons, Chike's legs went weak, and the whole person like a pile of mud fell on the boat. Everyone had a confused face. Rain was also confused. Avril, that minion suddenly so strong? Did she slow down Chike's cell activity? A few moments later, Rain finally figured out that he was wrong. Avril is not slowing down Chike's cellular activity. She can only make Chike's strength drop by 10%. It cannot change anything at all. There is only one way to make Chike suddenly fall to the ground. This possibility has Rain excited. Good job, Avril. I really underestimated you. You're worthy of being my acting captain. 45. Master skill. Avril has accelerated Chike's cellular activity. She wanted to make Chike transform on the shore. Chike is also a biological mutant. Then Arson's skill has some reference. Chike's ability can be strengthened in the water. While if he transformed in the land his ability would be weakened instead. Chike said that he envied Arson's sea monster-like mutation. It indicated that his transformation is not as strong as Arson's, which is manifested in two ways. The enhancement he gets in the water is not as strong as Arson's, and the weakening on shore is more severe than Arson's. The higher the rank, the higher the enhancement percentage received by the underwater transformation. At the same time, it seems like a fair exchange. The weakening effect of the transformation on the shore is also more obvious. Chike's level reached the second stage. When he transformed on the shore, the ability would be reduced significantly, even if only 10% of the impact effect, but also let him like a puddle of jellyfish skin flabby lying there. Without looking at the data, Rain also thought that the jellyfish is worse than the sea monster. The difference between the two attributes is absolutely worlds apart. How strong can a jellyfish that left the water be? In theory, this difference would have been insignificant. Rain said that only idiots would transform on the shore. But Avril can do that. 
Avril could think of this without hearing Chike's boast. Rain instantly felt that this woman was like a treasure. It was so right to give her the sea god fruit to take first. Of course, now was not the time to be happy. Although Chike fell, Avril's time of influence was only ten seconds. At this moment, Terry's hand suddenly moved. Even he felt incredible. Chike was even more frightened to look at Terry. Then Terry found that his arms could already move, his body, legs. Rain could not care less about hiding his identity. He eagerly shouted, Terry, kill him. Hurry, we only have four seconds. Terry quickly got up from the deck and picked up the knife on the ground as soon as possible. Although he was still a little shaky, he still held it high in the air. Don't kill me. I'll out, here Chike prayed. Terry was still a little hesitant, but thinking about what this guy just said, if not a sudden huge change, he would be beheaded. Arson and Armin also live worse than death. For this kind of villain, to be merciful to him is to be cruel to yourself. Both hands gripped the knife. Terry swung down hard. A round thing was cut down by a knife, rolled to the edge of the deck, and a curtain of blood sprayed from Chike's neck. Far away on the pirate ship, just excited incomparable pirates silenced suddenly. Everyone looked at this scene incredulously. Damn, what's going on? Why was the captain suddenly beheaded? What the hell? Did I read it wrong? What happened in the end? Is the captain transformed? Not right. If he transforms on the shore, his attributes would be reduced by 21 times. What is he trying to do? I'm thinking, could it be that the captain is overly proud? He has always had this problem. After this person finished, the crowd was silent. It seemed like they acquiesced to his speculation. Bobby, what do we do now? Only Bobby still kept his sanity. What to do? Bullshit, run. The captain won't transform on the shore even if he is an idiot. The captain is no match for them, let alone us. Now that Chike is dead, everyone listens to me. Turn the course. Full speed strategic transfer. Even if Bobby's move was suspected of taking advantage of the chaos to seize the position. At this time, the crew could not care less about thinking about that. That ship was too weird. Not only had it sunk two of Baldi's ships, but now it had even killed their strongest captain. Who would want to fight at this time? The pirate group is weak in friendship. Each flies alone when the catastrophe is near. Listen to Captain Bobby. Turn around. Quickly. Rain watched the main ship of the Iron Anchor Pirates flee fast and finally breathed a sigh of relief. Now the ship was covered in blood everywhere. Arson and Armin still needed some time to recover, while Avril collapsed on the shore, and White was guarding her. Captain, why can I move all of a sudden? Terry asked curiously. Rain thought for a moment and said, At that time, did you want to fight with Chike? Of course, I just hated that I couldn't move my body. Otherwise, I would splatter him with blood even if I died. Terry said fiercely, threatening me is fine, but he intimidates my daughter. At that time, he was all blood rushing into his brain. Yeah, that's right. Rain said, your body was trying to break free of the paralyzing effect, and Avril stimulated your cellular activity, which was tantamount to pushing your body back to normal. So that's what happened. That said, I did feel an inexplicable warmth within my body at the time. Rain let out a long sigh of relief. Terry, can you still move? Yes, Terry replied. Uh, Arson and Armin lie there. For now, let's go to the island. Avril is a little overdrawn. Two days later, Avril opened her eyes slightly, and when the people saw it, they gathered around in a hurry. Sister Avril, you're finally awake, Armin said excitedly. Avril sat up with difficulty, and she hurriedly looked around and was relieved when she saw Terry looking at her with a smile on his face. Is everyone okay? Everything's fine. Terry said, Avril, the captain has told us it's really thanks to you this time. Otherwise, we would have been finished. Avril smiled reluctantly. It's good that everyone is okay. By the way, Captain, are you here? I'm here. Rain's voice rang out from inside the cabin. Captain, I'm sorry my skill seems to be poor. Did I waste 500,000 pearls of yours? Avril stared at the cabin wall nervously. Rain's voice came from the wall. What are you saying? Ahem, well, do you think I really care about those 500,000 pearls? I never thought about that. With quite a bit of conviction, Rain said, and Avril, you've done a great job this time. I didn't even think of this method, but you thought of it. Avril laughed embarrassedly, Captain, in fact, it was an accident. In the days after I got the Poseidon fruit, Arson talked to me about her mutation characteristics, hoping that it would help me. At that time, the pirate didn't transform on the ship so I guess his type of mutation was underwater biological. There's no other way. I could only try, but who knows it worked. That pirate's mutation seems to be much weaker than Arson's. 
I just promoted the transformation by 10%. He fell at once. I was also shocked. Rain's heart finally balanced out. Otherwise, he felt his IQ would be crushed by this woman. Sister Avril, don't say that. Luck is also a part of strength. We would have been dead if you hadn't thought of this. Yes, Avril, thanks to you. Avril lowered her head and looked a little dark. You guys don't comfort me. I think this evolution really sucks. I can only use it on this occasion. This time Rain couldn't hold back. Avril, you think your evolution is crap? With my years of experience playing the game, your skill is a master skill. Avril didn't know what Rain meant by playing the game. But when she heard the last word, master skill, she looked up in surprise, really? Yeah, of course. 46. Booty. Avril's skills were still to be developed, and the effect on different types and levels of opponents is unknown for the time being. But no matter what, at least she restrained Shike perfectly. There is no need to worry about the future now. In this sea battle, they finally defeated the strong enemy in great danger. Everyone is safe which is most important. Seeing everyone has recovered, Rain said excitedly. After winning the battle, how can there be no booty? Go, get the booty. They all came to the spirit and drove the boat to the reef area. Arson jumped into the water with a rope. The two shipwrecks were near here, and Arson began to salvage materials from the seabed at a time. The system began to prompt frequently. Ding, obtain wood one. Ding, get iron wash basin one. Ding, get men's tweed jacket one. Ding, get canvas pieces 30 kilograms. Ding, get gold dinner plate one. Ding, ding, I really liked you so much. Come on, don't stop. Come again. I want more. Ding, get one copper artillery gun mount. Terry and the guys fought to pull out several artillery-related accessories, cannon stands, barrels, and a dozen cannonballs. Who? Artillery. I can equip the artillery now. At this moment, Arson emerged from the water. Captain, the dark current over there is too fast. Many things were washed away. And the water is also deeper, so there are probably quite a few things sunk. Oh no. Rain was heartbroken. That is the whole two big ships. They only fished a few. They just salvaged almost one twentieth of the sails, timber, etc. Rain has no way to. Although Chike died, the toxin he injected into Arson's body was potent. Arson just recovered. Rain couldn't have Terry who had trouble legs into the water. Okay, okay, fine, don't go deep, safety first. Arson, come up. Rain sighed but was more or less comforted by the sight of their hall. The ship was loaded with a large pile of miscellaneous things, including more than a hundred units of wood and thirty kilograms of canvas. Those pieces of artillery parts can at least assemble three guns, plus other various things. This trip harvest was not bad. The most important thing is that they survived from Iron Anchor Pirate's attack, which is more important than anything. Afterward, Rain sent them back to the island, where they could roast and barbecue, which was much warmer than the ship. Rain began to repair his hull. Severe distortion in the bow ramming corner, severe dent in the bow metal baffles, damage to the inner planking, severe damage to the hull, holes in the side panels. Stop. Just tell me how much material you need. Simple repair needs 33 units of wood, fine repair needs 58 units of wood, and refurbish needs 114 units of wood. Rain thought about it. This situation cannot be ignored. In the future, a small defect may bring serious consequences if they encounter a similar situation. Refurbish. Rain gritted his teeth. Right. Open the manufacturable items. Now Rain had more than 23 items. Among them, such as iron ingots, copper ingots, iron nails, steel nails, and rope. Rain just took a glance at these basic materials. These things can be built at any time, not in a hurry. His attention turned to several new items. Mast main pole. 10 M11 tenths units, high toughness round wood, 30 kg slash 12 43 kg copper, mass crossbar, 4 M8 slash 138 units wood, curved sail, 25 30 kg, textile fiber, lift rigging, 10 slash 12 43 kg copper, fiber rope buckle, 18 slash 12 43 kg copper. Rain looked carefully at the materials required for these items and was surprised he had them all. It has always been Rain's dream to become a sailboat and the wind was the most common power on the sea. So far, even the Navy's G-class battleships, including Chike's main ship, are all sailboats. The difference between them is only the number of masts and the size of the sails. Rain's ship is much smaller than theirs, and the materials he has can only make one sail, but it is much better than relying on only human power, and these materials can be recycled later. When he thought about it, Rain was excited. I want this. I want to make sails. Rain said excitedly. 
Avril and the others were grilling fish on the beach when they suddenly saw a long piece of wood erected on rain. The main mast was not made of a single wood but several hard logs bound together. Arson had gotten enough timber for the main mast from two shipwrecks to make the main mast strong enough. The system used metallic copper to hold the logs together. On oh my god, the captain is building a mast. Terry froze and stood up, wow great, with sails, from now on, we would sail faster. The others also realized this, and all looked nervously at rain. While the main mast was completed, the crossbar and sails were also completed. The sails were curved, and there was only one sail, so they could control the sail up and down by pulling the lifting ropes and changing the sail's angle by changing the angle of the fiber rope. In fact, rain doesn't know these things how work. Anyway, leave these things to Avril and Terry. In a short time, Rain's hull had a new look and erected an 8 meter high mast in the center, and a sail hung on it. Open the power system, Rain said excitedly. Power equipment 1, oars asterisk 2, power equipment 2, wooden foot propeller asterisk 4, power equipment 3, single mast curved sail asterisk 1, power system 1, artificial power, power system 2, wind power, ship speed, power equipment 1, can't count ship speed, power equipment 2, 8 knots max ship speed, power equipment 3, 5 knots maximum ship speed. Description, power equipment 2 and 3 together can achieve a maximum ship speed of 10 knots, and cannot exceed the upper limit. What the hell? Why is the max speed not the sum of 2? As a physics minion, Rain couldn't figure out the principle, but he was easily satisfied. The final result was completely acceptable. No matter, now the shipping speed is 10 knots, well cool, wait. The best is yet to come. Rain stopped laughing suddenly, and his eyes fell on the pile of artillery. 47. New weapons. The guns were the most powerful weapons Rain had ever seen. Looking at those accessories, Rain felt his heart beat faster. But he wasn't the only one excited. Avril and the others came running over. Captain? Let me see too. Wow, that's a great sail. We have a sail now. The crew climbed onto Rain's body from all directions. Rain's face turned dark. If he has, I haven't finished the retrofit yet, forget it. Anyway, the big project is completed, and the rest work wouldn't have a major transformation of the hull. Just let these hicks see the elephant. Besides, Rain wouldn't use this thing. Hey, there are three guns that need to be assembled. Rain said, Terry, check if this thing still works. Terry immediately went to a gun and touched the barrel excitedly. Captain, you asked the right person. I usually like to study this equipment. Although I cannot afford it, it is also a hobby. Rain can completely understand men are interested in weapons and such. Captain, this is relatively simple and common artillery. After loading the shell into the chamber and igniting the fire door with the fuse, the explosion's force will fire the shell. But the shells could not explode. However, these gun barrels are short and muzzles are thick, which is for ensuring the shell's volume is enough to cause greater damage. But this requires filling a large amount of powder, and the trajectory needs a parabola angle. It is unlike the cannon which has a long and thin barrel. The cannon can be fired in a low trajectory, or even a flat trajectory, and with hefty firepower. Rain understands seemingly. Anyway, Terry's meaning is that this gun is not good, and the gun is not in the same class as the cannon. Captain, this kind of artillery is poor in accuracy and small in power. Generally, two ships can be more powerful when they travel close to parallel. Rain immediately thought of the naval battles on television, two warships standing in line, and then a burst of indiscriminate bombardment. Well, that would be a huge loss for both sides. No, no, no. I don't want to trade lives with another ship like that. Rain immediately said. Terry, the price of gunpowder. Captain, I know, super expensive. Armin raised her hand and answered, not something we can afford anyway. Captain, not only the gunpowder is very expensive, but also we only have three guns. Just these three guns to decide a battle. A bit difficult, Terry added. Rain was suddenly deflated. You know he was looking forward to the artillery for a long time, even more than the upgrade. Now he was excited for half a day, but the three guns no much use. Not only it is useless, but also it takes up a lot of weight, so heavy. Rain sighed and thought carefully. Terry and the others were right. Putting a few useless guns on the ship is not make sense. Since then, Rain simply melted all three cannons into steel and copper ingots and opened the crafting menu. Rain no longer needs the artillery, but he intends to use these metal ingots. Copper is more malleable than iron, then Rain strengthened his ramming horn, bow, and side plates. 
The stern naturally needed to be reinforced to keep the boat balanced. After these 500 kilograms metal ingots were already used up. Now rain's hull, bow, and stern are all covered with metal. The length of the ramming horn was lengthened by about a meter. Rain also used 200 kilograms metal ingots to reinforce the mass base and the planking joints to further strengthen the ship. There were already a lot of metal parts on the ship, and the planked ship's appearance gradually became different. There were still some metal ingots left. Rain thought about it. During the battle with Chike, when they sank Captain Baldy's ship, several pirates came to his bottom to overturn Rain. This incident has always haunted Rain. If Arson did not arrive in time, then it is likely that they would turn the boat over. If the boat was overturned, all the equipment would be useless. Let me see what I can do for a simple defense. Rain searched through the craftable items. It seems that no weapons can be made. So much metal, why don't you give me a cannon? Rain guesses it may be because his current level is too low. Trash system. Rain cannot help but complain. Can I only equip a wooden spike? Can I replace the wooden spike with a steel spike? Perhaps because his ship wasn't wide enough to build more wooden spikes. The system didn't provide a manufacturing list. At this moment, Rain suddenly saw an interesting thing. Bottom harpoon, 848 units of steel ingots, 50 slash 577 meters of rope, loaded with a large steel harpoon on the side of the bottom, can stab and kill small and medium sized creatures, under 200 kilograms, can be equipped with fishing nets to catch fish. Note, steel fork needs to recover through the rope. The shooting range is 5 and 50 m. Oh, Rain's eyes widened. A weapon is hidden here. Although it is called the harpoon, the panel wrote 200 kilograms or less. The weight of an adult is not even 100 kilograms. That is to say, these steel forks for fishing can be used as a defensive weapon. No doubt, this is what Rain wants. Such a powerful weapon, and can also catch fish. Give me six. The system immediately got busy. The steel ingots on the ship were rapidly decreasing and the ropes bought last time for treasure hunting were quickly disappearing. Rain now is 12 meters long, excluding the bow and stern. Every 3 meters install a harpoon on each side. A total of 6 bottom harpoons were installed in less than a minute. Avril asked with a confused face, Captain, what did you do with these ingots? Yeah, and the ropes. I don't see anything extra on the boat. Armin also said strangely. Rain said proudly. Who told you guys that I must put it on the boat? From now on, I'm a fully armed boat. Whoever tries to overturn me again, I will fuck them. After saying that, Rain fired six steel forks at the same time. Avril and the others only felt a slight shuddering. In not much time, not far from the boat, six large fish floated up. Wow, Captain, how did you do that? Terry looked at those fish in shock. 48. Fishing Tournament. Rain used most material. After these transformations, Rain has changed quite a bit now. A long mast was erected in the center of the ship and its sails were rolled up. The bow and stern are wrapped in metal, the ramming horns grow, and the hull also was reinforced with metal, and the bottom of the rain has equipped with six recyclable steel forks. When looking at the ship information, the system unexpectedly counts the harpoon as part of the weapon system. With the addition of the harpoons, the weapon system was updated. Wooden spikes at the bottom of the bow, attack power, 10, quantity 1. Metal ramming horn, attack power, 45, quantity 1. Bottom harpoon, attack power, 6, quantity 6, metal reinforced hull, defense 18. If Rain remembered correctly, the attack power of the horn was increased by 15. The hull reinforcement defense power also has been increased from 10 to 18. In addition, the 6 harpoons add another 36 attack points for Rain. Now Rain's weapon system's total combat power has exceeded 100, reaching 109. Holy shit, 109 combat power. I'm stronger than ever. Rain was so excited. After creep developing for so long, he was no longer a minion with a combat power of zero. Although Rain's weapons are still very rudimentary, he already has close range undersea defense counterattack, close body combat, and long range attack 3 abilities. Arson also said happily, this is good. We will no longer be afraid of someone playing tricks under the ship. Terry nodded and said captain, this arrangement is too wise, much better than those 3 useless guns. Yeah, who do you think I am? I am your captain. Rain was also in an excellent mood. At this level, he was already satisfied. Wait, he was strengthened. But it was about to be winter, and the situation that the crew reflected on last time had not been solved. Thinking of this, Rain calmed down his excitement. Now it's time to prepare some necessary living supplies. By the way, 
Avril, how many pearls do we have now? What living supplies do you need? Avril didn't think about it and said, Captain, right now we have 348 pearls. According to Rain's understanding, he needs 1,000 wood, 300 kilograms of iron, and 120 kilograms of textile fiber to evolve to the next level. One pearl can buy 10 wood or 1 kilogram of iron. Textile fiber is expensive. Land scarcity makes it very difficult to grow cotton and linen, combined with the huge demand, causing its price even to exceed iron, reaching 3 pearls 1 kilogram. Even Biao, who always bullies others, only has Hufflepuff boats, which are not equipped with sails. In total, these materials need 760 pearls. Rain thought about it. If he took all materials to change to pearls, should be enough to evolve, and he still has some copper and iron left. But if he dumped his family to change ship, he likely does not have too many materials to equip enough weapon systems, and even no ability to strengthen the hull. The new ship's defense will definitely be reduced, and then the overall combat power may not be as good as this ship now. After a few mind battles, Rain was increasingly aware that only upgrading the ship level alone could not survive in this world, and he must improve his combat power at the same time. He should recruit strong crew members and make his crew strong enough to ensure his survival. And anyway, the difference is not much. We don't need to rush to change the ship. Rain said, let's just take our time to make money. Terry frowned and said, Captain, in the past winter, the trading volume of the major trading markets will seriously shrink, especially the half month of the new year. Most staff of the trading market will go home for vacation. This time transport may not earn much money. Avril thought about it and suddenly seemed to think of something. By the way, Terry, is there a New Year's fishing tournament at Morgan? Armin said excitedly, Oh yes, that is the most lively competition. Arson also came to the spirit, Morgan, Sicily, and Beekel. The three trading market boats will have almost all participants. This year, oh, it should be held in the Sicily trading market. I remember last year there were at least hundreds of boats participating. Even the Navy's small ships also participated in it. Of course they will attend. After all, the price of cucumber fish is so high. Catch one is one pearl. They also want to try their luck. But it's difficult to catch the cucumber fish. They are too fast. It's fortunate to catch ten a boat. Whatever. Anyway, the cucumber fish only appear once a year. Just try your best. Besides, the top three will be rewarded with pearls. And the first will be rewarded with fifty pearls. The three women chatted so passionately that Rain and Terry felt abandoned. But it does not matter. Through their conversation, Rain has probably understood this fishing competition. Hey, 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 you three, stop for a moment. Rain interrupted the three women. What is the cucumber fish? Catching one can get one pearl? Why is the fish so valuable? Most fish are cheap. Terry has been fishing for a long time and has not saved many pearls, as evidenced by this. Terry said, Captain, the cucumber fish is different. This fish is the most expensive kind of fish because... Terry glanced at the three women. They all lowered their heads and giggled. Terry also smiled and continued, because the cucumber fish has the effect of aphrodisiac. In the human class C, 30 pounds of cucumber fish can sell three pearls. But the cucumber fish only float within 50 meters of shallow waters on the last day of the year. At other times, there is no chance to catch it unless the boat has deep sea operation capability. After all, our place is not a human class C. So some people come here to buy cucumber fish in the name of holding a fishing competition. At this time, the cucumber fish is all right in size, and as long as you catch one, you can exchange it for a white pearl at their place. In addition, the first place in the competition can get a 50 pearls reward, the second place 20 pearls, and the third place 10 pearls. Rain said dissatisfied, they can casually make twice as much. Oh shit treacherous businessman. Well, cucumber fish are most valuable only when they are alive. Long distance transport will die a lot. They also need to cost. And our purchase price here is originally lower than the human class C. Overall, the price is still very fair. Rain said thoughtfully, Well, you said it's fair, so it should be fair. Unfortunately, we are not a professional fishing boat. Even if we attend, we would work for. The word nothing has not yet been said, Rain suddenly realized. Who said I'm not a professional fishing boat? He has been equipped with six harpoons just now. 49. Fierce competition. By the next day, rain returned to Morgan Trading Market. The wind at sea was significantly colder than a few months ago. Avril and the others wore a little less, so they scrambled the thrusters to get warm. Of course, rain did not forget to try his new power equipment sails. Against the direction of the wind, 
the curved sail was raised high, and a large margin instantly increased the boat's speed. The boat easily reached eight or nine knots by wind and thrusters. A smooth wind way, cool, sunlight on the prow of the ship with a metallic sheen. The sails were set high. Rain was so happy to speed between the azure sky and the sea for the first time. They were going to take five days before, but this time it only took four days to reach the Morgan trading market. When people saw rain, they couldn't help but look over one after another. Wow, look guys, is that Avril's boat? Why is it different from before again? She changed her boat again. Hiss it seems like still the original one, but changed so much. The bow and stern are fitted with metal and also sails. I transport more diligently than her. But why don't I make money as fast as her? Avril and the others ignored the comments. Their position in the Morgan market has not been the same as before. Not only did Lieutenant Shob have a good relationship with them but also their strength alone. No one would dare to mess with them. When they were a double-decker small wooden ship, they won the Biao and seriously injured the deep sea octopus emperor. The current them, look this exquisite hull, conspicuous metal shields. These merchant ships here are no longer their opponent. This time Avril did not find Goldwell to get the mission. She directly docked the ship where they often dock. In the days they left, this position has always been empty. Captain, Avril leaned the bow and whispered, we're going shopping. Armin and White stay here. Hmm. By the way, if you meet Shob, ask him if Chike is on the wanted list and how much his head is worth. A human head was wrapped with cloth in the storage compartment, which was somewhat creepy for rain. Okay. This shopping's main purpose was to buy supplies for the crew, including bedding, quilts, clothing, and building materials for the fireplace. In a short time, Avril, Terry, and Arson returned, carrying a large bag in their hands, followed by two men, handing a large and a small fireplace and a small amount of clay or something. Put it here. We'll get it ourselves, thanks, Terry said to the two men. The two men put down the stretcher, looked around, and could not help but praise, what an exquisite boat. It must be sturdy. Terry looked at the two men with a little anger. According to the captain's temper, he did not like strangers staying on the ship. The two men saw that the master was a little upset and hurriedly got off the boat. Boss, if you want to buy anything later, go to my place again. Okay. After the two men left, Avril and the others immediately got busy. They started to decorate the big cabin first. The big stove was installed in the crew cabin. The cabin can be warmer in winter but must be installed with a strong chimney. These technical works must be Terry do. Avril and the women began to lay mattresses in the cabin. The cabin is small, and they cannot put a bed, so they took a large bunk. The good thing is that they do not mind. They have lived worse than in this place. It is already good here. They also bought a small cupboard and put some common household items on each person's clothing, and put no often used things in the locker. A few hours later, the originally empty and poor cabin transformed into a cozy house. After the big cabin is the small cabin. Here is where Terry, White, and the little Booty live. Terry made a comfortable nest for White and Booty. He also bought a mattress, a small cabinet, and a stove. They sorted and cleaned for two days. Although the ship does not look much changed, the moment of opening the hatch suddenly becomes different. Although there were only two tiny rooms and one smaller than the other, it was very warm. Everyone had their own place to rest. Rain watched his crew carefully decorate the cabin as if they were decorating their own home. Those three women played in the cabin as if no one was around them. Do you guys really think I can't see? Rain wanted to join their game but could only think about it in his brain. Seeing his crew finally have a comfortable resting place, Rain also felt very relieved. This winter will not be too cold. A few days, the weather was getting colder. The original bustling mission release point was only occasionally visited by four or five ships from time to time, and others were not even bothered to go there. Now usually, no more than three ships are transported, and the goods pulled are very cheap. Rain saw the situation and did not bother to take the mission. This day, Shob came up his ass again. This guy now doesn't treat himself as an outsider, even without being invited, a foot already on the boat. Wow, your boat. Awesome. Avril, tell me, which master did this? Look at the seams, look at the inlay, strong and beautiful. And the mast and sails. How did that get added? and you added another metal shield on the bow. Are you planning to strengthen it into a turtle ship? Avril laughed awkwardly. Well, hey, it's the same master. This answer is still the same as no answer. Seeing that Shob intended to pursue the question, Avril immediately pulled Shob mysteriously to the cabin. Shob confused, Avril, what's it? When they came to the cabin, Avril asked, Hey, Lieutenant Shob, I want to ask you something. What? 
Well, do you know the member on the wanted list? Well, um, I'm not clear. With Rachel and Baika around, I usually don't make a point to remember it. If I want to know, I'll ask them. Avril frowned slightly. This guy is too irresponsible. Then, did you know the Iron Anchor Pirates? Iron Anchor, let me think about it. Nothing rings a bell. Hey, hey, that chike. Jellyfish biological mutation. Avril desperately reminded Shobe. Oh, it's him. I remember. Shobe dawned on him. Didn't they get wiped out long ago? A G-class bounty fleet wiped them out. And I remember the bounty was 500 or 800. Ah? Did they claim all the bounty? No, the full bounty seems to be more. But because they did not catch Chike, only sank their main ship, so they only collected part of it. What about the rest? Right off. The main ship was gone. What waves can they make? If anyone can meet Chike, they really can buy fish row jackpot. Rain wants to slap a plank on Shobe's head. He had no interest in knowing what the fish row jackpot was. But he knew what Shobes meant was that he hadn't gotten anything this time. Avril held her forehead. Probably her feeling is similar to Rain's at this point. Well, let's pretend I didn't ask anything. Hey, Avril, what's wrong? Why are you asking this? You're not so unlucky to meet Chick, right? This man is unexpectedly so gossipy. Avril's face was cold. No, we're not. Forget about it. I just want to ask about the fishing tournament. Fishing tournament? Shobe frowned and said, are you going to participate? I have to remind you should think carefully. This year's cucumber fish recovery price rose to two pearls. Driven by profiteering, this competition may be. Shobe thought about it and found a word to describe it. Maybe more fierce. 50. Spectacular scene. Shobe seemed excited when speaking of fishing competition, and he continued, Right now, in the human class waters, cucumber fish price about five pearls, which is a record price. The fishing competition in the human class waters is crazier. They almost became fishers. Our sea is a little remote, and cucumber fish are few here. But just because of this year's market, I guess there will be at least 300 boats participating in the tournament. Avril's eyes widened, 300? Yeah, that's still a conservative guess on my part. By my count, the navy of our three trading markets will have 50 small boats participating. Plus the merchant ships mixing the three markets for a long time, about 230 or 40 and quite a few bounty fleets will be coming through. The bounty fleet will come too? Yes, they'll come wherever there's money. There are fewer fish here and fewer boats, so they will have a big advantage if they come. As far as I know now, there are two sub-G bounty fleets, and 27 small boats from two G-class bounty fleets have signed up, and I'm sure there will be more later. So 300 ships is a conservative guess. After all, Shob is a lieutenant. He is still well informed. Avril, cucumber fish moves swiftly. Smaller ships will have a greater advantage than larger ones if you want to catch them. But the two small ships' power system won't work. Therefore boats of 10 to 15 meters are the most advantageous. But you should know that the navy and the bounty fleet also have small boats. Although they are not much bigger than yours, they are still much more powerful than yours. For one thing, our power systems are stronger and faster. For another, our ships are well equipped. And for a third, Shobe frowned slightly thought for a moment, and said, in fact, you know, under the temptation of such high interest, I am afraid this fishing competition will have more friction. And you should know that if friction does occur, there will certainly be a collaboration between the ships of our same fleet. Avril was always smart, and she immediately understood when Shobe said that. Everyone else was huddled together, and they were lucky not to get beaten when alone, let alone competitive. Lieutenant Shobe, are you participating? Sure. These days, I even don't have much money for cigarettes. Shobe said pearly, right, how about this, you guys just hang around us, you're not professional fishing boats anyway, next to us, even if someone comes after you, you can come to my side, and I'll cover you, Avril nodded and thanked him for now, thanks a lot, it wasn't long before the crew called Shobe away, when Shobe had gone, Avril sat at the boat's bow and shared the news Shobe had brought, Shobe means this fishing tournament will be very competitive, and he can't even rule out friction, the crowd was silent for a moment. The purchase price of the cucumber fish this time was good, but there will be at least 300 boats in this competition, including the navy and the major bounty fleets. There is no doubt that their small boat would be at a disadvantage. Captain, what should we do? Avril asked. Rain thought about this for a long time. Is Sicily the only place that has cucumber fish? You guys said that the tournament location was changing, which means there are other places, right? Rain asked. Captain. The tournament location is not set randomly. It is based on the changes in the underwater currents and the path of the previous year's cucumber fish population. 
so they can deduce the starting point of their migration this year. This means that they rise out of the shallow waters from the Sicilian side this year. After this area, the fish will sink, and it's impossible to catch, Terry explained. So, Rain said thoughtfully, there's no loophole we can take advantage of. We definitely attend this money-picking game. I'm not the same little rickety boat I used to be, Rain said firmly. Avril, go and sign up. This time, we must make a fortune. Yes, Captain. In the first half of December, the Morgan trading market was depressed, and many onboard ships had gone straight to the Mississippi trading market. By mid-December, Shobe had sent 18 15-meter warships to depart to the Sicily trading market. Seeing the Navy depart, the surrounding merchant ships immediately stirred up. The fishing tournament is less than half a month away, so it's almost time to depart. The Navy is leaving, so let's go too. It's safer to follow them. This year's fishing tournament is said to be particularly lively, almost all the boats in the market taking part. It's not just the market boats. Look at the Navy, they have 18 ships this time, there would never have been so many before. I heard that several bounty fleets are coming too, it's outrageous. I think they are here to rob us. Cut the crap, untie all the ropes and let's go. Whether we get rich or not depends on this. And so, a few dozen merchant ships followed the Navy behind. Rain and the others were among the group. This time Rain was not left far behind, although he was still following at the end, at least he was barely keeping up. Hey, I've installed sails, 10 knots speed is fine. Rain was very pleased. Captain, are you all set up? Do you want to recheck it? Avril asked. Don't worry. You don't trust your captain? Rain said with confidence. The cucumber fish must be caught alive to be worth the money. The organizers wouldn't accept the dead, because the dead fish would probably be rancid by the time they reached the human class waters. Five days later, the fleet of ships from Morgan's trading market arrived at the Sicily trading market. Rain had been here quite often and found a corner to stop. After settling, Avril, Terry, Armin, and Arson stood on the deck and looked out at sea. My God, so many boats. It's the first time I've ever seen it, Terry exclaimed and shook his head. Avril also marveled, it's like a harbor in human class waters. Are all these boats here for the fishing tournament? They at least have four or five hundred. Rain was shocked too. On the sea, the wooden corridors originally built for the trading market were no longer distinguishable. There were boats everywhere of all shapes and sizes. Plank boats, or boats, sand carriers, rowing sailing boats, small dows, two-masted sailing boats, three-masted sailing boats, hufflepuffs, and raiding sailing boats. In addition to these small and medium-sized boats, there were many big guys G-class boats. Viking battleships, Venetian heavy gunboats, British battleships, Spanish battleships, turtle gunboats. In all shapes and sizes, the flags flying from the ship are a sight for sore eyes. WTF, are you guys fucking here to fish? Not battle? Even in the former Earth, Rain had never seen such a spectacular row. Although his mouth was grumbling, Rain felt his blood boil. Azure era. Okay, I'm starting to like you a little bit. 51. Captain Adan. Shobes intel is so inaccurate. He said 300 boats, but there's at least 400 or 500 here. Arson shook her head, there may be more ships than fish by then. I don't think those big boats are for racing. They are the main ships of those big fleets, Avril said, and I can't imagine we'll have to compete with so many ships next. Avril's words did remind Rain, and he looked at the conspicuous large warships. At this point, he noticed that the Navy ships all had a uniform gun symbol, and the others, all kinds of symbol. When he met Chaik, Rain heard about the bounty fleet for the first time, and it sounded like it was the fleet that specialized in bounty missions. They also have a classification. The lowest Rain has heard of so far is the sub-G class, followed by the G class, which is easy to understand. The sub-G class is slightly inferior to the G class. It seems that sea monsters, navies, pirate groups, and bounty fleets are all classified according to a uniform standard. Sea monsters and pirate groups certainly would not dare to appear here so the large ships without naval markings must be the main ships of the bounty fleet. Rain noticed that the types and sizes of these boats were also somewhat different, and they all had another symbol on their flags. That design resembled an open clam with a large pearl in the middle. The appearance of the pearls and the emblem of each ship varies. Some look like mermaids gathered, others like a wine barrel, but can still see the general outline of the pearl. It's like a pirate's skull pattern. The skull pattern symbolizes the pirate group but each pirate group's skull is also slightly different. 
There was only one large ship with a flag that was either a cannon nor a bounty symbol, but something in the shape of a rice cob. This ship followed a dozen transports of about 20 meters and had the same pattern as the main ship. Rain later learned that this symbolized the Chamber of Commerce ships, who were also the fishing tournament organizers and the recyclers. Rain knew a new force the Chamber of Commerce. Avril and the girls went off to wander around the trading market to buy some food and drink and see what fishing gear they need. With the fishing tournament still a few days away and a constant flow of boats coming, finding a place to dock wasn't easy. Rain was glad they were not too late and could still find a place to dock. Terry was the most experienced in the competition and explained the rules of the fishing competition to everyone. The rules are simple. Before the tournament starts, all boats are distributed in a designated spot. This location has no advantages. And although people can roughly determine where the cucumber fish will appear, it is only accurate to a 10 nautical mile radius. 10 nautical miles, rain needs to take an hour to sail from one end to the other at full speed and downwind. This is not a small area. Of course, when the cucumber fish appears, the fish are bound to gather in a certain area, and that's when the boat friction begins. The choice of location at the beginning is also important, but it is a matter of luck so omit it for now. As soon as the cucumber fish appears, all boats start fishing. Cucumber fish often move in families of four or five together and are extremely agile and alert. They are exceptionally difficult to catch as their fast speed underwater. In addition, the most powerful aspect of the cucumber is that they have good eyesight and intelligence so that they can dodge fishing boats overhead in advance. By the time the crew drops their nets, they are likely long gone. All in all, apart from their nourishing and aphrodisiac properties, the super difficulty of catching them is one of the reasons they fetch such a high price. Terry, do you know the previous championship score? Rain asked quietly. Now that there were boats all around, he only dared to whisper when no one was around. Well, I can't remember all the previous first places, but the one I remember more is that someone once caught 170 in 4 hours. That's definitely an amazing achievement. Dad, is there someone really caught 170? I've watched fishing competitions a lot over the years and the most I've ever seen was 70 or 80 fish, which was achieved only by the strongest boats with the strongest crew. An ordinary merchant ship would be lucky to catch 10 arson said. Terry recalled that ship. Do you know whose ship it was? Who? All three women looked curious. It was the most powerful frigate in the F-class bounty fleet Captain Whitehaired Adan. What? Captain Whitehaired Adan. That's really a legendary captain. He was my idol when I was a kid. Yeah, he captured many G-rank pirate crew leaders. Yes, that was back in his youth. He lost all his hair later and now he is known as Whitebeard Adan. I hear he is a businessman now, and I heard he used to brag in the tavern. Ahem, ladies and gentlemen, let's get back to the point. Rain, coughed. Yes, captain. Well, the price of cucumber fish has doubled this time, a fish worth two pearls. Anyway, I think we should try to catch as many as we can, Terry said. Okay, I already have a plan. You guys don't need to catch. Avril you pretend to control the bow, and also relay my instructions. Terry Armin Arson, you control the sails and steer the boat. I'll do the rest, said Rain. White stood there wagging his tail incessantly and looking at Rain excitedly. Well, Rain forgot to assign White a task. White, you, once I catch the fish, you help them pull the rope. White was pleased when he got the task, his tail wagging like a propeller. Rain glanced up and saw the little booty standing on White's head. This 0.1 combat power guy seemed to want a mission too. Rain really couldn't think of a mission for it. So he found a random thing, little booty, just pay attention to where Shob is. Aye, Captain. The crew took their orders. As Avril looked up, her eyes fell on the boardwalk on the shore, and she suddenly said in a deep voice, Captain, someone's coming. Five burly sailors approached shoulder to shoulder, disdainfully disparaging the ships around them as they walked. Finally, their eyes fell on rain. The shiny metal bow and stern, the metal reinforced hull, the superb planking seams, the brand new hull. Yo, this little shit boat has something, one of the men said, jumping straight onto the rain, and a few chicks, very good, 52, get me? The first one got on board, and the others also scrambled to get on together. Avril looked at these people angrily, who are you? We didn't permit you to get on the boat. Get off. The bearded man smiled contemptuously at Avril and pressed one hand on the panel. I heard that your boat limelight these days. Come on, come on, let me take a look. The man grabbed the ship's side and wrenched it forcibly, and the board cracked a long slit. If the boards do not have metal reinforcement, 
afraid the whole board will be destroyed. The average person cannot have such strong power. What are you doing? Avril, Terry, and Armin said angrily. Woof woof woof. White also bared his teeth and barked. Arson immediately stood out and looked at the man coldly. What right do you have to damage our ship? What right? Because I'm from the Bounty Corps. The man completely ignored the crew's angry stares and sneered. You think you're strong just because no one messes with you at the Morgan Market. Sorry, you guys can only be kings in that small shithole. Dare to mess with my brother, you guys quite well. In the fishing competition, I will teach you a good lesson. The man ripped the cracked plank with his hand. You still have a few days to live. Enjoy it. After saying that, they got off the boat. Avril was so angry that she almost couldn't control her breath. Armin hurriedly ran to the damaged part of the ship and asked in a small voice, Captain, are you okay? I'm fine. Rain said seriously. Find out what they are. The night, Avril and the others returned to the ship and gathered in the cabin. The group before was an important member of the sub-G bounty group punishment bounty group, and the bearded man was Biao's brother Bien. The symbol of the punishment bounty group is a golden hammer inside a pearl clam. Speaking of which, since Shob personally led people to raid Biao's residence, they disappeared from Morgan's trading market. It turns out they got to the punishment bounty group. Captain, I've asked Shob. The punishment bounty group is very strong. Avril took a small book and read, They have a G-class main ship, 320 meter class frigates, 9 15 meter or fewer class frigates. As long as they complete a bounty mission worth 500 pearls or more, they can upgrade to a real G-class bounty group. This fishing competition, they have 9 ships in, the 9 frigates are all under 15 meters. Bien is the captain of them. Avril seems to have gathered a lot of information, she continued. Bien is a mutant, biological mutation, infected mother unknown. It is said that his power is first stage level 7. But I don't know if this information is true. Rain coldly snorted. This guy really doesn't forget the beginning. After beating the little one, the old one is coming. That jerk unexpectedly has a mutant brother. Rain is not afraid of a level 7 mutant. Arson is a sea monster type mutant. In the event of a fight, Arson is not afraid of him. Not to mention he has Avril. In this fishing tournament, they certainly will target Rain. And they have 9 ships. Although they cannot fire on them in public. If they make a beautiful accident. Afraid no one will speak for them. Shob may say something about it. Not right. That guy definitely will take the opportunity to recruit his crew. This guy always has a thief's heart. In short, this fishing competition must be careful. The night before the tournament, Avril took the boat out and found a place where no one was around for rain to repair the broken board. He checked the sideboard and found Bien was sinister enough. He grabbed the weakest place and avoided the metal reinforced position. Okay, let's go back first. Then everyone rests well and prepare for tomorrow's fishing competition. Yes, Captain. Early the next morning, a loudspeaker sounded in the Sicily trading market. Attention all captains, all boats registered for the fishing tournament. Please proceed to the designated area before 7 a.m. There, we will inspect all the boats. Please show your entry card. A lot of boats participated in this tournament, so we hope you go early. Gradually, some boats started to move in the designated direction. Once again, we Goldfoot Trading Company reiterate that the recovery price of cucumber fish is two white pearls. Of course the prerequisite is it's alive. In addition we also prepared rewards for the top three of this competition. That's 50 pearls, 20 pearls and 10 pearls. Full of pearls are waiting for you. Everyone come on go go go. Captain, let's go too. The crew took their places, stepping the thrusters, raising the sails, and steering the helm. Rain began to join the army of moving ships. In the sea ahead, there were several transport ships with merchant patterns, and there was staff checking each ship's entry card, and those who passed continued to move forward into the designated position. Rain passed the check and entered the designated position. Captain, those buoys on the sea are the border, Terry whispered. And I know, you guys keep driving, let's look around first. Rain turned the radar. System, can you detect the location of those cucumber fish? The system didn't respond. This system can detect the topography of the sea at 500 meters deep and can also warn of danger, but it just can't tell Rain where the cucumber fish are. Rubbish system. Show the undersea map. Rain can only retreat to the second best. Perhaps he can get some useful information according to the map. After scanning, Rain found a dozen large coral reef areas. Isn't the cucumber fish very smart? In that case, they should know to hide. These coral reefs definitely are excellent hiding places. They might be hiding in the reefs now. Rain thought, and then looked for a larger coral reef and stayed nearby. 
This was the location he chose. By the way, Radar, mark the punishment bounty groups as the enemy. And Shob, mark it as friends. Hey, don't tell me you can't do it. This time, nine small red dots appeared on Rain's radar. Ding, detected an enemy vessel, 293 degrees southwest, distance of 989 meters, recorded as a vessel. Ding, detected an enemy vessel, 286 degrees southwest, distance of 832 meters, recorded as B vessel. Ding, ding, no friendly ships found, not in radar area. Rain raised his eyes. Goodness, so many ships. Even if the punishment bounty group was just 200 meters in front of him, he could not see them. Hmm? This seems to be good news. If I can't see, then even if they have binoculars, they will be blocked. But Rain has radar. Too good, wanna get me? See if I can fuck you up. 53. Game start. The total number of boats participating in the race was 474 at the final count, far exceeding Shob's expectations. All these participating boats took a full two hours to enter the capture site. Rain looked in the distance, and saw that the large ships were docked at the outskirts of the competition area, so that only Hades G-Class main ship was left in the Sicily, trading market, and the rest of the place was empty. Rain retracted his gaze and observed the situation around him, many ships surrounding him not far away. There are warships, merchant ships, fishing boats, and all kinds of. There were some excellent performance ships and the crew was four or five times more than them and they have conspicuous flags flying on their poles, painted with various symbols, navy, bounty groups, or some other symbols Rain does not recognize. These people are not only strong, but they also have backers. Usually, the boats that race here are between 10 and 15 meters. Rain is 12 meters long, which is not a bad length, but he only has one mast and four crew members. It seems to others that they are here to play. Just four crew members on that boat. Are they really here to catch fish? Can four people catch fish? I'm afraid they are here to make trouble. We'd better stay away from them. They don't have many people, but that ramming horn is a bit scary. Gradually, a few boats around Rain changed their places secretly. Rain is also a bit depressed. Originally he hid in the middle of many ships. The punishment bounty group could not catch them easily. Now well, the surrounding ships avoid him just like the plague, leaving him a large piece of empty space around him. Forget it. I guess the punishment bounty guy won't make a move at the beginning. Let's catch the fish first. Rain analyzed. Not long after, the Goldfoot Merchant's main ship stopped at the race area's outer edge. A large stage was set up on their deck, and a short fat man said with a megaphone impassionedly, Everyone, all 474 ships for this tournament are ready. Everybody, the exciting fishing competition is about to begin. The pearls scattered in the sea are under your boats. Due to the large number of boats, Please pay attention to safety. If a collision occurs, we are not responsible. Rain cursed the crooked businessman in his heart. He actually said they are not responsible with a righteous attitude. Perhaps people's minds have accepted the world's cruelty in this era. So no one raised any objections. Good, let the game begin. The fat man's speech finally ended. But the ships on the sea did not move. The cucumber fish are so shrewd that any wind and movement will scare them away. Everyone does not dare to take any action when facing the approaching fish. 5 minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes. At this very moment, Rain suddenly stared eyed wide. Although he had no eyes, he saw it. In the coral reef below them appeared suddenly a large number of fish figures. They swim quickly from the bottom of the sea. Rain was shocked. He guessed correctly. A large number of fish out of the coral reef formed a spectacular picture. At this point, the fish were not showing their heads elsewhere and others didn't know that Rain's side had already appeared fish, so now was the perfect opportunity for Rain. Rain observed the situation below the surface, waited for them to come up to the harpoon range, and suddenly fired his harpoons. Pull the net, Rain ordered at the same time. Although the harpoons were not designed to shoot those cucumber fish, his harpoons had been modified with a net tied. When he fired the harpoon, it was equivalent to firing a fishing net. Rain's shooting has always been systematically aimed. The direction is certainly not a problem. He clearly saw harpoons and nets soaring towards the school of fish, but those cucumber fish immediately spotted the danger, and the original dense fish scattered at once. Only a few slow-reacting fish were caught, struggling desperately in the net. Rain could not help but regret it. He thought his shot was very accurate. Originally he thought he were rich. These cucumber fish are too smart. The crew hurriedly went to pull the ropes. Some of the surrounding boats saw the action here and all looked gloating. 
When did they launch the net? The fish have not come up yet. Not only did they fail to catch the fish, but also they disturbed them. It's really a group of rookies, not calm at all. Doesn't matter. It's better to disturb the fish to our sides and let us make a fortune. In full view of everyone, Avril pulled up the fishing net. And there was a vague cucumber fish figure in the water. And more than one. There was silence all around. Oh, Captain, just seven, Avril said with a full disappointed face. There was a sound of someone collapsing from all around. What do you mean by just seven? Is seven not enough? Not only did they catch the cucumber fish, but also they caught seven. How did they find out the cucumber fish came out? I've never seen anyone catch so many cucumber fish in one net. And this was when the fish didn't appear. Holy shit, that's worth 14 pearls. Enough for three ship mission. At this moment, many cucumber fish rose from the bottom of the sea. And people could see a large number of fish figures swimming on the bottom with the naked eye. Now, the whole sea was suddenly lively. And all the ships started like crazy. Oars and sails were all in place. And countless boats began to move. The crew members began to launch their nets frantically. Those swimming in the sea are all pearls. It was also at this time that many boats occurred friction. The bow collided, the stern collided, and even the nets cast got tangled together. Some crew even jumped on others' boats and started tearing up. Rain now breathed a long sigh of relief. Fortunately, the boat in his around is less, otherwise estimated he will be bumped a few times. Some boats gradually emerged from the encirclement amid the chaos, chased the cucumber fish quickly, and cast the nets skilled. However, those cucumber fish were like parkour runners through layers of obstacles at the bottom of the sea, traveling between fishing nets flexibly. Many people cast nets, but nothing. Well, it turns out that catching cucumber fish is so difficult. Avril was embarrassed. Captain, I misunderstood you. 54. Cheerful fishing boat. Just a short distance from rain, a school of cucumber fish came out. All the boats quickly started up and the crew moved in full force to pounce on where the school of fish was. Another chaotic collision and even some ship's planks were cracked. The fish is coming, quick, catch them. These guys were as mad as crazy, their eyes only cucumber fish. The formerly quiet sea was thrown into chaos completely, with all sorts of boats hoisting sails, paddling oars, dropping nets, and all those crew members exerting all their strength. Rain finally understood what Shobe said a bit fierce. Even two small boats capsized in the process of crowding and crashing. One fish is worth two pearls. This kind of money pick thing made these people crazy. Those fish were chased by many boats resulting that them swimming towards Rain's side by good coincidence. Rain was startled. Dozens of boats were rushing in his direction. When the time comes, even if they don't get hit by the punishment bounty corps, they will be hit by other boats. Terry, too many boats here. Let's change places first. Quick, 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 sail. Aye, Captain. The sails on the mast opened quickly, and the girl's step thrusters withdrew quickly. Terry tied the sail fiber rope and immediately untied the seven fish, threw them into the water tank prepared in advance, retied the fishing net, and put it into the water. By rotating the rope gear, the harpoon could be pulled back into the launch and held back the bolt so Rain could relaunch the harpoon. There's much fish ahead. Rain made another discovery. Come on, speed up. As Rain fired the harpoon again, they caught four more cucumber fish. There's another school of small fish ahead. Come on, Terry. Reload the harpoon quickly. While the other boats scrambled to intercept the fish, Rain had already gone a long way. Others paid attention to a large school of fish but Rain did not care about the size of the school fish. As long as a dozen fish gathered, he would go after them. Pity these cucumber fish had escaped after all the trouble but still fell into Rain's net. Even without the help of radar, Rain's visual distance in the water is more than the average person's. Rain kept firing his harpoon. There always had more or less harvest every time he fired the nets. Three again. Terry quickly took off the last cucumber fish and skillfully reloaded the harpoon. It's only been half an hour and there are already 32 fish. 32 fish is 64 pearls. Earn 64 pearls in half an hour. This is much faster than transporting goods to make money. Not long after, they were close to the edge area. Those missed fish started to die beyond Rain's range. Turn around. Let's make a comeback. Rain ordered. Originally Rain thought that 10 nautical miles was a long distance. However, when he turned around and found so many boats, he was still shocked. 10 nautical miles is about 18,500 meters, but there are 500 boats here. If they are linked together, the length can reach 6,000 meters. Of course, they can't be connected one by one, but this can reflect the current sea was very crowded. 
At this moment, the system's voice sounded. Ding, enemy ships C, D are approaching. Shit, they're coming. Rain immediately identified the location of the two ships on the radar, which were pincer attack him. The enemy ships were approaching, but Rain didn't want to give up the pearls in the sea. Now the cucumber fish was parkour fast among boats, dodging all kinds of fishing nets. They had scattered and dispersed in all directions, and it was difficult to encounter large schools of fish again. In that case, Rain narrowed the target to two or three together little ones. Avril, the punishment bounty group is wrapping us, I'm gonna dash over, but we can't delay catching fish. Huh, Captain, someone is chasing us, and you decide to rush through so many boats while catching fish, isn't it too dangerous? Don't worry about anything else, I'll take the helm. You tell everyone to hold on. In addition, once I launch the harpoon, you guys immediately pull the net to collect the fish and reload the harpoon. What we need is efficiency. Avril nodded and conveyed the captain's orders to them. After everyone was ready, Rain steadied his mind. Okay, let's go. At the command, Arson and Armin pushed the thrusters hard. Terry reeled the sails, and Rain started to rush through all the boats. Eh? Boss Bien, these guys are running backward, Bien's crew reported. Crazy. They're charging backward while everyone else is fishing, they will get into a collision. Bien's gaze was grim, no matter if it collision or not, just follow them and sink them. Although Rain was going against the ships, Rain's control was so strong that the small boat flew through the middle of the ships like a water snake. Bien was staring at Rain's boat with dead eyes, but suddenly, his target made a U-turn and was blocked by other boats. For another moment, it is actually out of sight. What? Where are they? Just now they were over there. Bien walked around and adjusted his vision but never saw Rain and the others. Shit, they have run away. Many people noticed the boat quickly speeding past them in the opposite direction when they were concentrating on fishing which scared away the fish they had been staring at for. Ages. Holy shit, is that boat crazy? Did they catch fish like that? I think they are planning to go down to feed the fish themselves. So many boats here they must get bumped. At this moment, the man in that boat quickly pulled up the rope. In no time, the net was pulled up, and above the net were two cucumber fish. The other people's eyes were staring out. Holy shit, they really caught it. And two, where is justice? I've been following fish to catch them for so long, but finally they run away. Those guys just ran blindly and bumped, and they fucking caught fish. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Now Rain was fleeing while catching fish. According to the radar, he could easily avoid the punishment bounty group's ships. Captain. There are 108 fish. Terry puts the fish into the second tank and quickly reloads the harpoon. 108? So that's pearls? Rain calculated in his heart. According to this trend, maybe he can earn all the pearls he needs to evolve. This thought boosted his spirits. Avril, go on. Yes, Captain. Avril whispered to the bow. On a G-Class warship, many eyes were following a small boat. This ship was unusually nimble, weaving in and out of other ships without any rules. Rain stands out due to his completely unorthodox routine. And what makes people more speechless is that the crew of this boat has always harvested several cucumber fish every time they pull up the fishing net. Hades slowly put down the binoculars in his hands on the Navy ship, squinted his eyes, and said incredulously, Oh my God, who can tell me if they have eyes under the ship? But Hades frowned slightly soon. He also noticed the movements of those few bounty group ships. Those boats were closing in. You guys are really as interesting as Shob said. 55. Counterattack. Rain was getting better. He was weaving through a group of boats relying on his short hull, flexible direction change and other characteristics. Moreover, this guy's harvest is more exasperating. The guy who doesn't follow the rules the most, but the harvest most too. What kind of sense is this? Damn, harder to catch them than cucumber fish. Bien stared at the damn boat, his chest heaving violently with anger. There was less than an hour left of the race, so he would miss this opportunity if he stood around stupidly. He can make a casual run like at home. I don't believe I can't do it with my elite sailors. Bien finally could not stand it anymore, and after seeing Rain pass by cheerfully again, he shouted angrily, Chase them. Rain was having a good time before an alert suddenly came from the system. Bien's ship was chasing them. I knew you were not a cool man. Rain snorted coldly. The cucumber fish were already diving down deep so it wouldn't catch much further now. Avril, how many cucumber fish have we caught? Avril asked Terry then replied, Captain, 311 in total. That's more than 600 pearls, and maybe we can earn a few pearls as a bonus. That is enough to upgrade. In that case, Avril, 
Next I'm gonna finish Bien and the others. You guys cooperate with me fully. Avril's expression gripped up, yes, Captain. After that, Avril informed Terry and the others to concentrate on driving the boat and changing the sails. Terry and the others immediately understood what they would do. Next, it was time for them to settle their grudge. Rain continued to shuttle back to the sea, but this time, he was followed by a 15-meter two-masted light gunship, and their speed was also very fast. And under Bien's full concentration and command, they were actually closing in on Rain. Hades watched Rain and them with his monoculars, and soon he spotted the ship behind them. Eh? That's the punishment bounty corps. Did they want to make trouble with that woman? At this time, Shobe wandered over and grabbed Hades' binoculars. Nice shit. Hey, Hades, what are you looking for? Give it to me. Hades looked at Shobe with great disgust. As soon as this guy came to Sicily, he ran into the bathroom and even missed the fishing competition. Hades is speechless to this guy. Eh? Punishment bounty corps are chasing Avril. Hiss, I think I heard that the one who was taught by Avril last time, uh, Biao or something has relatives in the punishment bounty group. This is a bit troublesome. Shobe turned his eyes in the other direction immediately. Among hundreds of ships, several ships of the punishment bounty group were slowly gathering toward the center. It looks like they were trying to surround Avril. Put down the binoculars. And Shobe frowned tightly. Not good. Avril, they are in danger. Hades looked at Shobe coldly, knowing only now. Besides, even if you know before, what can you do? In my opinion, just hit it. It's a chance to recruit them. Shobe did not feel relieved at all. No, although I would like to recruit them. But, but I know Avril they value their ship. I still don't want anything to happen to them. At this very moment, a burly man approached. This guy wore a leopard skin coat. He was not as tall as Shobe. But his shoulders were wide and he looked strong. He had a cigar in his mouth and a huge pearl necklace around his neck. It does not seem to be popular to wear gold necklaces in this era. A pearl necklace became the symbol of status. Lieutenant Shobe, it's been a long time. Shobe turned his head and frowned at the man, thinking for a while, who are you? I'm the leader of the Punishment Bounty Corps, Phoenix. Lieutenant Shobe is really short in memorization. By the way, Lieutenant Shobe, I just happened to hear you mention my Bounty Corps. I wonder if there is anything I can do for you. Shob took a look at this guy and was a bit disgusted. He originally wanted to talk to their chief. But when he saw this guy, he felt all over the place. So he wouldn't say please to this guy. Phoenix smiled faintly, took a puff of his cigar, and exhaled recklessly. Shob frowned. This guy is not to the G level yet, and arrogant like this? Nothing. Shob straightened the blue jacket draped over him. Phoenix smiled smugly. Lieutenant Shob, I heard you like that Avril girl. It just so happens that my men will teach them a lesson. Do you want me to tell them to be merciful? Not like. I'm in awe of her helming skills and tactical news. Shob said with a straight face. Oh, I also watched their performance. A little better than the average sideshow. Phoenix replied. Shob looked at the guy coldly. Phoenix, you're saying they were juggling? Ain't it? They only know to hide. My men will clean them up soon. Shob was a little angry. With just your men. Hmm, how interesting. What do you mean? It means. They are not worthy. Shob stood in front of Phoenix, slightly raised his chin, and looked down at him. In terms of size, Shob can crush Phoenix, and in terms of aura, Shob can still crush Phoenix. Phoenix is a sub-G bounty group leader after all, not on the same level as Shob, even if he can upgrade after completing one bounty mission, but he's still sub-G right now. Phoenix narrowed his eyes slightly. Okay, I think all the words are blank. Why wouldn't we just take a good look and see if your people are better than mine? Rain naturally does not know this scene happening in the distance. Anyway, he only knows that Shob the Bastard did not come to the fishing competition at all. His only friendlies, body is not feeling well, and withdrew first. From the radar, the other ships are narrowing the encirclement. It looks like they want to limit his active area. Behind them, Bien's boat kept closing in. In the front, several fishing boats were still putting up the last fight and scrambling to catch fish. Among them were two 15-meter class light gunships of other bounty corps. Their masts were very high and had three curved sails. Rain gritted his teeth. Avril, go around a bit behind the two warships in front of us. We turn around. Captain, what are you going to do? Finish them off, Rain said decisively. Rain carefully calculated beyond speed behind him while quickly ducking into two large ships. Eh? Trying to run again? Pull the sails tight, go. Bien hurriedly ordered. The ship's sails were pulled close, and the ship's speed quickly increased. They also followed to rush over. However, not long after, 
Bien suddenly froze when they traveled behind the two large ships. Not far away, a plank ship was rapidly rushing over him with metal ramming horns. Had they been waiting for themselves here? This timing is too good. He just appeared, and the other side came crashing over. Not even give them a chance to dodge. At this moment, Bien suddenly saw Avril standing at the bow and smiling at himself slightly. Bien, you are simply even worse than your brother. Have a good awakening. 56. Shobes assist. Boom. Rain hit Bien's boat ruthlessly. More than four meters long metal ramming horn pierced the ship plate directly. Bien only felt the ship sway badly, and he was almost unstable. He looked back and found the ship was crashed into two pieces and sank quickly. Avril smiled faintly at Bien. It's a good time for winter swimming, isn't it? Bien gritted his teeth. As a mutant, he wouldn't fall into the water so easily like his crew. He pushed back with both hands and leaped high by the reaction force. Court death, huh? Right, I grant you. Bien jumped into the air and wanted to get on board. At this time, a word or hit Bien's face from the side unceremoniously before the word wish came out of his mouth. The oar was cracked directly, and Bien only felt unknown objects hit him. A black eye, then he flew out far away and fell into the sea. Arson put down the half-broken oar, standing beside, one hand crossed, and said disdainfully, Not everyone can get on our boat. Last time Arson did not prepare. This time Arson definitely won't agree he got on the boat again. A few crew who was climbing the bow and stern around, looking at Bien's unfortunate encounter in horror, that slap on the face afraid the bones of the face will be broken. Thought were hurts. Arson turned her head and looked at the guys. You guys want to try it too? Those few people looked at the oars with cracked wooden spikes in Arson's hand, then looked at the cold seawater and jumped into the sea decisively. Well done, Arson, Avril said happily, putting her arm around Arson. However, Arson looked at the oars worriedly. Avril, the oars were broken by me. Do you think the captain will make me pay? Maybe. Rain heard everything. Is he so petty in these people's minds? Oh, it's too sad. Shob laughed out loud on the charge. Ha ha ha. What a great move to lure the enemy deep. Phoenix, your crew are the man. Surprised to be killed so easily in seconds. TSK TSK. It's really breathtaking. Oh yeah, that light gunship costs quite a bit, right? Of course, you don't care. Who doesn't know Phoenix doesn't care about money? Being trolled by Shob 360 degrees, Phoenix's face was hideous. But now he was unable to refute Shob and could only stare at Rain and the others deadly. Not bad. The timing can actually be grasped so well. Phoenix narrowed his eyes slightly, then called his man and whispered a few words. The man immediately took out two flags and waved them at his fleet. This was flag language, a common means of communication at sea. There were also two types of flag language, generic in sea and specialty in groups. Now they were using the internal flag language of the Punishment Bounty Corps which only their internal people could read. On Rain's radar, the other eight ships began to move quickly. All of them are coming to get me? Rain snorted coldly, Avril, get everyone back to their positions. I'm gonna drag racing. If it was in the vast sea, Rain might not even be able to handle Bien's ship. But there were ships everywhere here that were Rain's biggest reliance. He began to shuttle quickly between a large number of ships on the sea. But from the radar observation, the movement of these ships was very regular, and they kept circling him narrowing his range of activity constantly. Can they see me? Rain wondered. It was normal for a few ships to see him, but not for all of them to see him. Captain, they have a flagman commanding them from the charge. Avril followed the gaze of the commanders on several ships and found the flagman. Shit, they're cheating. Rain was a bit unbearable, like a turtle in a jar with trouble breaking out. At that moment, Rain suddenly found those ships not moving on the radar. Where is the flagman? No longer in command? Rain immediately looked at the charge, and he saw an amazing scene. Shob was puffing hard and kept spitting smoke toward the flagman, who was enveloped in a cloud of smoke in front of him soon. The flagger could not stand it and moved to the side. Shob immediately followed another operation burst, drowning the flagger in a puff of smoke again. Anyway, Shob always stuck to the flagger. Holy shit, this guy must have a big lung, Rain said in shock. Shob this guy is quite righteous. Rain can't help but slightly change his attitude towards Shob. Now time is urgent. Rain also cannot overthink Avril. Now those ships are blind again. Sink a few more. Yes, Captain. On the enemy shipboard marked by Rain number D, the captain squinted his eyes, trying to distinguish the flagger's semaphore. Holy shit. I can't see anything. Shob. At that very moment, a ship suddenly appeared from a naval turtle light gunship behind and rushed towards their hull violently. 
It's them. The captain just reacted quick fire. Captain, we can't use artillery in the fishing tournament. All the guns are on the main ship. The gunner reminded. Shit. Speed up. They're coming. However, it was too late. With a loud boom, this enemy ship was waist cut, and after Arson slapped two crew members away, the rest crew had the good sense to choose winter swimming. Second ship, seven more to go, Rain sneered. At this point, there were few cucumber fish left, and most of the other ships had stopped capturing them, and all they saw an iron-headed plank ship was weaving back and forth between them, not much longer before it crashed a punishment bounty core ship. Holy shit, is that boat crazy? Wait, he seems to ram only punishment bounty core ships. How the hell did they find those ships? With a boom, the metal ramming horn pierced the enemy ship, marking the nine punishment bounty core ships had all sunk. On this shipboard, Rain saw an acquaintance, Biao, Arson, bring that guy here and give it a hard lesson. Arson immediately jumped onto the sinking ship, lifted and grabbed Biao back to their ship. By now, Biao was already scared out of his wits, trembling and shrinking to the side. Seeing the old acquaintance, Avril, Terry Armin, and Arson rub their fists and wipe their palms. Seeking revenge on us, right? Young man, good idea. I like energetic men like you. All old acquaintance. We must treat you well this time. Oh yes, we must be more enthusiastic than last time so that you can remember us, right? Woof woof. Biao shrank and looked at these four people in horror. Please, I'm wrong. I'm really wrong. I won't find you guys trouble again, I swear I. Ah. Do not attack face. 57. Biological Mutant Fighting Techniques When the bell rang for the end of the fishing competition, all the ships sailed towards the ship of the Gold Foot Merchant. Biao was thrown into the cold seawater after a violent beating. Don't leave me, please. Avril snorted, no longer paying attention to this guy. She came to the bow and followed the large group of ships. On the merchant ship, many merchants worked busy, counting the number of cucumber fish on each ship and registering scores while carrying the fish to their transport ships. 7. Next boat. 13 fish. Next move faster. There are many boats behind. 4. You just caught 4. What a waste of such a good opportunity. These workers were old hands, very efficient. Gradually, there were fewer and fewer boats left. Rain looked at the pearl issuing place with shining eyes. Where the pearls were issued, there were several large boxes. The boxes were open and full of pearls. Every time staff gave out pearls, one reported the number and the other took out the corresponding number of pearls. Those fishing boats have harvested more or less, even if the lowest number also arrived at 10, so the merchant must prepare 5,000 pearls at least. It is indeed a wealthy and generous merchant. A man and a woman stood in front of those chests. The man was dressed in a black uniform, a black turban tied around his head, a saber on his waist, his hands behind his back, and his eyes always on the several pearl boxes. The woman, to be honest, was more feminine than Avril, curvy and attractive, wearing a head of long green hair and bold clothing. The woman seemed not to care about these pearls, head down to play with her nails bored. Those two are strong, Avril suddenly said. How do you know? Rain asked curiously. I can feel it a little bit. I feel like I can't influence them with my power. I can even influence Shobe more or less, but these two people. I can't. Rain was silent. Are those two so strong? Although he couldn't determine the strength of these two people, this was the first time Avril said so. But think about it. The merchant bank traveled a long distance with such a large amount of wealth. And they'd certainly find strong crew members to ensure safety. Obviously, the two people are the so-called strong crew. With their power, no one would dare to mess with them. Avril, it's okay. You're still low level now. Maybe you'll be able to influence them later. Rain reassured, besides, we're not the enemy. Avril nodded her head. Not long after, it was Rain's turn. Terry and Arson carried the five water tanks up. Avril and White jumped on their boat to oversee their count. Holy shit you guys. Several staff members looked at the fish dumbfounded. I've never seen anyone catch so many at once. Your boat isn't a professional fishing boat either. How in the world did you do it? Hold on. You guys are the driver of that running blind boat. Really hey you guys also wrecked several boats. Avril smiled faintly. Just luck. Please hurry up and take count. After the count. The final number came out to 347. 3, 347. The person in charge of the registration looked at Avril and the others incredulously. Then Avril and the others went to get the pearls. 347? No mistake, right? The staff there looked at the data. He ran over to verify purposely and finally came back in shock. My god, awesome. 
you guys will get 694 pearls. At this very moment, the man in black raised his head and looked this way. Even the woman also looked up curiously. It's them. The woman's bright gaze glanced at Rain and then looked at her companion. The man smiled faintly, these guys in that boat are all a bit interesting. Chopper, I think you are quite interested in that mutant girl, right? The man's gaze fell on Arson and said with some thought, you keep an eye on here. I'm gonna check it out. That's so boring. I'll go with you, just some white pearls. Besides, do you think someone would dare to touch anything here? The staff handed a bag full of pearls to Avril. Everyone looked at the big bag in excitement. Ha ha, great. At this moment, Avril suddenly stopped. She felt an incomparable pressure approaching her. No, not one, but two. Hey, what's your name? The man walked up to them and said to Arson. Arson frowned and looked at the tall and expressionless man warily. I? Why'd I tell you? An enchanting woman walked over and said to Arson with a smile, Don't be afraid, little sister. He is only interested in your ability. My ability? Yeah. The woman's gaze swept over several people, and when she saw Avril and White, she froze for a moment. What the hell? Why did that woman and that dog? Ah, uh, strange. You guys are interesting. Little sister, Chopper is not good at talking. But don't worry, he's not a bad guy, just boring as hell. The woman withdrew her gaze and continued. Arson looked at the man warily because this guy gave her extreme oppression. The man saw Arson dumbfounded, then shook his head and said, Seems to have never seen the elephant. Hey, take this book. If you can live until the day we meet again, I will see how well you practice. After saying that, the man took a book from his pocket and threw it at Arson. Arson took the book and the written words love 48 postures on the cover. Open the first page. Yeah, indeed, this posture is challenging and simply breathtaking. Arson was frightened. Then she hurriedly closed the book and looked at the man in shame and anger. You, why are you showing me this? Why do I need to practice this? The man said straighten, practice it well. Your mutant type is not bad. Practicing this will increase your chances of survival. Practicing this can increase her chance of survival. Arson's face turned red. The woman noticed Arson's reaction. She glanced at the book and looked at the man in surprise. Chopper, did you give the wrong book? Chopper frowned slightly and pulled out half a dozen books from his arms. His expression stiffened with a closer look. With a swift move, he snatched the love 48 postures from Arson's hand and stuffed a new book into her. That's wrong. It's this one. Arson looked down to see. Biological Mutant Fighting Techniques Volume 1. 58. Farewell to show. Chopper left in a panic. It's just so humiliating. The woman walked up to Avril, you're a brave girl, a small ship dared to mess with the bounty group. I kinda like it. My name is Serena. Hope you can reach the human class C alive, said Serena's slender hands across Avril's shoulders and chest, leaving a meaningful smile before she left. Avril gave Serena a suspicious look. They had been delayed here for a long time. It would be better to return to the ship. Arson, Armin, Terry, let's go back. Not long after, all the ships had finished the exchange of pearls. The short and fat man took the results handed up by his men from the merchant ship, stepped up on the stage, took the loudspeaker, and announced to everyone, Wow, I can't believe it! Congratulate to Captain Avril. Their team not only won first place in this fishing competition but also broke the record of our gold foot merchant bank, which has been kept for 80 years. Their result is 347 cucumber fish. All the people on the boats looked towards Avril's side. Shit, over 300. A record for 80 years? That's terrible. Does the trick to catching cucumber fish is rampaging like they? The host said excitedly, Not only will we cash in 50 pearls as a reward for winning first place, but we will also award Captain Avril 80 pearls as the breaking record reward. Avril and the others were all wide-eyed. That was an extra reward they hadn't thought of before. Several women hugged each other in excitement and jumped alive. Terry, whose shoulder was landed the little booty, squatted down and stroked White's head. White, we're rich this time. Apart from the 694 pearls, Avril came up to the stage to get another 130 pearls. Plus the pearls they had left, now they had 1,152 pearls. Not only do they have enough pearls to upgrade to the next level, but they also have more than enough. Rain was excited that he could finally upgrade. The fishing tournament ended, and many boats were planning to human-class waters. Shog took the time to come to Rain's boat. It was all old acquaintances. Everyone crammed into the cramped cabin, chatting casually. Are you guys coming with us this time? Shob asked, trading market basically no task in the next few months. You can also go back to rest for a while. 
It's much safer to follow the Gold Foot Merchant Bank and the Navy. Avril shook her head. We may not go to the human class sea for now. We'd see you next year. Shob was disappointed slightly and well. Actually, I probably won't be back here this time. Why? Armin asked. Oh, I got a promotion. Probably the top will line me up to where I'm needed more. Shob said, hey, unfortunately, I still haven't been able to recruit you guys. A strong sense of parting permeated the cabin. During this time, thanks to Shob's care, Rain and others could peacefully do their mission in Morgan. It was always inevitable some sadness after hearing that their friend was leaving. Shob, the human class C competition is very fierce and more dangerous. Be more careful, Avril said sincerely. Shob helplessly smiled, this time, I'm not going to the human class C instead of the beast class. What? Beast class C? Everyone's eyes widened. The beast class C was simply hell for them now. You guys don't have to worry about me. I've been on missions there before. It's just that. I'm not too fond of the way the Navy acts, so I chose to mingle leisurely in the no man's land. This time the top insisted that they transfer me. I can no longer put off. Seeing that everyone was lost, Shob suddenly laughed. Oops, why are you all gloomy? I believe you also can go to the Beast Class C one day. Then we will see each other again. Besides, we can pass on the message by Little Booty. Rain was also a bit lost. Shob had been abducting his crew, but this guy was not bad. Especially his help at the fishing competition made Rain's opinion change a lot. Beast Class C, what level of the battlefield was it? What level of existence would there be for the pirate group, navy, bounty group, sea monsters, and mutants? When will he be qualified to enter the Beast Class C? Oh yes, if I'm not here, you have to be careful of Phoenix, the leader of the Punishment Bounty Corps. You destroyed his nine ships. He won't let you off easy with that guy's temper. Shob said, now he won't strike and I will also keep an eye on him. But come next year, you must be extra careful. If you guys really can't deal with it, go to Hades, but that guy's help has a price. I reckon he has something thought with your crew, so you must think it over. Also are we? I will take her and find a way to arrange a stable and safe job for her in the human class naval base. Well, it's almost time to go. Shob took a deep breath, stood up, and walked out of the cabin as the crowd followed. Between the azure sky and the sea, on a wooden ship, Navy Lieutenant Shobe extended his hand and looked at everyone, Captain Avril and everyone else. We'll see you in the Beast Class waters. Avril took a deep breath, nodded heavily, and held out her hand. Yes, stay alive until we get to the Beast Class C. The main ships of the Navy and the Goldfoot Merchants set sail, followed by their escort ships, transport ships, and hundreds of other kinds of ships. In the Sicily trading market, only a few dozen ships remained. Most of these ships were trading market merchants. And at this time, they were packing up their things, looking like they were also ready to go. Rain hurriedly let Avril and the others purchase evolutionary materials. Hey captain, the merchant almost left. I got all the materials from sister Aoi. Aoi? Yeah, we saw her before, that cloaked woman. She is such a kind woman. We became friends soon. Rain remembered friends? Can friends get a discount? Oh captain, come on, Avril said helplessly. The next day, only Rain was left in the large Sicily trading market. Uh, wait, no, and that mysterious merchant woman. Doesn't she need to rest? Rain said to himself. That was not the point. Now he was excited as hell. It's too cold here. Let's go to the island before the winter. By the way, it's time to get a new boat. The guys were also so excited that they immediately set sail for the island. Four days later, Rain arrived at the island and couldn't wait to call out the system. Damn it, finally today. System, evolve the ship. Avril and the others leaned on the ship's side and watched the wood change rapidly. Wow, what a long keel. The new ship is longer than the one we have. With so much wood, what kind of ship can be built? Can't wait. TSK TSK, the prototype appears. Rain looked at the hull gradually taking shape on the sea, taking a deep breath. I can become stronger again. System, hurry up. 59, Carrick sailboat. Five minutes later. A brand new boat appeared in front of everyone. The boat's hull was about 20 meters long and 6 meters wide and 8 meters high. The sharp ramming horn was still in the bow but without metal reinforcement, and the stern is rounded. The height of the bow and stern has been raised again so that the whole hull is a U-shape. The main thing is the two big pillars on the hull rain had always dreamed of. Two masts were erected on the ship, the highest one about 12 or 13 meters long in the middle of the hull and the lower one about 10 meters on the bow. A total of four curved sails were hung on the two masts. The top canvas was small and the bottom was larger, 
crossbars supported the sails, and the masts were connected to the hull by multiple fiber ropes. Damn it, I finally have genuine masts. On the wind, Rain almost burst into tears of excitement. He had been waiting for the day so long that he had gotten himself a cottage mast before. The wind efficiency could be improved greatly with these sails. Also, Rain noticed that his crew barn had gone with this evolution, but the stern was much higher than before and had two levels. Well, now that's a bit of a battleship. Rain was thrilled. The ship only showed these changes before he checked the system information. Rain couldn't say that he fully understood the new ship yet. New ship construction complete, performing consciousness and item transfer. The transfer process was still as amazing as ever. In a flash, the supplies used, materials, and personnel from the old ship were piled up on the deck of the new ship, while Rain's consciousness was also transferred. Open the basic information panel. Rain didn't care about these items. The first thing he wanted was to check the new ship's properties. Host Rain, Vessel, Small Two-Masted Carrick Sailboat, Sail Paddle Boats, Cabins 3, Stern Cabin 1, Power Cabin 1, Storage and Firepower Cabin, Cruise Size 6, Assignable Positions, Open for Details, Speed 12 Knots Maximum, Open for Details, Combat Power 143.1, Available in Crew Information and Weapon System, Load Capacity 3984.4 slash 15,000 kg, Open for Details, Next Level of Evolution 138.4 slash 5,000 units of wood, 1250 slash 10,000 kg of metal ingots, 0 slash 2,000 kg of stone, 30 slash 1,000 kg of textile fiber. The ship's load only increased a little, but the maximum speed was increased by 4 knots. The number of cabins was increased by 2, and the crew cabins were subsumed into the stern cabin and raised to 3. The number of storage cabins was still 1 but there was more space than before by judging the height and size of the hull. The storage cabin also doubles as a firepower cabin? And what the hell is this power cabin? Rain frowned slightly. Turn on the power system first. Now he was a veteran player, and since the basic information panel didn't specify, he opened the power system to check it out. Upon looking at it, Rain was dumbfounded. Was this still his power system? The power system of the Carrick sailboat changed so much from the original planking boat. Power Equipment 1, Stern Screw Propeller Asterisk 1. Power Equipment 2, Bow Screw Propeller Asterisk 1. Power Equipment 3, Main Mass Transom Asterisk 1, Sail Asterisk 2. Power Equipment 4, Foremast Transom Asterisk 1, Sail Asterisk 2. Power Equipment 5, Large Folding or Asterisk 2. Power System 1, Artificial Power. Power System 2, Wind Power. Power System 3, Host Power. Description 1. Large folding oars located on each side of the ship underwater can be controlled by the crew in the powerhouse or by the host himself. The maximum speed increase is 6 knots, and the acceleration effect is negligible when the ship's speed is higher than 8 knots. Rain had a brow furrowed. So this is what the power cabin is for. No wonder it's called a sail paddle boat. It has sails and oars. Could he paddle too? He ordered in his brain and then sensed that two oars were sticking out of the hull on each bottom side and the oars could be folded inwards and attached to the side of the hull. The oars opened quickly when Rain tried to open them. The front joints of the oars are locked and can be folded backward, but not forwards. When the oar moves backward, it allows it to open fully due to the impact of the water and increasing the drainage area. When the oars move forward, the joints fold backward due to the impact of the water, drastically reducing the impact of the water and thus reducing the obstructive effect of the water on the hull. It's quite an impressive design. And it always feels like I'm swimming, and this pair of folding oars are my two arms. Previous rain could control the wooden spikes on the boat's bottom, and now he had another thing to control. He felt much better instantly, and no effect when speed above 8 knots. Rain thought about it. This seems similar to cycling. It couldn't provide more power when you pedal the bike on a big downhill. That's why his main power equipment before was all eliminated in this evolution. Rain was satisfied with the power system. As his speed increased, he could control the speed of the ship himself, which was a qualitative change. The weapons system. Rain couldn't wait to check out the next item. All the previous weapon systems had been retained. The ramming horns, the reinforced hull, the wooden spikes in the bottom, and the combat power had actually increased a little without being reinforced. Rain's combat power would certainly increase again after he takes a reinforcement with metal and fit with the bottom harpoons. Apart from that, Rain found another new item. Large crossbow, 
Attack 10 slash each. Quantity 4. A defensive weapon hidden in the ship's interior cabin that does not require manual operation and can deal damage to enemy creatures. Each arrow requires 0.5 units of wood and 10 kilograms of metal, copper and iron. It can be fired with 5 arrows in a single effective range of 800 meters. Arrows can be recycled. Rain was genuinely excited to see this new weapon. The large crossbow not only has a greater attack range, but also it can be fired in a burst. And he has 4 of them. So a crossbow attack is not 10, but 50, 60. Combat power boost. Now the ship is in a mess with many materials. So Rain simply used them to enhance his weapon. The new weapon system came out soon. Bow bottom wooden spikes. Attack power, 10, quantity 1. Ramming horn, enhance 1 attack power, 35, 15, quantity 1. Bottom harpoon, attack power, 6, quantity 6. Large crossbow, attack power, 10, quantity 4. Reinforce hull, reinforcement 1, defense, 15, 10. Now Rain's weapon system combat power was 161. With the crew providing 15.1, the total combat power was 176.1. Moreover, the system counted the combat power of the large crossbow as 10. But if he treated the combat power of continuous fire as 50, he can add 160 combat points to that, which is 336.1. The combat power has exceeded 300. Looking at the extra 0.1. Rain couldn't help but glance at the little booty perched high up on the mast, staring into the distance with a deep look. The sky is where I belong. Well, it doesn't matter. What the important was Rain felt great now, although the load capacity was not increased as big as expected, and the hull was only one size bigger with this evolution, it was very satisfying. The ship's speed increased, new weapons were added, and he could paddle himself, which was important. Rain gets better and better, but he only has six crew now. If it excludes white and little booty, that's four, and Avril too lazy to propel the ship. So actually, only three people provided the power. This was absolutely a revolutionary evolution that freed up all the crew. If I meet Chike again, I wouldn't let them run away. Rain was full of confidence. Their cannons were not as powerful as his repeating crossbows judging from the metal arrows three or four meters long. And Rain noticed that system added the concept of reinforcement to the two stats after this evolution the ramming horn and the reinforced hull. Does that mean I can unlimitedly strengthen if I have enough materials? Rain pondered for a while but on second thought he forgot it, as he wouldn't be able to get a lot of materials for a while anyway. He tried to buy some metal in the market next year. Avril and the others looked around the spacious aboard. Wow, is this our new cabin? It's so much more spacious than before. And it's a double-decker with three rooms. Have a look down. Terry opened the hidden door on the deck went to the storage cabin, and said to other people, it's so spacious, we can put stuff and live here, and there's something good. The others ran down in excitement. The storage cabin had been so low that they had to bend to get in, but now they could stand up. There were several windows to the side with a view of the sea, and four small rooms separated by wood planks. One of the doors was open, and they saw a large crossbow-like weapon set up inside. This crossbow wagon had no wheels and was fixed with five thick wooden sticks. That sharp metal arrows glowing with cold light were at the ready on the crossbow wagon. In front of the crossbow was a rectangular closed window that was closed by wooden panels at this point. Whoa, this large crossbow cart is so cool, Armin exclaimed. Rain suddenly said, this is our new weapon and the secret one. Don't let anyone know. In a battle at sea, one more weapon would give them a better chance of survival. Everyone understood this. Don't worry, Captain. We won't let anyone in here, Avril said. Well, only you guys can come down here. The hidden door on the deck will be locked for now. You guys stay in the stern cabin. Three rooms is enough. Rain said, let me show you guys the power cabin first. You must need it later. Rain went through the ship in more detail with the crew. Now the ship was more complex than before, and it was important for everyone to get familiar with the new ship. After that, the group then gathered and sat in a huddle in the stern cabin. Terry, I can make an extra mast. Where do you think it would be best to put it? Rain asked. Captain, I was thinking about it just now. Could you replace the sail with a Latin sail? The triangular kind. What's the difference? Terry, an old fisherman, started to give Rain a lesson. The large force area of the transom sail can increase the speed of the boat. But it is less flexible. And it is basically useless when upwind. But the Latin sail makes up for this by allowing the direction of the reefing force to be changed by the furling pole. Which can take advantage of the different wind directions. 
Rain thought about this long but couldn't understand the principle. No matter, he didn't want to dwell on it. He did see quite a few boats using triangular sails, or combination sails with transoms and triangular, suggesting that there must be a benefit to that sail type. Captain, stand the mast at the stern, so we'd have a three-masted sailing ship. Power and flexibility are all guaranteed. Rain nodded, yeah, okay, I'll try it. In a matter of minutes, the third mast was erected at the stern, and Rain changed the sail to a triangular sail. The new boat was finally complete after the improvement. The hull was still exquisite, with metal-covered bow and stern, reinforced ramming horns, and more bottom harpoons. All that remained was to decorate the crew's new rooms. The winds blowing in the winter sea are icy cold. With the blue waters gently floating, the azure sky was cloudless. The sea and sky meet in the distance, and there is a different kind of tranquility to the azure era in winter. Armand casts her fishing nets skillfully on the sea before mooring the boat next to the island. Avril has built a simple perch on the beach with branches and stones. During the day, some go fishing while others gather around the fire, wash clothes, handle food or do some crafts, and return to the boat to rest at night. Rain also made small objects when he had nothing else to do. He has some materials left over, so he replaced all the seawater purification devices with metal. In addition, he made a few buckets to stock up on fresh water. Occasionally they take the boat around, there were still large areas that Rain's charts hadn't explored, and now that no man's land was almost deserted, it was a good time to wander around. It's a relaxed and leisurely time. But there is one person who is always busy. Arson was always up early before dawn, studying her biological mutant fighting techniques volume 1, and Rain noticed that Arson's appetite had increased again. Open the crew information list. Rain idly began to check the status of his only six crew members. 61. Level up. Arson's information has changed again. New data has appeared in her panel. Mutation level. Level 5 out of 10. Open for details. Mutation ability. Underwater transformation. Currently 50%. After transforming, the boost limit is 50%. Additional ability. Close combat technique. Primary. Proficiency 1 20th. One point of proficiency boosts to combat power. The transformation also increases the power of the skill. Combat power. 15. Real time. Well, a skill? The book was given to Arson by Love Man from the Gold Foot Merchant. Rain hadn't taken it seriously. But who would have thought the system would recognize this skill? And it can increase combat power. There are 20 levels in total. And after Arson has learned them all, she will have 40 combat points. And if she used it underwater after transforming, she'd get more. At Arson's current mutation level, a 50% boost would be 60 combat points. With Arson's own 15 points, that's 75 points, which equaled 7 wooden spikes or 750 little booty. And as Arson's mutation level increases, she'd get more. That love man surprisingly had added so much combat power to Rain. This significant discovery led Rain to think of a possibility. Arson was a biological mutant, and she could acquire skills through the special book. What about Avril? She was a support mutant, who should be more dependent on skills, as her ability was more like a skill. So far, Avril's mutation level and combat power have not changed. Not even her food intake had increased, so how to level her up? If this is a skill, then with my 20 years of experience in the game, to level up Avril, I should. Rain kept staring at the word proficiency. Those three words felt so familiar to him. That's right, improving proficiency. With this in mind, Rain immediately called Avril over to him, who was eating grilled fish. Avril, you should use your ability more during this time. Huh? Why? We are not fighting right now. Avril said as she nibbled the fish, Captain, I'm about to give up. This time I don't think I've gotten any stronger myself. Would you please give up the grilled fish? Rain said. Avril put down the grilled fish in embarrassment and hid it behind her. Avril, don't give up. In any case, you definitely have a chance to get stronger. Rain knew Avril's level was 1 out of 10 in the panel. Why did the system show it that if she couldn't upgrade? We just haven't found a way yet. Rain said excitedly, Avril, do as I say and practice more every day. And who do I practice with? With Arson or whoever, with White, with Armin, Terry, the little booty, just practice more anyway. Avril cocked her head half-heartedly. Well, I'll try more. Captain, can I go back now? The crab they're baking should be good. Rain was helpless with his foodie. He remembered that someone was going to avenge her family. The next day, everyone was still busy. Armin drove the boat to fish during the day and waited to collect it for a few hours. Not much harvest, 
but they could get something to eat more or less. Terry would catch crabs or dig up roots to try if he could find any wildlife to help others to get some nutrition. Arson has been practicing her fighting skills hard every day, both on land and in the sea, and occasionally catching some seafood. On the other hand, Avril has been using her skills, and none of the crew members have escaped her claws. Something strange happened when she experimented with Terry. Terry, what's wrong with your leg? Terry smiled and said, it's probably due to the wind and cold for years. Usually it's not a big deal. I just can't exert too much. Mostly, I walk like a normal person. Avril smiled. Okay, then I'll try to affect your cells. No problem, come on, I've felt it before, not much feeling. 